Yeah. <laughs> Makes a whole lot of sense, brother. And it works on the Xbox One now, too, confirmed. No, we are live, by the way, now. Uh, yeah. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, me and Paul had, we just had to talk about some secret exclusive things behind the scenes. No, but um, really, we were talking a little bit about uh, today's gameplay because I made a quick joke and was like, hey, if Halo can't put, you know, split screen co-op in, I can do it on today's show, 11 split screen, don't you worry. So, uh, but you know how I do my gameplay. It's basically me, I got it doubled up, flip, reversed, uh, Missy Elliott style, then is presented to you guys. This is a gameplay from me playing on Legendary. Um, this is about, I think I chose the gameplay that was on the back half of the game um so this should probably this is probably going to be towards the middle um towards the end of the game so be aware of that um if you don't want any spoilers or anything like that i felt like the game's been out for long enough um that i can uh, finally play some of my other gameplay that i had so definitely enjoyed that um i did get some skulls in there when i went through my legendary gameplay i did get all the skulls right um so you may see me go off into certain places, do certain different things. That's And that's exactly what I'm doing is I'm going to go get those skulls. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoy that. Also, um, Lord Master Jasper says, I am lurking in the chat. Well, hey, don't lurk too hard. Ooh. Um, and Nick, he says, I'm currently doing a game review, guys. Can't say what it is, though. Don't you love when someone says that? I mean... I mean, it's part of life, though, man. If you're doing a, a game review, you know, you can't let people know what you're working on, man. That's just, it's just part of the deal. Uh, but now, one of the other things, and I'm probably just going to bring it up during the show because I feel like uh, the whole Halo topic, I feel like we haven't talked about Halo in a while. Um, I think it'd be a good time to jump into it. And I'm always going to come from a different perspective because I'm not as much of a worry wart. <laughs> no pun intended. Uh, as some people may be uh look i'm not saying that the criticism isn't necessary or isn't needed because it definitely is especially for i mean again master chief is on the back of your box master chief is what xbox is known for halo is xbox and that's definitely concerning it's, it's a concerning thing and as much as we kind of big up, uh, you know, the potential of the future, Microsoft being on the uh, on the thumb, the, got their thumb on the pulse and everything. I think as far as internally, um, it does leave some questions to be asked, some conversations to be had because people can be worried. I understand why people do have their concerns uh, when it comes to supposed to be one of your, you know, your most your best title, one of the most represented, and it's kind of been dropping the ball. But it's for that's personal perspective. Um, everybody's gonna have their own. That's the other great thing about Halo. Um, but it's also the worst thing about it because everybody's nobody's ever gonna be happy. So Paul oh, man, what you, what you want to tell the people behind the scenes before we before we get into it? You mute yourself? Yeah, I did mute myself. <laughs> okay, okay, what okay. okay. New? What else is freaking new, right? It's Saturday morning. It's living split screen. What would we be without a mute? Uh, listen, uh, no, I'm just doing shit behind the scenes, sending you a bunch of shit. I bet. Because you know what? The conversation this week has obviously been dominated by Thursday uh, because Thursday's news was yeah. ridiculous. But there was some uh, st early stuff this week, too, some smaller stuff that was kind of interesting as well. So. Uh, maybe we'll have a chance after we get done talking about the major shit to jump in some smaller stuff too um, that maybe some people forgot happened this week or missed or stuff like that. Um, hell, Street Fighter versus Capcom. Uh, possibility again. Yeah, so, man, I saw that. SN or I should, yeah, SNK versus Capcom. Uh, a possibility, which is uh, interesting after all these years as well. So just little stuff like that. We had the Mo Modern Warfare 2 leak and that stuff. This has been one hell of a busy week. Uh, I even forgot to put out a video this week, Steel. I didn't realize I did that too. until the end of Xbox Ultimate. I was like, yo, I didn't even do a video this week. What's going on? <laughs> um, but no, great to see everybody here. Uh, obviously, for everybody who gets a holiday weekend, I hope you all have a great uh, extra day off. Uh, I'm actually taking Tuesday off as well, so I'm doing a day weekend. Um, but I hope you all enjoy that as well. But we are we got a lot to get into steel it has been spicy like you said the halo stuff 
yeah, it's been a while since we talked about Halo, but we've talked about Halo so much. Yeah, yeah, can, yeah, all the time. How can you not? I mean, how how can you not at this point? It's one of the biggest franchises in gaming history. Got to talk about it. Uh, and I know some people hate it. Uh, the Halo Defense Force is out, um, and they have every right to. Um, but uh, at the same time, I think the criticism is valid at this point, and uh, we're definitely going to... I don't know if you can hate it. Um, I, I mean, again, uh, people are going to... Hate ha- it. You know hate it? No, no. I, 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 again, we as with any criticism, there's always too much. It goes too yeah, far yeah, yeah. with certain I people. And I, but I think that I think the defense force too is defending a little bit too hard at this point as well. I think at this time now, a so. year coming up on a year after launch, uh, broken promises. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, again, the Defense Force, you got to remember still, Defense Force was out prior to launch saying that nobody should criticize what was happening with Halo. Listen, at some point, there has to be some fair criticism. There has to be, at some point, even the Defense Force, even the most ardent 343 fans have to take a step back and go, okay, some of this, yeah, there's got to be something to be said here. Because, again, this isn't some type of new genre that they created. This is not some kind of experiment that they did. This is, this is Halo, man. Yeah, this, yeah, is, yeah. this is Halo. Yeah, <laughs> you know? And, again, they're not reinventing the wheel. I'm not saying it's the easiest thing in the world. I never would tell a developer that their job is easy by any stretch of the imagination. But this is not a small team. This is one of the largest teams ever put on a video game. This is probably one of the most. Are they? We don't know. We don't. We don't know the numbers. But this is probably one of the most expensive games ever made. Steel. So, with resources and backing like that, where's the problem? What happened? Well, you know, that's what we can talk about. Is is that kind of stuff? And I think some fair criticism. But um, again, I'm not. I'm not on the doom and gloom train. I'm not saying Halo's dead. You know that. So, yeah, it's by any stretch well, of the event. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, anytime that you can start up a game and still get a match within ten seconds, yeah, yeah, no. yeah the game's not dead. <laughs> it's like Battlefield, right, right, right now. Um, yeah. Whether people want to realize it or not, I know you and Matt talked about it a little bit uh, last week, but yeah, I mean, we jumped into it uh, that same weekend, and honestly, Battlefield does feel more alive than it did previously. Um, there's not those. There's not the, a bunch of bots roaming around. There's lobbies and you're getting some good matches and um you know you can play some rush you can play some conquest and it feels like there's a good back and forth going on we had a lot of chug and pull that was going on and we were having a really good time i mean again uh and for me i could just be jaded because one when i was playing on battlefield i was using my other tv um not on a monitor at that time and then also um i was using a 2070 super so maybe that also has a change on it um me playing on pc for battlefield but I think that I think honestly, comparative to my previous experience with 2042 to now, like I catch myself. I mean, just the other day, I hopped on, ran, I ran a few games. It was just like, oh man, this, this feels good. Like I can jump in, jump out, no problems. And I felt like I was contributing. You know what I'm saying? Like it was doing really good. I get 20 plus kills and heals and everything else. I the main thing and the part of the reason why I said. Um, also originally last weekend when we were messing with each other about it, uh, that I wouldn't jump into the season three is it, because that, that is still what it's missing. I don't understand why and we've had this conversation before too. Um, you muted yourself by the way, again, um, <laughs> I said the classes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, that's, that's what I figured. But, but yeah, I mean, that is the number one thing that I just don't get from a design standpoint or multiplayer only how you give us a class system that is completely irrelevant. And now I know you're fixing it in season three, but it's just like, when you made this game, what made you think that you using any of the, any character, any, and they can use any um, class type made sense. You You know what the thought process was, Steel. It was that classic corporate thought 
hey, we're going to appeal. We're Call of Duty now. People. No. Yeah, we're like, going to appeal no. to more people. That's exactly what they thought. You were appealing. But that's the thing. That's the bad thing. Like, that's the yes. thing that kind of tells me that you aren't connected to your community, though. Right. Is because what drew in people was the way that your game is. Correct. But corporate never <laughs> thinks that way. You know that, brother. Like, they look at those Call of uh, Duty numbers and they're going to chase them and chase them and chase them instead of realizing the, the reason why Battlefield was so popular is because it was different from Call of Duty. And it was more popular, the more different from Call of Duty you actually were. But they don't see it that way. Well, no, the we other can thing, turn Battlefield into something. The other thing, too, is that I think where they kind of fell down a slippery slope with it a little bit, too, is that Battlefield was kind of ahead of its curve in a, in a lot of perspectives, right? Um, yeah. When you think about it, Battlefield kind of introduced us to the idea of a battle royale before, and a lot of any other games did. If you think about it, like the expanse, like the big, like the big map battles and pushing mm -hmm. objectives, and you know, people dying, you coming back, you spawn back, spawn your team. Like there was a lot of aspects into there that I could, I could see that. Battlefield could have, if they picked up on the train and were actually ahead of the game, they could have probably, you know, did their first person shooter. They could have been the Apex before Apex. They could have been uh, the War Zone before the War Zone if they would have been in that space, but they weren't because of other yeah. mishaps, you know, try, yeah, trying to problems. change themselves and, hey, we need to be trying more to accessible. all their other games. <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> after Battlefield 4, you should have just, like, after Battlefield 4, after you fixed it, it should have been like throat on neck. Okay, this is what Battlefield is. We're not changing it. We're not going back. That's I, at least that's me. But that's they should have just leaned into the evolution instead of creating big giant set pieces. They should have yeah, back company too. The map. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they should have leaned into that evolution where the map changes dynamically as you're playing because you're tearing down buildings. Yeah. Instead, they decided to go to the big set pieces, take away some of the natural evolution that should be happening while you're blowing shit up. And just go to the big giant set pieces that actually explode and change the map right uh in a cinematic way right versus the dynamic way on the battlefield and i think that's what they're missing that's why that i was happy to see one of the one of the new leads over there on twitter asking for the community what they thought of evolution and how it should occur yeah i i took the time to respond to him and i said no dynamic evolution throughout the match changing the app, actual map, how it plays on the fly versus the cinematic thing that happens with the tower falling down or the ship wall being, you know, pulled down or whatever the case may be. I'd rather have it just natural. So, um, yeah, you know, 100%. hopefully they go back to that. Yeah. Um, I'm already seeing the chat ramped up. They're they're ready. They're yeah. like, hey. They shouldn't be protecting no. the market leader. It's the problem that doesn't help competition. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, shit. We're going to get into it. Yeah, gonna man. Into it's probably going to be one of the first conversations we have. Because uh, I know Pong hasn't heard a lot of my thoughts on it. I have talked about it a little bit this week because I was on with Boom on Tuesday. Um, yep. So we got a chance to talk a little bit about some things. Um, but I, a lot of this information came Thursday. out after. So, yeah, so I didn't get a real chance. I've been kind of snooing up on it and everything. Uh, so I might get you to set me up. So... We can kind of obliterate Steel. the topic. Steel, I just got to ask you real quick before we start the show. You're not yeah. drunk, are you? <laughs> you, you know, I, I believe in hosting uh, when I get on with a group of gentlemen that I yeah. really care for, yeah. Um, yeah. that yeah. I actually, you know, give the audience the best of myself and I, I just don't think that's good you know drinking a 40 maybe uh, some vodka or whatever the case may be whatever your favorite drink is uh that that's the way to go but okay okay good well i respect that man and i, I appreciate you for not being drunk uh on our podcast well when you when you built like a sucker i mean what can you expect <laughs> Oh, drunk big brain, drunk big brain, the worst. Let's go, let's go. You know, ladies and gentlemen, I got quiet for all that whole time, and you guys heard that music. And there's one thing that I didn't do. Um, that the button. live people that are going to get, which is always a great thing. Um, that's why, you know, the audio listeners, are so, they're so unfortunate when it comes to these live shows, man. But yeah, you gotta hit that record button. Let's go.
right behind the volume down button. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I have to welcome you in. Uh, I combined a few words right there. So let me try again. Welcome you in to episode 71 of Living Split Screen, a non console centric platform that covers everything going on within the gaming industry with a lot of personal flair to it. And the one place where you get that energy boost to sustain your Saturday morning, going into your afternoon, maybe a Sunday, maybe whenever you get to check this out, because man, we just appreciate you guys tuning in on a week to week basis, every 9 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. UK time on a Saturday, man. Look, I am one of your hosts, Steel Rain. I, Steel Rain, I, the T is a seven. Uh, you know, Mr. Live Raw and Uncut himself, and I have to. Come in and also say thank you to the Midweek Mix-Up Collective for continuously just sponsoring us and just keeping us up in the background, man. Um, well, shout out to Wandering Dutch and the guys over there. I'm still doing some great things, having excellent conversations. Always love that about those guys. Um, and, they're, and, they're, and they're from Europe, man. So it's like anybody from across the ocean, it's like... You get that other perspective. I know we're talking a lot about how the recession is affecting different people and um, how money is affecting folks. And yeah, we we really cater a lot of that towards gaming, right? But I can also be honest and say, it's not just a gaming, it's, it's about all of it, which is why I say here, we take that RTS view, real time strategy, pulling ourselves out of the map looking at the darker crevices of that map, uh, pulling our resources together and having an open conversation. Now, with all the fun stuff out of the way, a little bit of business. In the background today, and I guess you can consider this business, I just consider it a part of the show, we do have some live gameplay. Um, I say live gameplay, it's just live raw and uncut because I did it, didn't edit it, but um, it's me playing Halo Infinite Legendary. Uh, this is from when I initially played the game. Um, I only played, I've only played through the uh, story once um, and I did it on legendary. So you're gonna get my full experience first time going through these, uh, <laughs> going, going through these experiences. Um, and this is about halfway, maybe a third, uh, the last third of the game. I can't recall which video I ended up uploading, but um, so hopefully you guys enjoy that. Um, and with that being said, while I um, fix my young one, my youngling, a quick <laughs> bowl of cereal, um, <laughs> I have to pass it off to one of the illustrious gentlemen, one of the most uncanny guys I have met, the X-Men who is not Cyclops, my brother from another, Paul, so, how you feeling, man? Talk to the people. I'm feeling great. It is living split screen. It is Saturday morning. I'm sitting down. One of my favorite people in the whole wide world, Mr. Steel Rain. We've got amazing people in the chat. Listen, before we get down to it, let me clear something up. A little joke that we heard before we went live when I was talking about something, somebody drinking on a, a podcast. No, I was not referring to Jez, who is amazing when he is actually drinking because he Let's a lot of things slip over there on the Xbox. No, Jez is a fun time when he, no, when he so drinks. No, so I was not, not about speaking him. about him. I saw Def Leppard say Jez influence. So I just want to make sure I make that clear. No, I was speaking about a show that will remain unnamed that happened last night that was an absolutely debacle. Okay, so no, I was not, uh, not talking about the Xbox 2 or Jez uh, because he's absolutely hilarious when he is actually absolutely with Rand. <laughs> so uh, no, I was talking about something else. Uh, anyways. Uh, no, great week here, Steel. Uh, ultra busy. I totally forgot to even put out a video this week. That's how busy I was. Uh, absolutely insane. Um, haven't had a hot, lot of game, a lot of chance to game. Me, me neither, man. Me neither. We did play some Battlefield uh, opening night of Season 2, which is absolutely incredible. Good time. Um, again, continues to be really good. Really liked it. Uh, I was just so happy that you actually jumped in with us after saying that you weren't going to play until season three uh peer pressure got to steal he showed up we had a great time with mav uh and everybody over there um so that was awesome um otherwise soul hackers 2 rocking on that not as much time into it as i want to i think i got seven or eight hours into it at this okay. point but loving soul that's some time in it though 
Yeah, I got some time in it. Um, loving Soul Hackers. Okay. Absolutely freaking incredible game. Um, if anybody's playing it or going to start playing Soul Hackers 2, mm-hmm. just a little tip. This is classic JRPG. Make sure... <clears throat> Dave? Excuse me. Yes. Make sure... <laughs> That's what make I'm sure thinking. you are saving. The auto save is not as often as I thought it was. Let's put it that way. So I did get... I. I purposely went into a harder battle. They warned me that it was a hard battle. They gave me the whole heads up. The whole tutorial tip came up and said, hey, this is, you know, this is an enemy you may not want to face. But, of course, me being stubborn, I was like, oh, hell, let's go check this out. Let's see how bad it is. Yeah, I got wrecked. Okay, I got wrecked uh, and lost about an hour. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, so because, yeah, no. So just make sure you're saving. So that uh, that is also, and then I have jumped into Steel Grid Legends is now about that. not only available on EA Play on Game Pass, it's also on regular Game Pass. Yes. So even if you don't have Game Pass Ultimate, uh, which comes with EA Play, obviously you can have Grid Legends right now. And you know what? It's a Code Masters racer. It is not ever going to be mistaken with the forces of the world of course right. not no it was different but i like what code masters does and the story while it's kind of cheesy uh and kind of b movie level story because it's live it's live action it's not cgi so right. it's live action so they're doing like re- sit down interviews with like racers and stuff that are real actors um it's still entertaining let's put it that way it's still yep. entertaining enough uh, having a good time. You can adjust the difficulty levels. I'm not a sweaty like steel, so I don't play on the, the, the <laughs> highest levels of racers. I want to feel like the number one racer in the world when I play racing games. I do. So, so I'm playing on normal level, right? Uh, and I feel like the number one dominating racer that I want to be. So uh, I'm having a great time with go. that. It's well worth the download. Again, no risk. Uh, so I've been having some fun with that uh, as well. And it's a good game. It's just a good quality game. Uh, again, it's never going to be a mistake. For free, but that's not what it's about. So right. um, having fun there. Otherwise, still, no, man. This week has just been um, crazy. Again, news was light. We had some interesting things early in the week, some really you know smaller stuff. We, we got another Modern Warfare 2 leak and that kind of stuff that was kind of cool to see, even though it was uh, recorded on a, a 2005 Apple iphone camera i don't know how that still happens these days but whatever uh you could still tell that they're doing some different things with modern right. warfare 2 as far as the campaign goes um and really cool looking stuff so that's that was that was interesting but then thursday hit all hell broke loose and that's what we're going to be obviously heavily talking about today but we, we'll get into some smaller stuff too as well but yeah man uh been a good week so far been a good week so yeah, nothing to complain really on my end of things either. Again, um, haven't been able to get into a whole lot this week. Of course, I'm um, consistently playing Warframe. That's just been on the on the list of things to do. Uh, again, when you're playing with higher level players, uh, there's like a, a, a task list that you kind of get set. Um, not really per se, because we can continue without it. But um, and I like to play at a certain level, so I'm doing certain things, getting resources, grinding a little bit, leveling up characters, put dropping forms in, making sure that everybody's good to go. Um, and then also, I, I jumped back into uh, Destiny 2 a little bit, because uh, again- ah, I saw your tweet, I saw your tweet. Yeah, nice. yeah, it's hey, just, again, I, I'm, I'm, always gonna, I'm always gonna blame my brother, because uh, it is what of it course. is, uh, but- yes. Shout out to Titanium. <laughs> Facts. Shout out to Titanium. <laughs> but that's the that's the one thing that because I know a lot of people try to downplay uh, Destiny or try to downplay Bungie or uh, I don't know. People use it in different ways whenever it fits their narrative, right? Some people say, "Oh, they're the greatest thing since sliced bread" because uh, they made Halo, and then other people say that, "Oh, they Bungie can't get it right either." So you see, you see these types of things all the time. But for me, there's just that multiplayer, I always say that multiplayer is addictive. Um, the customization is addictive. That's the other thing too. And honestly, that's really the only thing that Halo is missing. Really, um, is more of those customization options, uh, maps too. But I, again, so Destiny's been a good time. Uh, getting back used to that. 
um what else man uh the only other thing really that's been in rotation here recently um is also spider-man still i'm working my way through that still about 65 percent of the way through um i pretty much knocked out everything on the map um <laughs> uh, i've been doing this funny thing i've been doing this weird thing to where it's like as the extra stuff on the map like or with whether it be side missions or going over here to knock out do these um like these crimes get knocked out or anything else like that or these labs or anything um i'm going to get i'm going to knock out all that stuff well i've been knocking out all that stuff before i'd progress in the story so i've been getting lost in that a lot uh but i have about mm, already over probably a, about 14 hours of gameplay in there already um and i'm probably not even halfway in the story yet um so been having a good time with that uh, again the mods on pc again like i just anticipated man a while like i have been anticipating since before i heard this was coming to pc um they're going crazy i mean again you get venom you're getting all the animated spider-man uh mods you're getting there's getting the toby uh spider-man you're getting andrew spider-man whatever spider-man that you could possibly want in a spider-man game um people are working on their providing which is really dope man um if anything no spider-man doesn't have to be on every platform but i do believe it at least needs to continue to remain on a pc platform um not because now of course i, I would enjoy it but um uh, mainly because of the mind share right uh the more people you can get talking about it mods do that exact have that exact same effect mods also cause people to have a lot of fomo uh so that's something else that could you could really use to your advantage which is part of the reason same thing with god of war right um which is why i'm still on that train that those games will end up coming to pc a lot sooner than later so but um that's just me some uh enthusiast gamer who has a podcast with a brother from another of mine and uh who likes to talk about this from an rts view so <laughs> right. yes we do sir yes we do <laughs> hey we've so been, guys we've been right we've been Right we have we have and, and it's been it's been a fun time being uh <laughs> on the right side of history but no um with that being said though please a little bit more business here if you haven't please hit that like button share us out um it just helps with the algorithms and things um leave us a comment afterwards if you'd like on the audio side of things please guys um you know review us comment whatever you can do uh so just to let us know what we can improve on uh what we need to work on uh, any ideas you may have uh, that will be really dope as we get into these things further man uh, again guaranteed to have a three-hour show at least uh because me and Paul don't get to talk that often i don't think that would even matter if we did because we'd find a way to talk about everything regardless so um but i think this would be the perfect time for us now to get into some of the upcoming games and whatnot um i don't have everything set up on my end so okay. uh, give gonna, me a second gonna, as I get that. I'm going to shout out some people in the chat still. Yeah, we got that. over 30 amazing people already in here. Appreciate you all. Def Leopard, great to see you. Shizno Elite, Dan the Man Cunningham, Fahim Scott always rolling in here. Jesse Darby, great to see you. Talos Ray, Brandon Barnes. We got Smitty Smith. Salute, Smitty. brother. Uh, Tim the Sorcerer's in here as always as well. Blue Moon FC, great to see you, my friend. Uh, Nick's, of course, of course, always one of the originals in here. Yeah. Thank you for being here, sir. Appreciate you, Doom Reaper. Go, what's going on, brother? Great to see you as well. Good morning, the Blue One, the Blue One. You blue. fraud. What are you doing? Where's your buddy Ashtray? Why does he never show up to our show? Facts, what's going on? man. Damn. Yeah, tell him to get in here. Come on now. Uh, <laughs> listen, uh, 108 Dragons TV back. He is, the Dragons Den is back today. So be on the lookout for that. Shout out to Lemon. Uh, great to see you, sir, as always. You know, uh, Sour Blow 18, always awesome. Sick Slayer. Sick Slayers in the house uh mitchy dies a lot i always love that name i don't know why but i love it uh mitchy dies a lot is in here who else we got hanging out with us this morning we got lord roughness uh showing up in here we got i think i already said talus ray talus ray is always around stanley francois is in the house how are you doing this morning who else we got we got casket repair of course dropping in here we got jordy 
dropping in here. Great to see you as well, Jordy. Uh, Jacob Novick. Jacob, see you, brother. Uh, what is going on? Who else? We got it's Timmy. It's Timmy. What's going on? It's Timmy. Great to see you. Uh, Lore Master Jasper actually guy is lurking in our chat. Fat Boy Horror. Great to see you as well. RWK88. Awesome, awesome to have you in our chat. Gerald Mack, brother, you know what it is, man. Much respect. Thank you for dropping in here as well. Uh, who else we got? Who else we got? Who else? We got Andrew Cullinane. Of course, Cullinane. it wouldn't be a chat. It would be a chat without Andrew Cullinane dropping in Going here on, as well. Hey, all of you, uh, great to see you. Thank you for joining us on Living Split Screen every Saturday morning. And all these familiar faces, it is great. Akira is also in here. Ooh, Akira, okay. great to see you. Uh, so, yeah, no, awesome. Just, oh, Joe Dunmore. Joe Dunmore dropping in here. Hey, hey, hey. No, uh, again, Living Split Screen wouldn't be what it is without all of you. Again, we passed 600 subs Facts. Um, last week live on the air, which was absolutely Beautiful. amazing. Beautiful. Um, so, again, that's that's thanks to all of you. Again, Steele and I can only do this once a week on this channel. Yeah, we're, you know, we're other places as well. But this channel here is going to be really, really organic growth uh, right. because we don't we don't do other things. So appreciate you all for all the help that you guys uh, give us in the community when you guys share it out, when you like it, when you tell other people, um, you know, again, that just it goes a long way. So as Steel was just saying, so uh, Steel, you uh, you ready now? Oh, Black Car Day. Good to see you, brother, dropping down in here. Um, ready now? Yeah, I am good to go. My my daughter came in here looking crazy. I had to let her know, hey. <laughs> looking crazy. I need you to get in that bathroom and handle your business. Um, yeah, it's a weekend, man. They're excited about the three-day yeah. weekend. So of course, uh, that's always of a beautiful course. thing. I, I, I love I love when yes. I can bring some some life to the show. Um, you got a three-day weekend also, Bob? Yeah. Well, man, what are you going to do with your three-day weekend? You playing some I, Battlefield, I, I, man? I, 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 like I said before, Steel, I don't know what you were doing, but I took Tuesday off, too. I got a four-day weekend. Man, you're not about to play no yeah. games, man. You're not about to play At no some games. Point, I got a lot of, we got a lot of stuff to get done because obviously our, uh, the kid is starting school, high school this week, so junior. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, uh, yeah, I'll start at the top, top at, of September. Wow, Tuesdays. okay, wow, wow, wow. So, yeah, okay. so, yeah, yeah, it's a late start up here. Well, so, hey, get, uh, get it knocked like out, it. man, and holler at but, me when it's time to get oh, some yeah, games. you know, you know it, you know it. <laughs> We're going to be playing some Battlefield. Hey, Mike Master Pong, man. That's right. Roll out. God, I love being a tank commander, man. Um, And then uh, we also got to get into uh, some, um, whatchamacallit? Um, what else Dying Light, The Ascent. The ascent. That's what we got to get into. We got to play that DLC, man. Aliens. Yeah, we got to get an aliens too. Dude. <laughs> dude, I got to finish up the main campaign. I, I haven't so, done none of that, so. Yeah, we got to run through that. All right, cool. We got lots to play, but no, thank you all for being here. Let's get into this Let's upcoming go. week of gaming, and we've got some good stuff this week. Steel, that is for sure. And we're going to start out with a game that you and I promoted heavily. Yeah. That was divisive uh, when it launched. Some people hated it. It got low scores. People were trashing it. You and I enjoyed the hell out of it. I'm going to go we back did. to it. I'm going to re-download it now because Biomutant is getting a current gen update for free for PlayStation and Xbox. You said for what, Pong? For what? For PlayStation Five and Xbox. C. No, what what was that price that you said? Free. Oh, free, oh, sir. Oh, free. Man. Oh, yes. Wow, there, wow, the, wow. Some okay. some companies are still out here doing that, sir. Uh, and I actually watched some of the video. They released uh, some video for each of the systems uh, ahead of it this week, so that you could actually see uh, the difference. And holy cow, is this looking crispy? Yeah, let's go. Biomutant, Biomutant was beautiful. Biomutant, yeah. the, the screenshots from Biomutant are something else in photo mode. Like I've got some amazing shots from Biomutant. Um, but there was always a blur in the background, a lot like Dying Light It's that depth of field, it's depth of field. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, the re and the resolution just wasn't up to par yet. Mm -hmm. But this patch has cured all of that because on Xbox Series X, you get it's native 4K, 4K 60, yep. native 4K with 60, but not stable 60. But if you got VRR like I do, probably going to be pretty good to go 
Oh, uh, but they do have dynamic 4K, which is a lock 60 um, as what well. You mean. That's perfect. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, uh, but BioMutant is looking really good. So, if you haven't jumped into it, or if you had it and then jumped out of it, now's the time to get back into it if you want to. Again, I think it's a great game. The first couple of hours yeah. is what turned a lot of people off because it is slow. The tutorial is what it is, but they they patched a lot of that, and you can now skip a lot of that stuff as well. Biomutant is a great play if you're looking for something to do. I mean, again, we got so many games right now. I know time is limited for everybody, but Biomutant, I think, is worth it. Uh, really cool. Just a cool story. Uh, the loot is awesome in it. Uh, there's just a yeah. lot to that game. So uh, that's going to be one I jump back into. And then we got... Also on September 6th, we got Temtem coming to PlayStation 5, Xbox Series, Switch, and PC. This is from Humble mm -hmm. Games, which is a great publisher, developed by Crema. This is an MMO that I really? did not know was coming out. Yes. I, I heard about Temtem, but I didn't know exactly what it was. I, I didn't is realize it was this like the Pokemon-like game? Is that what this is? I think, I think, that's, I think that, that is Some what it is. Some people talk to, is that, is that it? Is this the one? Uh, okay. Let me, let me right. see if I can find something on Tim Tim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tim Tim. Tim Tim is coming. I yeah. I, I I've heard of it. I just didn't know. I didn't know it was an MMO. Yeah. yeah uh, that's that. really interesting to find out. Um, looks like we got a. Let me see if I can pull up this game. Page. I know you guys probably heard that. That was loud. Loud as hell. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, I want to play it for you guys, man. Um, you probably heard that again. That was probably loud as shit, but that's so fine. Um, here we go. <laughs> Look at you. Blow it out people's ears. Hopefully you guys can see that a little bit. There we go. Yeah, it has like this 3D pixel art style. Kind of reminds me of Pokemon a little bit. You got cards. Okay. It is really, okay. it's, it is like really pretty much like Pokemon. Pokemon. You got, you got monsters that get something from cards or Digimon. Um, it also looks turn-based. The cover art itself looks like Pokemon. So whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's sure. essentially what right, it's cool. turn based Pokemon combat right. type stuff. Ten tip. All right. Interesting. Awesome. Um then we've got September six also has the Tomorrow Children Phoenix. Tomorrow edition. Children. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is a uh, sim game. Um ah, okay. this this guy had some traction, but it's only on PlayStation. Uh PlayStation five and PlayStation four is getting the Phoenix edition. I mean it's the big edition or whatever it's from q games simulation uh coming out september 6th um so go check that out i know some people do are aware of the tomorrow children but again, yeah there's so much to play um and then on september 8th we got jack move coming to pc uh jack move is from so romantic published by hyper Train kind of digital a role-playing game uh oh, looks cool. kind of a cyberpunk-esque type role-playing game a little bit of anime to it. I like it. I like the cover. So that, that is that coming cover. out September 8th. Um, and then a game that a lot of people uh, had their eye on uh, is dropping this week, too. Damn, we it comes out show. this week? It comes out this week, brother. Oh, I know you were on this. Yeah, yeah. Steel Risings. That's right. Steel Rising is coming. PlayStation 5, Xbox Series, and PC on September 8th. Already. This is from Spiders Studios. Anybody who's listened to Living Split Screen since the beginning has... Right, I'm up heard me mention that I love Spider Studios. They make some of the best double A RPG action games out there. Uh, I've always been a fan of Spider Studios. This one looks like they took a little bit of a step up. Uh, it's published by Nacon, so they got a little bit more resources now. Um, I certainly would not put this on a on a triple A level, maybe low triple A, but whatever, who cares about labels? Uh, at the end of the day, this looks really cool. I love the concept. I'm not so sure um, when I'm going to jump into this, but I'm going to grab this at some point. Um, and I think some people actually, I think actually Shizno, I think Shizno, you mentioned that you had pre-ordered it. So you got the early kind of demo that they did. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Steel, uh, Shizno says Steel Rising is very fun. The beta is Her. great. Can't wait for the full game. So, um, and uh, Steel Rising is a step up in production for Spiders. Well, there you go, guys. So we got somebody actually in the chat who has played the, the beta uh, that was early if you ordered it. So uh, pretty awesome stuff right there. Steel Rising is going to be one of those games I think people you know, are going to talk about. It's, it's going to be one of those hidden gems out there uh, for sure. And then 
of course, you know, my crack, my addiction, which I'm going to try to win yet again for the third year in mm-hmm. a row. I'm going to try mm-hmm. to win it because I ain't spending $150 on the ultimate edition. Okay. I'm not doing it. Uh, but NBA 2K23, the juggernaut is back on September 29th. Um, I've been following a little bit some of the changes they made this year. Huh? They've done some good things. I, I got to say, we all know it's a cash grab. We all know it's a cash cow. We all we all know what they're going to try to do with my team, and they're going to try to suck you into that and get you to buy all those packs of players and all that kind of stuff. But they've actually made some customer-friendly changes. They got rid of the contract system. No Did more they contracts. really? Yes. Wow. Yes. Now, that's dope. Cause that Huge. that was that was I mean yes. I did, I wasn't having like a super problem with it or whatever the case yeah because uh, you can't build them up but they are annoying sure. like why? if you play a if you play a lot of my team and yeah you're it could be annoying to complete and you're trying to complete a lot of the different uh, game modes that they set up within my team that's even annoying as a single player there's a lot there um, <laughs> there's a lot there and you can run into contract problems now yeah. la- at 22 was a lot better than 21 21 was stupid like i ran out of contracts all the time because they and i thought they were pushing you to buy packs obviously probably yeah, I don't know. Which, which i think they were 22 yeah. was much better since i only played domination and i only dabble in a couple of the other things when i'm trying to get a player or whatever or earn um some things um i was okay i had plenty of contracts so they got better but this year they just did away with the whole contract system so Damn, no more worry about that so yeah, and they made some other changes in there as well that you guys should go check out if you're NBA 2K fans. Uh, definitely did some good things. Uh, so I got to give them credit there. Uh, but uh, that comes out September 9th. And then Switch is getting one of their big releases. Shout out to Mr. Joanna Dark. I don't know if he's lurking or if he's in the chat yet. Uh, but obviously he is a big Switch fan. Um, and he has been playing some Splatoon 3 early. Uh, and loving the hell out of it. I think they had a demo or whatever the case may be. But I'm trying to give it a run. Three is coming out September 9th. Uh, it is the closest thing you're going to get to an actual multiplayer experience on the Switch, I think. Um, so yeah, well, Smash Brothers, <laughs> but yeah. Smash Brothers, sure. Yeah, Smash Brothers. Yeah, whatever. Uh, but Splatoon 3 um, is a big one for them. So, hey, all of you Switch fans out there, again, shout out to Nintendo. Respect the hustle. Uh, Splatoon 3 happening this week as well uh so that's this week uh steel in yeah man gaming. yeah that was this week in gaming it looks like that has been wrapped up quite a few titles get in there man uh splatoon I, i've been kind of off and on about i mean i mean i have a switch so it's like i've always thought about jumping in but I never have um 2k again i heard some up and down things about it I, if they're able to get it in the game pass i'll play and it is literally that <laughs> simple um I'm just I'm just so overspending money on sports games. Um, no, I get it. It's the same thing. With, it's the same thing with like FIFA too, man. It's like I, I like I want to play FIFA, but I, I at the same time I'm not trying to spend money. Um, <laughs> and then the same thing with uh, well, and then Steel Rising again. That's yeah. that's on the list for sure. I didn't hop into the demo. I saw some other people talking about the demo too and asking me if I tried it. And I was I just don't do that, man. If I'm already interested in the game, I don't need a demo. I don't need a beta. I don't need any of that. I'll play the game when it comes out so I can get that full experience because too many times than not, the game is completely different most times um, that first day anyway. Uh, then other than that, yeah, man, I, I do definitely agree with the whole Biomutant. Um, if you guys have not jumped into Biomutant, please do yourself a favor and check it out. Um, if it's not for you, it's not for you, man. Um, and no, I, it's not in any services or anything like that unless you're on PC. Um, then you can uh, subscribe to, I believe it's Ubi? Yeah, or is that EA? Can't recall. Um, but you can, um, but you can subscribe to the server. I believe it's in EA. Um. You can subscribe to the service. You can play it that way um, if you do have a PC to play it, but it is well worth it. Um, they've also made a lot of combat updates, uh, a lot of movement updates, a lot of just world updates that were kind of lacking in the beginning, uh, which could be the perfect time for you to go back now. Uh, again, I can't make any guarantees that I'd end up going back, uh, but I, it is definitely a game that I would recommend anyone. And, for, and Fahim, I totally agree. 2K needs to get back into the NFL. Now they do have the license but they can't make a simulation type game like madden right. that's one of the restrictions again i don't know why they 
Well, I do know why the NFL's money partner with EA for this long, but they're doing a disservice to uh, the game itself by not allowing somebody else to make a simulation game to go up against Madden. Uh, but at the end of the day, if 2K can come out with a game like Blitz, yeah, uh, it could be it, it could be huge. NFL if Street Street Blitz. That's it. You know, if they get a game that's on that arcade level um, with their expertise and what they know how to do. It could be the next big thing. See, uh, it really could. I think that's an interesting conversation to have to kind of start off with, um, just to kind of warm the uh, the old noggin. I think I don't know. It's it's hard to bring back older games, right? Because we have a certain nostalgia about them. Um, the street, especially like the street games, NBA Jam, uh, NBA Street, NBA uh, no NFL Street, uh, FIFA Street. All those games had a certain magic to them on the PlayStation 2. And I don't know if that magic can be revitalized in today's age if you don't include like some form of customization with it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, where you have all those characters or maybe even create your own character and, and just take it up to that, to that, to that next stage. Madden's doing, did it a little bit because I know they added their little pick up street whatever the thing it is i don't know what that is but it was the, see the three on three or whatever yeah, the hell it was that should piss me that should piss because that was the one thing that i got super excited about when they first talked about it and then i went and played it and it is not even remotely close and it, it's like okay the one mo like that legitimately got me to spend 60 dollars on madden when when i heard about that i was like what i was like they dropping that Hey man, I'll, I'll play some Madden. Why not? I try. I tried out. The, I tried that out, and I was like, "Bro, this is so whack." Like you get to me, I feel like they could literally re, like, pretty much remake the game and re-release it. And I do agree, it, it probably would do pretty well. Um, and if anything, EA, I mean, I'm pretty sure you got enough money, um, or 2K, pretty sure y'all got enough money uh, to bring some of those series back, right? Um to bring those ideas back, like, and without even hurting your pockets like that. I mean, at least, at least in my opinion. But again, there could be something also sad for, maybe people just don't want that type of thing, and that's why it hasn't been made yet. I don't know. I mean, there's not enough outcry. What do you think about that, Paul? Um, I think the big, again, I, in a perfect world, I want competition at the end of the day. Right, 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 right. I, at the, in a perfect world. Again, we're not going to get that at all. But I think that 2K has enough experience in so many different games, especially even sports, obviously, mm -hmm. again, that I think they can make their own vision here, Steel. Yeah. Um, and, and I think they can push the line. I, again, I, I have questions on how this license is set up. Like, who determines what's sim and what's not? Yeah, right? like... I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like how far, like they could push it where they can claim it's arcadey, but like, who's going to be the judge of that? Like, you know, what, what EA is going to call up the NFL and be like, Oh, that game they just put out is way too sim. Like, okay. Like who's going to be the arbiter of that? that, right? that you know what I'm good, saying? Who, yeah, that's a good point. Is there like contract clauses? If it right. has these certain uh, assets in it, then it becomes this other thing. <laughs> right. I don't know. Right. Because obviously they're going to be able to use the names. They're right. going to use the NFL light. You know, right. Teams, right. Right. All that stuff. So where is it? And how can they get away with making the game like, okay, well, no, we're arcade ish because we have these modes. Right. You know what I'm saying? But we also have this game that's borderline sim right we have a full experience here for you nfl fans and it's borderline sim but we've thrown in these things that make it arcadish now right like that's what i'm curious if 2k is going to push that line and, and come out with something like that where you have these modes that are super arcadish like street like blitz you know but at the same time they've got a full mode that includes some of the dynamics of that but it can be played like a like a regular NFL game. Like I'm cuz you know 2K is going to push, right? You 2K knows that people are going to flock to this game in droves. Oh, the only thing that you got to do is make yeah. a um 
what is that is it called i don't think it's called 2k college um no. what the fuck it's called ncaa um yeah i think they should do if 2k ever gets back into um making ncaa for an example because that's who was making them right no ea oh, EA's EA's got the license NCAA. back okay, yeah fault, fault. ea's always had the college side of things okay they've damn. always done it and that's why when they got the license back some people were really excited because what used to happen to steel that's an internal competition yeah. back in the Damn, day i thought there were i thought there was two different no no no, no. Uh, i that's think crazy. 2k did 2k have nca at one time i don't know i don't know that's good but what used to happen steel internally at ea was the two teams were completely separate madden and and, and the nca and the college football used to introduce new mechanics that's why right. their college games were always beloved. Yeah. They would introduce new stuff that would. Here goes my mic again. See, I told you. No, you're good. You're good. You're good. Your mic's all right. Not, not on my side. It's not. Oh, but, okay. Yeah, not on my side. It goes crazy in my ear. Anyways. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So what used to happen was NCAA would actually push Madden and force the right. Madden to make changes because people would be out there like college football is playing better than Madden. And that's why yep. that got so popular back in the day. So I'm actually happy that's happening because I think that could start that rivalry internally up again um, and force Madden team to do something, right? To actually do – and I know they are, folks. Again, not a dev. I'm not downplaying the devs ah, over there. Okay. They've got a business model that they – corporate structure in EA that dictates that they don't put a whole lot of effort – into changing madden okay so I that's what that's what i was that's what i was getting to mix with because yeah. before um I, I i was seeing certain images in my head and i don't know why i re yeah. replaced that with something else but yeah i mean you had yeah it was called espn 2k yeah um right. and then and they had the espn license that right. was amazing and then you had, had the halftime show yep oh my god oh and you got and then you got nfl 2k so honestly, all they would have to do at that point, like 2K could literally do NFL 2K Street or NFL Street, or I mean, that's what it was called back in the day. So it's like, I don't know, does who has who would have the right to make that happen? And I, again, like uh, Jesse Darby brought up a good point. It was just like, look, I mean, as long as it had multiplayer, I think it would do just fine. And I, I mean, I agree with you. I mean, we would need dedicated servers, but like other than that, yeah, I mean, I think you got the perfect recipe for success, honestly. They're Especially, not going to have dedicated servers, though. They it's should. Gonna peer they should. To, it's going to be peer-to-peer -peer just like NBA. That's you so stupid. That. Yeah, that's a, that's a, uh, I don't, anyway. That's, that's the a, biggest problem with the NBA 2K franchise right now. Bro, they could, they could, you know, NBA 2K could be at such a different edge. Like, they could be looked at like turn 10. Like, you know what I'm saying? Where turn 10 always internalizes and tries to invigorate themselves and make their game better. I know it may not be a lot of big things that people may notice, but oh, I wish 2K would take that. Like, with giving you, you're making so much money, bro. You can afford to add servers, like dedicated servers, to make sure that everybody has an equal player experience, not um peer to peer oh you have an ass connection so now my shots are off by almost three seconds and like i just don't i don't get that like why would you force people to have a worse experience when you have the potential to give people a, a dedicated experience especially in the game in like in 2k that is known for being competitive like 2k is known for being competitive Point blank period. I know Madden gets like that too, but when people talk about sports games, like 2K basketball is just on a whole different league of like conversation, right? So it's like, that is such a turnoff for me when I go to the park or you go to the Jordan or you go to the rec center and the connection is just ass. You're like, bro, what year am I in? Is this like, am I on the switch? And that's how it feels sometimes. I don't know. It, it it is what it is, it's, but that's why awful. that's why I that's why I just don't personally invest in sports games anymore. Right? Speaking with your wallet, and it's not gonna work for everybody because obviously, dude, me speaking with not speaking with my me speaking with my wallet hasn't changed anything. People are still buying more two K than ever, buying more Madden than ever. Uh, you know, Madden can have an ass year, and then somehow they turn it around. So. I don't know. It's just weird. Uh, what what if what if Turn Ten got tired and said, "You know what? 
we're gonna make the next <laughs> football game. Oh my god. Can you imagine? Can you imagine getting back into it? Again, I think the NFL should license uh, out more. I, I, I know why they do it. EA pays them a ton of money. Right. The mutually beneficial uh partnership between both because Madden is so big, but I think some introduction of competition. That's why I want to see 2K push the line. And, and even if they've got to get a little arcadey with it, yeah. And if they show off dope. why they were the best sim football game back in the day with 2K, why it was so much better. Again, Felt Madden, better. Madden the, it's, the, it's, it's the basics that I have such a problem with. And I've already seen the videos of this year's Madden, and Mav has been playing Madden. This yeah, year. I've seen him. Yeah. He says it's the best one in a while. So, I mean, I'll take his word. People said that last year, too. But... but I've seen the videos of the offensive line and their blocking. It's still, to this day, 2K1 has better offensive line blocking than Madden in 2022. And I don't care what anybody says. It still had more natural blocking than what Madden has. I've seen videos where the offensive lineman literally comes out of their set and lets the defensive lineman run past him, and he's still just standing there, and he stands there. That's all they do as the defensive lineman's headed towards the quarterback. It's it look. It just boggles my mind in 2022 that they can't even get the blocking. Right. I I just it, oh my god, it's awful. But anyways, that's yeah. enough Madden talk. Yeah, that's enough. <laughs> I think that's I think I think we tore up the sports talk. Um, and that's the other thing too. Yeah, Kira, every year I just I'm I'm not with that, bro. And I if there's one thing that I do, if I can speak to a mass audience of people, if I can speak to a million people tomorrow, and I can tell them, hey. Do not buy another sports game for at least two years. And I'm telling you, that third year, you're going to get a the greatest sports game you've ever experienced. I'm telling I'm t- because they'd be forced to. They'd have no other choice because they'd lose so much money. But when you got people paying pay for VC and paying for packs, and it's just crazy, man, especially for roster updates and little things that make changes. Uh, I just don't, I don't get it. That's, that's the, that's the real, that's the real issues that ultimate team and my team, that's where they put all their effort into. Yeah. They don't put the effort into the base game because that's just the single player mode. It's so weird. Uh, I, I, it is really strange. Like That's why I always said that they should just at this point, if enough people rose up, if enough gamers rose up and stopped, buying the yearly release right that they would eventually go to the free to play model and just make it a games as a service make us pay 20 bucks for the roster updates 10 bucks for the roster updates right um and do it that route and just continuously pump out ultimate team and my team stuff my biggest problem with those two modes and again i'm a guy if i win nba 2k i play the hell out of it steel knows that i got you know for 200 hours plus in the past two games just playing single player ultimate or my team and i do buy the packs because i win the game for free so i will buy some packs to get some players right but the whole thing is is that none of that carries over to the next year yeah they i don't came get up with oh. some system reward I know the player. They could, uh, yeah it, i know they couldn't let you carry over every single card that you bought the year prior that would make it redundant to buy new packs i mean but it, you could also like base that off of how much time you spent with that sure. in the game or, or you just know. give us like a choice to carry over five cards right to carry yeah, over five of your favorite yeah. players from the year that'd before be even if you knock down their stats a little bit to start out to, which would incentivize you to get the new cards just being able to carry over some of what you bought or have it have some meaning or maybe trade in your cards from the previous year for new cards for the new game, whatever. I just wish they would incentivize it that way. So, you know, again, just not buying some digital product that's only good for 12 months and then it's worthless, right? I, I just wish there was some way to carry that. Over. And that would be my biggest change. And uh, it's unfortunate because I, I really don't think that they care. Yeah, no, they don't. Um, no, of course I, not, because I... people, that, no, because people are spending billions of dollars in there. No, they don't care. Which, which is dumb. I just feel like that's such a backwards way to look at things, right? Yeah. Um, at least for me. But again, I, I'm not running a, a multi-billion dollar business or whatever the case may be. Steel? No, not? unfortunately, I'm me? not. If I if I was, we'd be doing uh, we'd be doing living split screen from a studio probably <laughs> up the street. Um, we would have figured out some different ways. Me, I, and, I was expect I was expecting that bank wire today, brother. I guess hey, I that, huh? well, no, no, not not today, not today. <laughs> Uh, me and Pong would be in a completely different studio right now, and we'd we'd have like I don't know, mag, an actual Master Chief 
and um an actual shepherd behind us or something i don't i don't know um i think that's what we would do um <laughs> <laughs> we have an outlandish studio just be like the amount of We'd be things making our own damn game steal like that, dr that disrespect true. That that's is, what would be. Doing. That is true, but I don't know if we'd have the same love for video games at that point. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, that's just that is such a scary conversation. Like when when I heard people that like had a love for video games, and they got into the industry, and then they're like, I don't even like, I don't even look at video games the same. Anymore. Yeah, no, I wouldn't. I, yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want that, man. Yeah, I've heard too many devs say they oh. can't even play their own games. Yeah, because so. I mean, you imagine you're you're living with it for six to seven years, but that also, like, at least for me, I know not every it doesn't affect everybody the same, but at least for me, when you think about that, that does some that makes me look at games differently. And that's all I need. Right. That's all I right. need. <laughs> I don't need right. the actual experience. I mean, I can come stay a day or two, come spend a week in a studio, but other than that, that's about it. <laughs> um, exactly. I, I think with that. I know a lot of people were geared up for it at the beginning of the show. I think it's the perfect time to get into what some of the Competition and Markets Authority, the CMA. Ooh, set this up. I'll be right back. All right, yeah. Um, and also uh, what the Federal Trade Commission, the FTC, um, have been kind of battling with, with this whole Activision Blizzard deal, right? Now, the article that I'm going to pull from is from The Verge. Uh, this was written on September 1st, 2022. Um, and the title goes, Microsoft pleads for its Activision Blizzard deal as UK regulator signals in-depth review. Now, for those who aren't familiar with this, uh, Microsoft is currently um, in the deal to purchase Activision Blizzard. Uh, if you don't know that, maybe you're just not tuned in, or again, it could just be new information to you. But with this going on, uh, this happened about last year, so this deal has been trying, it's been trying to go through for a while, right? Um, well, the talks of it and everything started. Um, everything officially started this year. But um, so, but there was in anticipation that this deal would probably end up getting through about uh, the middle of 2023. And we've had consistent conversation talking about, hey, well, if Microsoft makes this deal, is it going to make a monopoly? If Microsoft makes this deal, um, is it going to be anti-consumer? Um, as Call of Duty, well, we've come to find out that Call of Duty actually means a lot more than some of us anticipated, uh, that there's also people who are downplaying what Call of Duty is to the industry. Uh, there's also some that are saying that, hey, there's nothing like Call of Duty that's out there, which um, on either side, there's a lot of truth, and, but there's a lot of filled-in information that may not be, well, I'm not going to say may not be, that isn't 100% accurate. So um, I'm going to start off by just reading some of this article. Uh, again, Microsoft did spend $68.7 billion to jump into this Activision uh, Blizzard deal. So that's something else to keep in mind. Again, this is the biggest deal in Microsoft's history. Uh, so I know a lot of people are like, oh, well, you know, if it was another deal, then nobody would else be looking at it this way. And it's like, uh, regardless, this deal was going to get looked at. One, it being Microsoft. Two, because of the money that was spent. Come on, bro. Yeah, they're not gonna. They may not look at seven billion dollars for one for a Bethesda Zenimax. It's not as big of an impact. But when is there something that's of the biggest deal that your company has ever done, and your company's name is Microsoft? That kind of is like uh, okay. Well, may, maybe we need to look into that a little bit. Um, but so I'm gonna break this down uh, in this article a little bit. And again, this is from The Verge. And shout. And this uh, article is written by Tom Warren. So. Uh, Microsoft is publicly pleading for its Activision Blizzard deal to go ahead, just as the UK's CMA, uh, Competition and Markets Authority, has expressed concerns. Microsoft surprised the gaming world uh, earlier this year with the $68.7 billion uh, Activision Blizzard deal. Uh, the UK's CMA says it's concerned that Microsoft's anticipated purchase of Activision Blizzard could substantially lessen competition in gaming consoles, multi-game subscription service, and cloud gaming service. So off that first, when I first, when I first read this, because I, I, I'll admit I read this a couple of days ago, um, since the first was on a Thursday. Uh, <laughs> but when I first read this article, um, at least this part of the sentence, what this told me and some of the other outlying things around this whole conversation is that, hey, guess what? Game Pass is actually a lot more of a threat than people try to make it seem. Like it wasn't because a, a lot of people, uh, there's a ton of people 
I'm not going to just say a lot. There's a ton of people out there who don't see the sustainability of Game Pass, who don't understand it, don't get how it works, um, and say that it, that it, it just won't work in today's market. Now, there are some of us, uh, a good amount of us, who have also said on the other side that, hey, we see the subscription service model working. You see it with Netflix, Disney, these other services. You apply it to gaming because people are more interactive. It's a time commitment. Uh, your, your time is spent differently here. You're actually uh, interactive with what you're playing. Uh, it's, it's, it's a little bit different. That's the way we feel like it will work better. So there's always been these two opposing sides, but what this blatantly told me along with the other conversations that have gone that have come from this either whether it be from sony and brazil or um this in the uk now is that there is a concern although nobody could really say how big the concern is because you can't look into the future nobody is a time patroller you didn't go into the future and they come you're not from back in the back to the future or whatever the case might be you didn't come back with the delorean hop out and say look um if act if microsoft gets this deal to go through they're going to monopolize and the entire gaming industry um sony's going to close tomorrow and like no but nobody knows so a lot of what's going on is people trying to anticipate what could be happening and that's what i'm pulling from this article too this far right i haven't even re wrote, read the whole article and that's what i'm pulling thus far is that game pass is scarier than what people anticipated and they don't know what microsoft who is known for having a monopoly tendency because of even though it's not like it's something that happens all the time or <laughs> whatever the case but uh, they do have a major, they're a major player in the cloud space. They're also a major player as far as computers go in the operating system um, because they do have Windows. But after the initial research phase, the CMA is signaling it will move to call phase two investigation if Microsoft isn't able to answer its concerns with five, within five working days. Um, now, this also says that they're going to move to phase two if Microsoft isn't able to answer the concerns. And okay, so if Microsoft answers the concerns, it's still gonna go into say phase two. This tells me no. So then what? What else can you say, right? And we'll get in that here in a little bit. Um, a phase two investigation will see an independent panel examine. There's gonna be people who are gonna look at the deal a little bit closer um, and make sure that everything is, all the dot, uh, I's are dotted and all the T's are crossed. Um, they go on to say, detailing Microsoft plans for gaming beyond just Xbox consoles, Spencer says the company will pursue a principled path in its approach to Xbox Game Pass and Call of Duty. Microsoft says it will make Overwatch, Diablo, and Call of Duty all available in Xbox Game Pass, but not prevent games like Call of Duty from being available on PlayStation. That is something that a lot of, a lot of us on this side of the fence have been saying that, hey, they don't need to make the game exclusive, right? Um, they've come out and said, hey, you guys want Call of Duty? It's great. The only difference is we're going to get the 70 cut instead of you guys. You're going to get the 30 this time. So, I mean, that's the main, that's the main difference. Um, but Spencer goes on to say, that's why, as we've said before, we are committed to making the same version of Call of Duty available on PlayStation on the same day the game launches everywhere or elsewhere. Um, Spencer also goes on to liken the deal uh, to the company's 2.5 billion acquisition of Minecraft. We know players will benefit from this approach because we've done it with Minecraft, which continues to be available on all uh, multiple platforms and has expanded to even more since Mojang joined Microsoft in 2014. And again, this is part of the reason why I think the deal is gonna get, end up going through a lot quicker than maybe anticipated. Um, and again, it could still be 2023. I'm, I'm not one way or the other. I could see the deal getting done this year, um, mainly because there is literally nothing to block this deal. Um, the only argument that I've heard is that where people bringing up what, the, what is the potential of the future. And if we're gonna use what about, what about isms and future quote unquote potential, you can't make current decisions based off of what you think is going to happen. You can't, you don't know, right? And Microsoft, I've heard other people bring this up, is setting the precedent for how these deals will happen uh, going forward, right? That's the other big thing about this. When you've got big bucks to spend, you're also going to be the, the, the person to lay down the groundwork, the foundation, the, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna basically bring the revolution 
to the industry and, and give everybody a playing field to now kind of, okay, if we spend this kind of money, this is what we have to look at, right? And nothing's gonna, and we've, we've mentioned it here and other people have mentioned it too, like people get, are caught up in what could potentially happen in the future. Did you guys not forget, although you're the main ones that were saying this, that they could always go back and reevaluate the deal? Or did you forget about that? But you think they're concerned about what could, oh, they're so concerned about what could future potentially happen. Oh, Game Pass. So because of Game Pass, this is a problem. Okay, so again, like I mentioned earlier, you're freely admitting that Game Pass is a problem. That Game Pass can sway consumers. That it has that potential, which me and Paul have spoken on. Boom has spoken on. There's some other great people in this community who have spoken on. The Iron Lords, for an example, and uh, the Xbox 2. There's other great people who have spoken on these same things. Right? There's a, it has this potential. Microsoft's got its thumb on the pulse, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, so a little bit going uh, a little bit further. Brad Smith, Microsoft president, vice and vice chair, is even more direct about the Call of Duty situation, saying we're ready to work with the CMA on next steps and address any of its concerns. Sony as the he made sure to say this. Sony as the industry leader says it's worried about Call of Duty, but we've said we are committed to making the game available on the same day on both Xbox and PlayStation. We want people to have more access to games, not less. Microsoft also had previously argued that not distributing games like Call of Duty at rival console stores would simply not be profitable for the company. Wow, it's like these people know how to run their business. It's like Microsoft has been around doing this for a while. You know what Microsoft is doing that they were always good at now? Paul, you want to take a wild guess? What do you mean? What are they? What are they doing good at that they've always been good at? Yeah, bullying. Oh, well, I mean, uh, it's some, it's some, <laughs> you can do it. You can throw a little bit of bullying. Bullying it with a smile. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> they're, they're, they're throwing a little bully in there. More, more, more like a. It's it's like that. It's like that. It's like that smart kid you can't argue with, right? Because they always got some slick comeback for you. Um, <laughs> you just don't know how to respond to it. You're like, all right, man, whatever. Um, nah, for me. What I was going to yeah. say, what I was leading to oh. is services, right? Yeah, services. Um, software, services. That's what they're good at. Have you not looked at Windows? Have you not looked at Office? You don't understand how their business model works? What is confusing about Game Pass that you guys have not seen already? The same thing with the family plan. Or this family and friends plan that they got going on. Have you guys not looked at these other services of how Microsoft handles them and what they're trying to do with gaming also? It's the same thing. They're doing, they're trying to get into a, they're trying to get back into a space. I'm, I'm not gonna say necessarily back into it because they're in the space, but they're trying to more so, they're trying to get back into the mind share by doing something that they're good at, which is exactly the same thing that Sony has been doing because they have been good at making hardware selling hardware or had been known for doing those things a little bit differently now especially when your competitor your direct competitor because again i saw people bringing this up oh well you know they're you know microsoft is uh they're they're competing with uh google and uh amazon and they're having these conversations that's that's what the conversation is about it's like, no, Microsoft, like when in some of these documents and everything, when Microsoft is talking about its competitor, it's talking about Sony in the, in the, at least in these, in these perspectives. I'm sure in this, in this realm, in this yeah, realm, in at this, least. Yeah. But there's bigger plans at play, which does put them in competition. Well, of course. So that's, when you, on it. that's why it's when you include cloud and everything else, but yes, of course, for sure. Um, Let's see what else I want to throw in here. So uh, this will be the last one that I'll throw in. Um, and this is also from Phil Spencer. He says, we will continue to engage with regulators with the spirit of transparency and openness as they review this acquisition. We respect and welcome the hard questions that are being asked. The games industry today is robust and dynamic. Industry leaders, including Tencent and Sony. <laughs> 
It's it's just funny. It's funny to wait. It's shade. It's it, shade it throughout this. Hogue pointed this out. If you if you even, yeah, dude, after the show, excellent. if you haven't watched Hogue's excellent. breakdown of all of this from an actual attorney, go watch Hogue's. But he broke it all down. There's so much shade in here. As far as it, it's a corporate speak. Yeah. So it's not like personal. But you know he's but, a, you know he's talking to. Yeah, exactly. You know exactly what he's talking. About. Like you're you're like you're not gonna you're not gonna legit read this and then tell me he's talking about Google. You're not gonna legit read this and be like, oh yeah, he's talking about Amazon. Yeah, that's what he's talking about. But this this was a highly aggressive <laughs> statement. This was a highly aggressive statement that put the onus back onto the other company. Yes. Reminding the CMA of who the good guys. If there's a good guy in big tech. Microsoft wants that label. Yes. And that's what they're going for here. Exactly. exactly so he says industry leaders, including Tencent and Sony, continue to expand their deep and extensive libraries of games, as well as other entertainment brands and franchises, which are enjoyed by players everywhere. <laughs> we believe that through a review, we'll show that the combination of Microsoft and Activision Blizzard will befit, benefit the industry, industry and players. Excuse me. Again, um, this is just the article that is coming from The Verge. I was talking about this scenario and this whole snafu and everything. But again, from what we've seen, from what we've seen of this, a lot of this was kind of anticipated, right? Uh, this further showed me personally that there's literally nothing that can stop this deal, right? Um, because if you're going to use Call of Duty, if you're going to use one game as the backing for why this deal can't happen, Microsoft's going to take you to court. And they're going to win that because Call of Duty is not enough to say that, oh, it is not going to be, this is anti-competitive, especially when Microsoft is openly giving you a bone and telling you, hey, if we, this is basically them telling you, hey, we need to put it in a contract, whatever. We said this already. So what do you want us to do? You want it on paper? You want, it, you want me to whoop out my John Hancock? What do you want? You want. Okay, want. perfect. That's, we, we said we'd do that. So what else can you say? Nothing. That's the only thing that keeps getting brought up. Is this deal about just Call of Duty? Hell no. It could be, it could be about the mobile market. It could be about King and Candy Crush. They could not be really considering Call of Duty as part of this whole package. Regard I mean, of course they are, they're a business. But, and they understand what, the, the, what Call of Duty does to the market, 100%. Call of Duty is also very futile, right? Call of Duty is where it's at right now, let's be honest, because Warzone was able to breathe life into Call of Duty, not because Call of Duty itself. Call of Duty's multiplayer is very lacking. Has been lacking. It is not what it used to be. People play Call of Duty mostly because of Warzone now. So what I mean by futile is that just the same way, because I was having this conversation a little bit with myself. Hey, there's nothing wrong with talking to yourself. <laughs> uh, I, was having this, I was having this conversation a little bit just to myself, just kind of thinking about it, pondering. And I was just like, look at, look at Battle Royales, right? Came out of nowhere. Arguing with yourself? Yeah, a little bit. Um, Jesus, people, okay. Pe pe right. some, some people are saying that that's, that's crazy, but, you know. That's a problem. That's, yeah. the, that's the best type of dialogue to have, right? Say, if it's a one-sided conversation, that's fine. But if you're arguing with yourself. No, so no, it's, it's, it's back and forth. It's back and forth. Okay. Right. Um, <laughs> deal with glasses steal without glasses yeah pretty much <laughs> pretty much pretty much and in the mirror so and i and i take the hat off so i get the difference <laughs> no man oh, so um <laughs> but no uh, um but look at battle royales right uh they were they weren't an existing thing uh, and they weren't a big thing until they were right came out of nowhere that same thing can happen with another game with another game mode and become this big thing within the next five years. Who, who says that Battle Royales have to be that thing? Is Call of Duty gonna be able to live through that? Yeah, you got Modern Warfare 2, you got a lot of hype behind this, you got a, the greatest multiplayer of all time is in within this game, so of course, you're gonna be bringing back a lot of attention with it. But, my biggest, like again, from what I've seen from this deal, um, and from all the conversations that we've kind of had about it over the weeks and kind of the year that this has kind of been going on, is that there's literally nothing to oppose this. There's no way that this comes across. Anything about this deal is anti-consumer. Nothing about this deal is saying, hey, this is going to be a monopoly if this happens. Nothing about this deal is going to be, 
is going to work in the on the negative side for the consumer period it's not and i don't think, think the thing to remember though steel with the cma right. is they don't necessarily come from the that's that's the difference between them and the ftc okay right? and the ft the ftc is even trying to go outside of what they are regulated the cma um is actually focused on competition okay okay so which of course is a part of the consumer side of things right because competition you don't want no competition because then you know you got a monopoly situation as we call it in the united states and therefore they that one company or entity controls the market which could be very bad for the consumer so it is a part of the consumer side of things but they are highly focused on the competitive side without even necessarily focusing on the consumer because they want to make sure they project more into the future than the FTC does, right? Okay. They look into the crystal ball more so. And this is this is what I've learned from uh, people like Luke Steele. Shout out okay. to Luke Steele, who's a great member of the community. He, he de- He's from the UK, and he uh, directly has dealt with the CMA on issues okay. in his field. So he kind of gets it, and he's been in our chats uh, right. giving us I've information. Seen him comments. Yeah, he's made comment. He, he was feeding Hogue information as well because Hogue is obviously a, an American attorney, right. um, which is different. So yeah, they their focus is a little bit different. But we, you know, we can talk about that a little bit later. But it it is it is an important distinction to make here when we're talking about the CMA because it's not the same as the FTC um, when it comes to that aspect. No, yeah, I appreciate that. It's perfect. I, yeah, I didn't um I didn't I didn't know that that specific detail um that it was like that. So damn okay. So take in consideration and looking a little bit into the future. I still say. They, they still don't have any grounds to say that this is going to inflict competition and this is not going to be fair or for Sony or anybody else like that. Um, from what we did see this time around, especially on, on Thursday, um, it did come across because I did see <laughs> you and Mav on PM to PM named the uh, name. Uh, we had an image or named the episode, something along the lines of mocking uh, basically the CMA parroting Sony yeah, um, in their yeah, comments yeah. That they made in the There's Brazil Sony's deal. Parrot. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, we're dropping frames here. That's interesting. Okay. Uh, so hopefully that, that catches up. I know YouTube are fixing on the back end, so it is what it is. Uh, but I wonder why it's doing like a few. But with that being said, though, even with them looking into the future, or whatever the case may be, there is you can only look so far into your crystal ball um, to try to even consider what this could do, especially for Microsoft, who is who isn't even considered that high in the market, right? Um, as far as gaming goes. Now, if you want to say, oh, they're, they're so, they're, it's hard to base business off of potential because you don't know what could possibly happen. And by you doing this, if that is going to be the sole thing that they're relying on and say that, hey, for the future, we think that Game Pass is going to be a problem then again, like I mentioned earlier, you're openly admitting that Game Pass is actually something that does sway the consumer, that not just does, but will sway the consumer, and that it is successful. That's what that tells me. Without anybody coming out with numbers or anything else like that, you are telling me that Game Pass is successful, that it works, that people are happy with it, and that it will sway the consumer from what you can see. Which is, is that what we're admitting that we need to be having a different conversation that I don't think people are ready for. So why isn't Sony doing it then if it's working? Why are you bucking? Why is Sony bucking the system? Oh, because you don't want to do it that way. Why? But it's working. You're admitting it's working. You're admitting that you're scared of it. That the potential of it is so scary. It's the big bad wolf coming to knock down on your straw house. But your house is made out of bricks, Sony. What happened? Nobody can touch the big bad Sony. But you're concerned about Game Pass. This is what this comes back down to. It's not about Call of Duty. It's not about, it's about Game Pass. Come on, guys. It's like, let's look at the bigger picture. I know it's easy to look at surface level and everything else. It's, it, it has to be bigger than Call of Duty. It has to be that, that Sony has sat down in a board, read, board meeting had smart people in the room, like um, some somebody like myself or Pong, and they sat down and said, all right, well, 
if we have Call of Duty still, and it's seventy dollars on our box, and our competitor has Call of Duty, and they have Call of Duty, they own it, and they put it on their box as they sell their consoles, and it is available in their subscription service. How does that hurt our model? Because whether you guys want to accept it or not, whether you're paying 10 or 15 bucks a month soon to change, whether you're going to join the family plan or not, for Game Pass, a lot of the games in the, in the mind of the consumer, when they come in, are perceived as free. Are they free? No, again, we're not arguing semantics. But in the mind of the consumer, it's free. So, Sony understands how business works. They've been doing this for a while. <clears throat> oh God! Can't talk. Talking now. Something. Something's stopping me. I think it's Sony. It's that that I got some of that Sony fur. <laughs> um, no. You got Jim Ryan in your throat? Uh, I hope not. I hope not. Uh, I don't. I don't need any. I don't need any. I don't need any of that. But no. Um. But I can I can guarantee you that they're sitting in those rooms and saying, "Hey, it's all about." perception right if it's perceived this way when this deal happens how is that going to cause us problems okay then let's speak on that without saying specifically that oh uh, call of duty there's nothing to compare to call of duty that's not what you're saying and at least to me that's what i'm getting out of this kind of whole conversation um again pong you know steer me off the horse a little bit i have heard you and matt talk about yeah. it um and I heard, have heard some of your other opinions on it overall. Um, but do you do you agree with me though, man, that it does seem like this is kind of more so them admitting that Game Pass is a problem or has the potential to be a real problem um, for consumers or for the industry or just for a specific company, as we know, um, as Sony trying to pitch it. Yeah, so there's... There's a lot, and I've I've learned a lot as the week has gone on by listening to different people, and, and some people, you know, again like Lucio and Hogue and and everybody else. So I've I've gotten a better, clearer image of this. And again, I know the the fun side of things is to run with you know Sony is obviously you know in the pockets of the CMA, whatever else. Here, here's the reality of the situation. All of this, I had already assumed that the CMA, which is the UK version, and then the right. EU has a separate version. I've always assumed this was going to be the biggest stumbling block. You can go back and listen to our early conversations about this acquisition when we started talking about this deal. Right. Was that I said that the EU UK was going to be because they was going to be the the potential tripping point because they look at things differently. Now I didn't realize how differently they look at things, um, and kind of the whole dynamic over there as to you know what they investigate versus FTC does. However, a lot of it is still similar in the fact that they were in phase one. I had assumed that they were already in phase two. I had assumed that they had gotten all the requested paperwork, just like the FTC. I did not think the CMA was going to come out publicly and say something. Um, I thought they were going to be more silent like the yeah, FTC it, is. So that kind of that kind of surprised me. And that's why my timeline for this deal going through was still this year. I thought there was still a good chance it could go through this year. But now as I've learned that they're just, they're not even into phase two yet. There's a five day grace period here as well. Um, that pushes my timeline into 2023. I'm now in the 2020 camp. Uh, this doesn't get done until early, I think okay. March. Um, because let me tell you this as well. Um, if the CMA goes to phase two, um, it's a 24 week period. Okay, so that's six months. Okay. Um, so automatically we're in the 2023 at this point. I don't think um, they're in phase one. Phase one has a very low threshold. You got to remember folks, and this is why I have such a huge problem in general with big government. When big government gets involved in things, these people know nothing about this industry or don't, you know, zero about this industry. The people on this board, you can go look them up. The CMA is public information. Um, they, you know, they're business people. Uh, they come from all sorts of backgrounds. Some of them do have government backgrounds. Uh, it's not as politicized as the FTC is, whereas the FTC is made up of people that come directly from the Republicans and the Democratic parties. Mm -hmm. um, the the uh, CMA, 
does not have that direct affiliation. Uh, and Luke Steele wanted to make that point as well in some of the chats. They are not that as politicized as the FTC. However, looking at the people's backgrounds, because they do put a full um, disclosure kind of page up with everybody and where they came from, um, so that if any anything that they review, if somebody has um, a, a um, I forgot, I just dropped the word, um, God dang it, I can't think of the name. The word they use when somebody, a conflict of interest, okay? Somebody, if somebody has a conflict of interest, that's publicly disclosed information. However, I would say that this is still big money at the end of the day. These people are still influenced politically in some form or fashion because they are still people. They're going to have their agendas, right. all that kind of stuff. But the CMA's first phase is very low threshold. So all they did coming into this, not knowing a damn thing about this industry, okay? All they did, and we talked about this too, Steele, what we heard from the Brazilian courts, we know for a fact that Sony sent to everybody, okay? Everybody that's reviewing this case is getting documents from not just Microsoft, not just Activision, but they're getting documents from other people. They're getting statements from other publishers, other companies that are involved in the industry to start learning about what the rest of the industry feels like with this acquisition. So Sony's going to be included, obviously, in that. So they sent those same statements from Brazil to all these other places. So the CMA, why it sounds like they're parroting Sony, is because that's their baseline knowledge right now, right? What happens is in phase two, it goes to a different part of the committee and then that's when they start collecting documents. And that's when it's Microsoft and Xbox's turn to educate these people as to what is actually going on in this industry, right? And that's what a lot of this is. A lot of it is educating people who know nothing about something um, and letting them know exactly what's happening and right. where your side stands, right? right? So that's what's going to happen in phase two here. Um, also, to your point, Steele, this is a case where they want those concessions in writing. Right. Microsoft and Xbox has been very public, but they're not going... Look, it's 2022. This is no longer business is done with a handshake and a nah, wink. Okay? Nah, that, nah. That's nah. not how we do business. They're not going to trust Microsoft to be the good guys. They're not going to trust them to follow through on their public promises. None of that. They're going to want these concessions in writing. And I said that from the beginning that this was what the, the play was going to be. So they're posturing right now. They're just starting their saber rattling, which we got on our side of the ocean in America early on, you know, when we had senators come out and say statements and all that kind of stuff right. publicly. That was their posturing. Now it's time for the CMA to do the same thing as they move into phase two. With a $70 billion deal, as you said, Steele, there was no way regulatory bodies across the world were just going to be like, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, that's fine. Take yo, 70 billion, no big deal. Go ahead, buy it up. They're not gonna do that. It was always gonna go to phase two. So right now, Sony's made their point, and we talked about this with the Brazilian statement steel. Again, this is why we always try to take the satellite view and take a step back because we we see these things coming. Sony knows in their heart of hearts that this deal is going to go through. Right, it, it's yeah. a greater chance than not that it's going to go through. Do that. All they're trying to do is stall. All they're trying to do is get somebody to listen to their side to give them more time. And if they can get somebody, one of these regulatory bodies, to actually deny this deal and force Microsoft into a court situation, well, Hogue confirmed that if it goes to courts and it, over in the UK, it's different. They actually don't go to court. Uh, Luke Steele said this. Okay. They have another regulatory body commission that hears it, right? And okay. then rules, okay? So it's not actual courts that they go through over in the UK. But no matter what, as Hoag said, if it winds up in the courts or under another commission, we're talking about potentially tying this up for years, okay? Years before this deal goes through. That's why Microsoft and Xbox want nothing to do with that. I was in the, I was in the camp from the beginning. You heard me, Steele. I'd be buying up everything and going, take me to court. Take me to court. Yeah. But, it, but, but that's, again, that's me. That's why I don't run billion, trillion dollar companies. Because that would tie these things up for years, which right. 
delays the plans that Microsoft and Xbox has. Now, for Sony, it'd be a good thing, right? That would buy them more time yep. to get their business model changed over to this new way of thinking in the industry, this new way of doing business yeah, in the industry. Yeah, perfect for them. So, so they want that, right? They want that. Right. Uh, even if at the end they lose and Microsoft owns Activision Blizzard, to them, that would give them more space. So that's all Sony's trying to do here. They're protecting their business, which I don't blame them. Does it make them look funny? Does it make them look weak? Yeah, yeah, it does. It does. But when you're talking about millions, billions of dollars, I could care less if I look weak. If I could trip <laughs> yeah. up my opponent, I'm going to do it, right? Yeah. That's what I'm going to do. So I don't blame Sony for doing what they've done. Um, again, yes, I understand the hypocrisy. Obviously, we've talked about that plenty. Sony does their own little deals to... Always. make things yeah. hard for Wait, the competition they the always have. been yeah correct it's just that those deals aren't big enough for regulatory bodies to look at that's not a 70 billion dollar deal no. now when you now when you put them all together right when you sure. put them all together could you make a case that sure sony has caused microsoft damage as far as a competitor goes of course you could of course absolutely but regulatory bodies don't look at that that way they want they only look at the big stuff and right now Microsoft and Xbox are in the middle of the biggest deal in history for this industry. Yeah. The biggest deal in history for Microsoft, for Microsoft period, yeah, which is crazy when you're talking about a trillion dollar, two trillion dollar company. So that's why all these regulatory bodies are going to do this. Um, and when they get to phase two and Microsoft and Xbox presents everything, and you've already seen it publicly in their statement steal, make no doubt, uh, make no mistake. Xbox and Microsoft are going to make the points about what Sony's been doing, about the potential of Tencent coming into this industry full force, the potential of an Amazon, Google coming in. Also, during those statements that you read, Steel from Phil, uh, that was in the blog, which came from the PR and attorneys, obviously, but it's it's underneath Phil's name. Um, they also they also made reference to Apple and Google in the mobile market because they know the regulatory bodies across the globe have been highly focused on what that's been going on. And we know for a fact, we talked about it here, Steel, that Microsoft and Xbox wanna break open those closed ecosystems. Mm -hmm. So they threw shade in there. So when they come into phase two and they start laying out all the documents and they start educating these people, you're damn skippy they're gonna let them know what all these other companies are doing uh and why this acquisition uh, is not outside the bounds, right? They're going to do, yeah. do that. They're going to have their moment where they get to speak their piece on what else happens in this industry that these regulatory bodies probably have no idea is actually going on. So that's all going to happen in this next phase. Um, I think that, again, with this acquisition, from all the points that are being made, Steel, the big deal here, and Hogue brought this up, and again, I reference Hogue constantly because, again, he actually is an attorney that works in mergers and acquisitions. Okay? Yeah. So this dude is speaking from experience. Maybe not in the UK, but he's speaking from sp experience in general right. and in America. The biggest thing that a lot of people missed from the Brazilian statement, Steele, because we were so hyper-focused on Sony's kind of pettiness and, and playing the victim right. uh, in the Brazilian courts, the big thing that a lot of people missed and didn't bring up, and I thought this was fantastic, was the CMA in their statements tried to kind of separate cloud gaming, Game Pass, and consoles. And Hogue has always said that if you're going to attack this deal, the weak spot is, is if you can make wow. it a case. Yeah, if you can make it a case that Game Pass and cloud are separate from the rest of you know the console market, yeah. that they're their own thing, then you could potentially attack this. Whole different right? conversation. He still thinks it's a weak argument, right? Because yeah, but... that's that because that that market in X Cloud or in cloud gaming and even in the mobile market in, in Game Pass, that market is still unsettled. That's not a settled market. That's right. brand new kind of tech. Yep. That's brand new services that nobody knows how it's going to turn out yet. It's not like we have 25 years of history of subscription services in gaming. But it we would open that conversation up for, it and we would, would understand more of what's behind that curtain. Right, and it is an area where you could see 
that with this acquisition and with the other things that Microsoft has bought already, you could see that in a crystal ball projecting out where they get so dominant because they have so much IP in Game Pass and available on the cloud that nobody else is able to come in and compete, right? You could project that out. Yeah, I could see that. But we still don't know. We still don't know. It's still an unknown. I'm certain, yeah. But, but the big point that Hogue brought up was that Sony was asked directly by the Brazilian commission, do you consider cloud gaming and game and subscription services separate from the console market? And Sony said, no, it's all a part of the same ecosystem. Because it is. <laughs> and because they don't want to be held yeah. to that standard when they get their services up and running steel. They don't want the same arguments to be brought back on them if all of a sudden they hit the lottery with a couple of these games as a service and all of a sudden they're out here making big deals and they go to buy a publisher and that comes to back to bite them in the butt, right? They don't want that. So they said no to that. So basically the, if the CMA tries to go down that road, Xbox has already got Sony's own words to say, no, that's not the case. Our main competitor that you guys are hyper-focused on right now, they even say it's not. Right. So that argument is out the window at this point, which was a great, great thing to bring up. Um, overall, when you look at this, Sony is worried about losing the marketing rights. That's why the Call of Duty is such a big deal. We all know or should know at this point that with this Activision Blizzard deal, it's way beyond a single IP. It is way beyond a Call of Duty. It is even way beyond the major IPs. World of Warcraft, Call of Duty, Diablo, Overwatch. It's well beyond that. That Microsoft Upward. really truly isn't making this acquisition for those. Those IPs are a small piece of what they're looking at. I agree. Truly king in the mobile market is what they want out of this. And then the PC side of things with Blizzard and the tech that they bring with Battle.net, that's the next piece. And then you start getting into the IP. Yes, Call of Duty is going to be a major chess piece. Don't get me wrong, but that's not why they're making this acquisition for $70 billion. That's why they're saying, we don't care. We're going to keep Call of Duty on everything. It's like Minecraft. It's its own platform. We're not planning on pulling it off of anything. We're not going to do that. That's why Phil wrote a letter of intent that we found out now, which is crazy to me. Because they're supposed to be doing business as separate entities until this acquisition goes through. They're not supposed to have any communication. So I don't know how close to the gray area. Obviously, this is approved yeah. by the attorneys. <laughs> but man, this seems a little odd that Phil comes out publicly and says that, no, I sent a, we sent a letter to Jim stating that we will ex get, grant him Call of Duty that was funny, yeah. beyond the contract that's already established. That's a letter of intent on a company you don't own yet, like that, in an IP you don't own yet. That's crazy to me that that was even done. But the fact that they're willing to do that still is my main point. They don't care about Call of Duty. I think it's in the benefit. Uh, I think it's in Microsoft and Xbox's benefit that everybody is focused on Call of Duty, that Sony has made this about Call of Duty. Because I think that takes the light off of all the bigger plans that Microsoft and Xbox actually do, do have. Because, of course, they want to be number one in this industry. Of course, they're not satisfied with number three. And Steele and I have talked about plenty of times about what we think their ultimate plans are. So yeah, they've got big deals in the works here. Call of Duty, everybody being hyper-focused on that takes the limelight off of what those future plans look like for everything else that's involved, which I think helps their you know, argument here to get this deal pushed through. Yep. Because so many people just want to talk about Call of Duty and what it's going to do to Sony. You know, look, that again, they don't care. But the other thing to say about this too, Steel, is even if you're looking at the competition, and even if you're, if you're focused on the competition more the consumer, which the CMA seems to be, their argument falls apart because basically all they're saying is, Microsoft and Xbox, you don't have the right to compete to be number one. Okay, well, that's the whole point of competition. Just because Microsoft and Xbox are doing the right things right now, and just because Microsoft and Xbox have a bigger bank, 
than 99% of the companies out there right now in this industry does not mean that they don't have the right to do this. That is competition. They're deciding to do things differently than everybody else. They're trying to change the entire game and rewrite the rules. And just because that doesn't favor the number one position Sony right now, right. or Nintendo, whatever you want to say, Nintendo, again, we know it doesn't yeah. really matter what happens. But Nobody's talking about just it. because that's the case that they're gunning for that number one spot does not mean that they don't have the right to do that. Of course they do. That's business. That's competition. That forces Sony to do things differently. That's why you see Xbox doing what they're doing because of what Sony did to get to number one, right? Whether right, wrong, or indifferent, that's competition. So that's where the argument really falls apart is you can't just dictate which company gets to be number one right? as, as a framing of, well, we're looking at competition. Well, if you do that, you're taking away the competition. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, that you you know, no, 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 that does not work. So this deal is going to go through again. I'm now on the the 2023 train. I think March um, is a good spot for this deal to go through. We would all love it to be sooner. Uh, again, we all would. I said that from the beginning. That's why I was on this year. I thought they could get this stuff through, but I thought, you know, again, the CMA and the EU were further along than this. But now that I've kind of found out some of the, the specifics, the 24 week phase of phase two, all of that, right. I, I, I think 2023 is right. I think Microsoft and Xbox are going to give the written concessions. What they're probably doing now, and Hulk brought this up, is you're not gonna you're you're going to try to avoid having to make different concessions in different areas, right? That could affect your business depending on where. So yeah. what you're going to do is you're going to get everybody's opinions, the FTC, the CMA, the EU, the major players here, the major regulatory bodies. You're going to try to get their opinions. And then you're going to try to get all of those regulatory bodies on the same page so that you can just have one blanket set of concessions that everybody's happy with. And then that and then it goes all through. So that's where we're going to get to now. A lot of black back and forth a lot of negotiating behind the scenes. Okay, we know you guys want us to give up this. We're not willing to sign a document that says Call of Duty Forever is going to be on PlayStation because we can't tell the future 10 years from now, right? We don't know right. what that's going to look like. We don't know what Call of Duty is going to be. Right, exactly. So we're, not going to, we're not going to sign something like that. But here's what we will do. We will say that we will put Call of Duty on PlayStation for X amount of years and then reevaluate at that point. They're going to try to get all the regulatory bodies to say, okay, no, that's that's fair enough. We can agree to that. That, you know, that gives you know, us what we want. My only problem with this entire thing, though, Pong, man, yeah. is that would we even be having the same conversation about any of this if it was yeah. Sony buying Activision Blizzard? Yes. Yes. The, with I mean, as far as, getting, big... as far as it getting looked at and everything, and, but as far yes. as, like, do you, do you think it would go the same way, though? With Sony, to, hey, everything is gonna, every everything is gonna be on our platform because you know the approach would be different. To so, a certain, to a certain, no, because I, I think I said this last be night because Psycho said the same thing, right? I think now that Sony's transitioning to this new business model that they are getting on board, like we saw with the with the Bungie deal, mm -hmm. I don't think they would pull Call of Duty. Now, I could be, I, I could be extremely naive. I know there's plenty of people in this community who would say you're crazy, Pong, for even saying that. Of course, they would make it uh, exclusive. But no, I don't think they would. I think they would leave Call of Duty multiplayer. Okay, I really do at this point. Now that we're here and so much has changed. Now, the only thing I will say is that some of the scrutiny would not be this high level unless Sony was also a trillion, two trillion dollar company that had their hands in a lot of other places. Right. I don't think that, that I, I think that Sony would get away with some more things without the high level of scrutiny because they're a smaller company because they're not Microsoft. I think Microsoft being the, the parent company here, the corporate company and their history and how much they've dominated in other areas. And because they do have Azure servers, which are becoming a major player, second only to AWS. I think all of that plays into this extra scrutiny for sure. But I still think this deal would be looked at if Sony was doing it. And I still think that Sony would be forced to give up some concessions um, at the end yeah, of the I day for things yeah. like Call of Duty and that kind of stuff. I think they would, but no, 
I, I can see your point, Steele. It is because Microsoft's involved, right? And Microsoft being the company that they are across the globe is one of the reasons why there's so much here. I just, I just say that just because traditionally how things have been. Traditionally, one, there's always been one side that's kind of been against the grain versus the other side. And again, that's not the, that, you can't forget that Microsoft was also trying to play that separate side of the fence because Microsoft wasn't on board with crossplay and all that shit in, in, in the beginning either. They were like, no, no, we're not doing that. But then they- No, not until their vision lined up. Right, them, right exact, right, exactly, exactly. Right. When they started looking at cloud, they started getting more yep. investment in Azure and they were like, all right, we got to find other ways to use this. So how do we do that? which is why you see where they're at now um but the main reason is like i'm not i'm not it's not even bringing it up for like also war kind of kind of conversation no. but more so just the other perspective of how this could be potentially be going on and why yeah. people like me and you why why we try to look at it more objectively than mm -hmm. just oh because it's microsoft this is happening or because it's sony this is why it's getting looked at it overall this is a huge deal, right? Yeah, yeah. And I just, in industry history. It's I don't know. I just I don't know if Call of Duty would be looked at the same versus versus like why aren't you guys talking about the mobile play? Why? Because there's a bunch of mobile games being played and being made and have plenty of money that's there. Right. I mean, right. Candy Crush is arguably bigger than all of that. Right. Candy Crush makes what Call of Duty makes uh, like. It makes it's more. Not even close. It makes more. Yeah, yeah it's it not more. even close. No, yeah. no. But but that was Microsoft's point too, right? Steel is that they play they play the weak, the weakness up mm -hmm. in that area. Right. When King is brought up, right? Well, we have no. There, Phil said it. Sati, we have no experience in the mobile app space. We, we that's what we're trying to do. We want two billion, three billion players. We're trying to open everything up. But right, in order to right. do that, we got to have a company that knows what they're doing and. Who better than King, yep. right? They're going to help us get to that mark, right? So they play that weakness card in that area when it comes up, for sure. Yeah, but I mean, I wanted to bring it up because it just, I feel like that added to the conversation and everything. There's also people saying that, oh, if it was this way, this way, this way. And it's just like, overall, guys, it's, this is a huge deal. Either way, it would get looked at. Um, there is a super hyper fixation on Call of Duty, and I know people have been saying, oh, there's no, you know, they're up and down with it, right? Some people one day say, hey, well, you know, Call of Duty is this big game, and then other people will say, um, no, it's not that big of a deal. At the end of the day, Call of Duty does drink, bring in a large group of people. Um, it does have a huge player base, uh, mm -hmm. but that's not the central focus of this deal. Um, oh. So at the end of the day, uh, there's just multiple angles to look at it from. Um, and it's going to continue. What's going to be enjoyable for me is just to see more and more information come out about this. Yeah. How does yeah, this get played out, right? We're getting a peek behind the curtain again, Steel. Exactly. This is great because this industry is so secretive. And again, not exactly. everybody cares about this nonsense. I understand that. A lot, most people are here just to play games and talk about games. I feel you, but but but, but, but Steel podcast, and I like the like, business side. We like the industry. Like all of it. Like we like all of it. And this is a huge like peek behind the curtain yeah. as to what's going on. And I love the chess moves. And you know, the, the last thing I'll say about this, Steel, and we can move on, obviously, yeah, we've got topic to talk about too, is that Look, at the end of the day, I don't care what side you're on. And you can be the biggest Sony fanboy, but if your only concern is Sony not being number one anymore, that's then stupid. You, that's stupid. That. you really don't have a real good look at what... You, you don't, don't have get a it. good business perspective. You don't you, get it. Yeah, you don't. Sony moving back to number three, which would probably happen at the end of the day... Would drive them. Would drive them to number... Would, would, would Yeah, would drive them to be more competitive, to, would, to make different decisions, been to go out. And it's already started, Steel. Just the thought of it has <laughs> already prompted Sony, yes, to move. And again, when we look at this stuff, nobody gave a shit when Sega went out of the business. No. No, no <laughs> regulatory oh, body well. stepped in, business. even though Sega at one point was 1A, 1B with yeah. Nintendo yeah. and were the leaders in this industry. Nobody gave a shit that they fell out. Nobody. Because of Sony's competition, right. right? Nobody cared at that point. So again, when you look at this stuff, this is the ebb and flow of any industry. Competition comes and goes. Companies rise and fall all the time. Call of Duty in 10 years from now, yeah, my, crazy to say, could be nothing. 
It, it very well could be. Again, could be. <laughs> Battle Royale literally came out of nowhere and now everybody wants it. And Halo could probably be better for it right now. Right? Right. <laughs> right. right. It's crazy. Exactly. It's, crazy. It, it's, it's absolutely insane how much this changes. But again, that's the point. And that's what Hulk was saying because Hulk right. went on a couple shows and there was, you know, people pushing back. Yeah, yeah. Stuff. Which I love. And, and I love. he was like, but at the end of the day, that's what this is. So if Sony falls apart, because this deal goes they through, they fall apart. They fall. Who cares? Who cares? It's another. And I, I say that Phil does actually care because he wants no, a he healthy won't. three. Yeah. He, he doesn't want Sony. It's to hard die to do off. business when you're the it, only it, one, main right. one that can provide the business. And then they'll, <laughs> then they'll really start being looked yeah. at. And again, for people, yeah. a little bit of 100%. history here, folks. For all of you who don't remember, Microsoft back in the '80s and '90s when they were getting demolished in Monopoly as a Monopoly and they yeah. were, you know, actually they were. in court battles. You know what they did? You know what they did? <laughs> they went out and helped Apple. Yep. Resurrect. Yep. Apple was about to be gone, but Microsoft knew that they needed competition so that they weren't only the, the only great white in the water where everybody was hyper-focused on them. They knew they needed competition. They needed another company to stand alongside of them yep. in certain areas so that they would not be looked at in the same light. They went out and they actually helped Apple resurrect themselves. You no, know, People forget that, but that was actually a business move. It wasn't out of the goodness of their hearts. No, okay? it was needed. They make no mistake. It was needed. But they did that, and that's where Phil is at. Phil wants a healthy Sony. Phil wants a healthy Nintendo. But Phil does want to be number one, of course. I mean, that's everybody wants. I, to of be course, you do. you're in business. That's what you're there for. Right. You're but, but you but you want your competitors around. You want the balance that right. the industry has. He does not want Sony to crash and fall, huh. which would leave an opening for one of these companies that he always talks about: the Amazon, Tencent. the Google's, a ten cents to come in and fill that spot. That's what when they happen. don't have an appreciation for the history of the industry, when they don't know what this industry is like. That's what he's always talked about. He doesn't want those unknowns coming in. He'd rather have a, a petty Sony out here, you know, doing their little deals, taking right. pot shots at Xbox every other day, whatever. He would rather have that because they are a known quantity. They are a known player in this industry who's been doing it for decades. And at the end of the day, their, their minds align in a lot of ways in the industry because they're here for the gaming side of things on top of the business, obviously. But they're right. here for the gaming. Whereas these other companies, you don't know what they're here for. You don't know what they would be doing. And they ha and they haven't clarified yet. Amazon has not clarified what their purpose is. New World right. came out, got was set on fire, and then it literally burnt down. And now people are struggling to jump to get back into it. It released new new content. I don't know. I haven't heard. Uh, really looked into much about that. But again. They're finding out quick that it's it's not that easy. Like you could have right. a hit and it die tomorrow. It, it right. takes a lot. Halo, same thing. We're gonna get ready to get into that conversation. You can't just ride on your name. Like right. there's so much more that goes into it. Um, and I think that's the that's the best lesson. I think that's the main lesson that Sony is really learning here is that it's more. It, it has to be more than just your name. Um, again, Apple a Apple learned it and they're riding off of it now. Yeah. So. And they, they picked it up quick. Stuff Sean says, 100% as a non-fan of Call of Duty, the deal workings is more exciting than the actual yeah. deal that it proves. Yeah, there you go, Sean. Again, like, I'm not, I'm not, like, super into COD like I used to be, but it's like, yo, seeing these business deals go on, again, it's, it's, it's like seeing my childhood kind of replay itself in my face, right? Because Activision and Blizzard have always been there. StarCraft, Warcraft, um... Call of Duty is like they they've been a part of my like my build up as a gamer. So it's like now seeing them when they were competing within themselves to now see them in the distraught kind of broken down. It's like oh they look like a like that dog on the side of the road that you just feel bad. You you want to pick that dog up and nurse it back to health so it can be become strong again. And <laughs> And it, it ends up being uh, a full breed pit bull that that's it's the most a luxurious pit bull you've ever met um I, I don't know something of that nature whatever your favorite dog is uh mine's a german shepherd but it can be the most beautiful dog that you've ever seen and it just needed some love and some care and that's what activision blizzard needs right now Give me some love and some care right yep. uh because they've been uh 
sweatshop. I, I, like, I just don't have a better way to put it. When you're releasing a first person shooter year over year, there's a problem, right? right. <laughs> like, right. You're releasing it like it's a football game or a, soccer, or a, fo- a sports game, and it's they're not ever has ever been that. So and that and that's going away too, right? And that's going right. away too. That's the other thing that people don't understand, and I think that Sony is also worried about was that if this goes through, well, I mean, Activision Blizzard already announced, Activision already announced it, that they were going to go to yeah. every other year yeah. model um, instead of every year. So that was already going to hurt Sony in some ways, not having that yearly release. But I said that from the beginning too, if that happens, and e- even if Microsoft extends it more, and maybe they go to a once every three year model, um, that Call of Duty becomes less important in the grand scheme of things. Warzone is actually the bread and butter. Yeah, Warzone it is literally the, is the real uh money maker there at the end of the day so again it the the and now we hear steel too the side tangent here a little bit but yeah, people missed this this week on top of everything else a little known account does have thirty thousand followers um um ralph valve i think it is um i put this in the dms as well uh he's got call of duty connections he's got activision connections uh he's put out some good information okay. in the past um he put out a tweet this week that infinity wards Austin, Texas uh, devs are working with former Bioware oh, wow. devs, and they are creating a new IP, a new FPS RPG. Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't because, remember hearing about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah because yeah, exactly. Activision, ever since they lost Bungie and Destiny, when Bungie bought right, themselves right, out, right, right. out from underneath, They've been wanting to get back into the MMORPG space. So you've got one of the most talented studios from Call of Duty's franchise now breaking away already, working with some ex-Bioware devs. The Bioware devs are supposedly um, in charge of the creative vision. So we we know if these are if these are experienced Bioware devs, you're talking about Mass Effect, you're talking yeah. about Anthem, yeah. you're talking about that sci-fi, it sounds like, and we'll know more, he said 2024. Oh, so wow, I don't wow, know wow. what that date means. I'm assuming that's when they're going to talk about it because I'm sure that this kind of just started recently. Probably. But there sounds like they could potentially be going after a Destiny killer here, which would be very <laughs> interesting. Very, Steel, you can laugh. Uh, you can laugh. And I understand why you laugh, right? I understand uh, why you laugh. We've heard the Halo killers. We've heard all that shit before. Anthem was going to be the destiny. Just be your own game and then. But, but, right, right, right. You, But you know what I'm saying. I'm yeah, not I saying. You. you know what I'm saying. It's like it's going to be of that ilk. I get, It's going to be of that ilk, that sci-fi, first-person shooter, MMO, RPG-style game. And you can laugh, but it's coming from one of the best first-person shooter developers out there. Whatever you think of Call of Duty, Infinity Ward knows what they're doing when it comes to gunplay when it comes to maps they've now got experience in large maps when it comes to Warzone. listen you team those two great minds up those two great dev teams up you could have yeah. something you could have something steel with the backing now I'm, I'm of interested. an xbox microsoft resources and remember phil would have seen this in the roadmap and remember he talked about yeah. the roadmap he talked about all the great old ip he wants to bring back and breaking off other studios and all that kind of stuff, getting them from underneath right. uh, call of duty you know toys for bobs those kind of ga- those kind of dev studios but he also said that they saw the roadmap for activision blizzard and it was exciting see this could be one of those things man and, and fahim he said but there are a lot of first person shooters I, I, there are a good amount of first person shooters but how many can you say that are actually good and actually worth your time that's the other thing um you, i mean and again i mean and that's why i was laughing for here because it's like being a destiny killer again bungie yeah again it, and it, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll try to see if i let me see if i could tie this into the halo conversation see how smooth i am <laughs> the, you're gonna transition right now i'm gonna try i'm gonna try i'm gonna try all right the thing the thing about bungie that people are forgetting and are now not saying that it's not necessary or it's coming from nowhere, (laughs) but now they're doing the same thing with 343 and Halo. Bungie worked on Halo, right? They did four Halos. Halo 1 through Reach. They went to Destiny, basically made the same game Again, you, you can tell me whatever you want. Destiny is literally just a more futuristic Halo or a different version of Halo. 
That's literally what it is. The enemies move the same. Like if we really want to talk about a game that re-release and it's the same exact game from the previous game that you made, except you change the characters, change the world, and now you call it Destiny. Bungie, come on. Destiny 1 to Destiny 2 was not a good experience. Destiny 1 had supreme struggles on a multiplayer front. Destiny 2 has the same struggles, if not more. Destiny 2 still struggles with content. I know that we get these, again, and I'm part of the problem. We get these eaves and flows where you get Destiny comes in, they drop some DLC. They know how to market their goddamn game, which is not surprising that PlayStation said, yo, yeah, we need to team up with you. I know what y'all doing. Because Bungie knows how to market a goddamn game now. That's besides the point. But every time that Bungie releases content, millions of people flock right back in. And that is the power of destiny. That is the power of Bungie overall more than anything. Mm -hmm. When you create something, you create a loop that's addictive, it's fun. You actually under, you start listening to the right people. That was also part of the problem. Destiny, we're listening to too much of the hardcore, I feel like. And that's when you start seeing more cosmetics start to come in into the universe. There wasn't as, the cosmetic options weren't what they were right now. No, the games came out in 2017. These cosmetic options didn't come out until 2020. Just because some of the, or 2021, just because some of the stuff looked different because you have different gear options, you have the same thing in Halo. It's not as varying because Destiny is a looter shooter. Halo's not. So you, can't, you can't use that, can't defend off of that. You couldn't put custom shaders on your Destiny character for on your Guardian for a long time if you didn't have the materials and everything else for it. Unless you spent your life grinding for it. Like, people forget about that, about Bungie and Destiny, and, it's, and I laugh about it now because, yes, Destiny is in a place to where it's undeniable. It's kind of like World of Warcraft, right? For the people who are invested into that. Every time World of Warcraft releases an update, people are right back in. They talk mad smack about it. You can look at Osmond Gold, who covers a lot of that stuff. You can look at any of those creators who, who, who do that content. Final Fantasy, MMOs, this has been the thing for MMOs. This is, and this is why MMOs don't do that great. Unless you do something supremely different and build up an audience. Because the content is very lacking in the beginning. It's trash. Is it acceptable? No. But it's like people forget those types of things. Like it, it took time to get to that buildup. And I and again, it's like there, but there is potential. Bungie still left and made another game. There is potential for somebody else, like you were mentioning, Pong, where ex Bioware devs and Call of Duty devs from from back in the days, those people who had that same creative vision could come together and create something that is actually, especially in this day and age, what if they decide to use Unreal Engine 5? Mm -hmm. Okay, they're quite a ways away. So two years down the set, they start actually getting to work on the game. Unreal Engine 5 is in its peak condition. All the updates necessary. Like, that's why, like, I, I laughed about it, but I was also, yeah. I understood where, where Pong was coming from from that because that's a real perspective. It could be a destiny killer because of that talent that's there. And I know a lot of people don't care about those types of things and everything yeah. else, but how I wanted to work that into this conversation with Halo and 343 is that the talent is there. Hmm. There's just something else going on up top which is I feel like is the perfect segue to get into this Halo topic because Halo Infinite in, three, in, the, in 343, Joseph Staten, uh, Sketch and crew came out and talked about the update for um, Halo going into the winter, the winter update, which is supposed mm -hmm. to be season three, which technically it still is and it's not at the same I time. Um, I understand why they're doing it because if they... <laughs> 
The other thing, because the other thing that they're doing with this too, and I'll start off with this, is they're they're putting a lot of they're putting a lot of faith again back into in, back into their game, which is good. I, I want to see you do that, but you're already riding off of faith. You've you're getting to a point to where people are losing faith, where people don't want to see your team continuously work on this game because nothing has come from it. And again. As gamers who don't have that peek behind the curtain, we don't know what's going on. We don't know how big the boat is, how it needs to move, where the money's at, why things are the way that they are. But some things are just blatantly obvious, right? There is a management problem. And I know we've had this conversation and it's what ifs and no, there's a management problem. And yes, Halo being a live service game, it's probably not the way that it should have gone. But I'm also not going to back off my mound saying that it should have came out when it did. It should have. It needed to. Halo needed to. If, if, if it didn't, y'all would all be talking the same smack that y'all talking about it now. People who don't like Halo are, continuously, are going to continue not to like Halo. People who will always will play it for a little bit, take a break, get back on, say that it's trash, get off, and then... Those people are always going to exist. That's always been a thing about Halo. All these games that are popular, everybody's going to say the same thing. People say Call of Duty's trash all the time, but people play Call of Duty. It's not dead. You say Halo's dead. That's not the truth. I've been multiplayer gaming for a long time. You know it's a dead lobby? When I'm waiting one to three minutes for a game. Like I do in Naraka, unfortunately. And Naraka's a fun game, and there are plenty of people playing it but there's not enough. Like the numbers that people throw out there, like, oh, there's only three to 5,000 people playing this game. Oh, okay, where are you getting these numbers from? Steam? PC? Yeah, Steam. Um, you know, on PC, they also have Valorant, they have League of Legends, they have, wow, they got Final Fantasy fourteen. you have other MMOs, you got That's other CSGO games, for you God got thing. CSGO. You know how many other games that Halo has to compete with on the PC front? That's not a fair metric to use. No, is it... Is and Halo just started recently coming to PC as of the Master Chief Collection, and even that didn't become some huge, outstanding thing. Yeah, there's people playing it, but I'm not waiting three minutes for a match like I am with Gears of War, Gears Five, unfortunately, which is another fantastic and an amazing game. But that's how I know if a game is dead or not, or if it's doing well or not. It's my match queue time. And if any point in time, I have not yet, I mean, sure, you might have your ups and downs, ebbs and flows, like any game does. And that is the most unfortunate thing about Halo is because it's like, dude, how long have y'all been doing this? You said you wanted to go live service and you weren't ready to go live service. Why? You should have just made another game. You should have said, oh, this is our transition to our new Halo universe. Sure, it could be hey, all Halo Infinite, but say, hey, I, I, there's a, there should have been a different way to pitch it. I'm not here to pitch it to you. There, there had to have been a different way. But obviously, management didn't see it. Whoever was in, in creative control of this IP obviously didn't see it. Whoever is above the designers and making sure things got done on time or whoever was contracting people out to the point to where people can glitch co-op split screen local co-op split screen that means it's in the game a glitch let me tell you guys something a glitch it's not a mod right a mod is something you put into the game right the file i had to, I had to drag and drop it into the game a glitch is something that's already in the game hmm. even the achievements work still a glitch is something that is already in the game. She said it's not ready, right? Okay. I'm not a game. I'm not a game dev. I don't know how these things work. And I can say, oh, it seems like it should just be easy. I mean, it's easy enough for us as the gamer. And maybe this goes back to quality test because that's another huge conversation. I heard David Jaffe talk about, oh, quality QT testers aren't, oh, you should seek to be something bigger than a QT tester. That's nothing serious. Um, he said these things, by the way. This, it's, not a, it's, not a real it's not a real job. 
And it's like, oh, well, I mean, if that's the perspective that you're coming from as somebody that was in the industry, then I can understand why your games come out the way they do. Or why games come, because y'all don't take these people serious. It's like the people at Walmart, right? People, you know, you look at the people that, some people look at the people at Walmart, oh, they're lower than me. They work at Walmart. I work at some great job, whatever the case. Not me, personally, I'm grateful for them. Because if they weren't stocking those shelves, I wouldn't be able to get the stuff that's in there. If they weren't doing certain things, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to, I wouldn't be able to, to see with my life in certain ways. Could that change in the future? Sure. I mean, that's not the conversation we're having right now. For me, Halo is doing a lot of things right. This time around, nobody can say that the story or the multiplayer are lacking. As far as like gameplay wise, yeah, that was the problem before. One gameplay was better than the other gameplay. Oh, you can't get it right in this game, but you get it right in this game. And oh, no, but now you have the complete package in Infinite. The one thing that you're missing is content. But you said you were a live service game. You said that um, this is a 10 year plan. Okay. Well, was part of your, was your 10 year plan was to get the game together in year five? I can understand that. That's what Destiny did. Destiny continues to do that. Destiny will have whole, I can't say the last time we got a, well, we got a multiplayer map in, in, De in Destiny. I don't know. When, when they do give us one, it was like one, a year ago, six months ago. I mean, we got a little bit of a selection, but God, you know how con much content's been pulled, pulled from the game? And people complain about it, yeah. But millions of people also flack back, flock back to the game and play it like it, ne like it never missed a beat. And they continuously, it, they invigorate themselves, and they change things, and they say, oh, we couldn't do it on the old hardware, so, we, so that's why we took the stuff away, because we had to revamp it to put it on the newer hardware, and it's like, okay, well, I mean, you still took stuff away, so it is what it is, and Halo, it felt like you took everything away from me in the beginning. Now you're just, you're slowly giving me things, slowly giving me things, and the one, unfor the one fortunate or unfortunate thing, and I guess depending on how you want to look at it, and I do feel like I'm kind of all, all over the place, but the one fortunate or unfortunate thing too with Halo is that you have other games to play. You don't have to just play Halo. I say that who's somebody, somebody who loves Halo. I haven't played Halo in a while. And it's not because, oh, I think the game's trash or desync or whatever the, whatever, whatever the case. Those are factors, and I don't, I don't, I don't enjoy those things. But I can all, but let's be honest, a lot of those things you're not going to notice unless you're playing at a certain level anyway. Now, is the game just outright broken? No. Can you queue up fat pretty quick? Yeah. Are are there improvements to be made? Yeah. Does the game need more maps? Yeah. Why are we getting two maps in an entire forge? And people who can't save their content yet are making entire maps and forwards in less than a day. Okay. I can also say, again, I'm not a game dev. I know that goes more into it. There's also play tests. You got to make sure the maps balance. Like, I don't know. I, I want to kind of give that perspective too because people just say, oh, why, why can't you just make maps? It's like, oh, well, it's, it's, it's not that easy. There's things that go into that. I can't just drag and drop maps, right? I, wanna, I gotta make sure the map's balanced. I gotta make sure all the weapons work on well in the maps. There are different guns in the maps. This, this Halo, if Halo Infinite doesn't play like Halo 5, uh, 5, 4, 3, 2. It doesn't play like any of those games. It plays differently. So who knows if, they all, if it's gonna work the same? Are you gonna complain that I just gave you some maps? Probably. So it's like you can't, you can't be happy regardless, right? No, the Halo community has not been happy with the game collectively since Halo 2. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, even that's debatable. <laughs> that's, but that is the problem when you have a popular and powerful IP. 
And no matter how people talk about it, Halo's not going to die. One, because Microsoft's not going to let it die. Two, people just like playing Halo. Whether you have a thousand maps or you have some maps, they're going to add more content to it. Guess what? They get the they have the excuse that we are a live service game. The same way Destiny, why and that's why I keep bringing it up, had that excuse when they were releasing their content. We're a live service game. Oh, we can make mistakes. Oh, uh, we took we took all we took entire content. Oh, it's fine. Y'all be okay. Just play play these play these same five strikes. You'll be okay. Yeah, that's how you get better gear. Yeah, play by yourself, by the way, all the time. They didn't add all this extra matchmaking and everything that you got now too in Destiny. Destiny is so much more forward-facing, consumer, like new player friendly than it ever was before. And even me, someone who was like a vet to the game, I, I came back to the game the other day and I was like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing story-wise. I'm, I'm just gonna play some PvP. Then it just makes sense. You got things telling you to do this, you gotta do that, you gotta do this. I'm like, bro, I don't, I'm just gonna play some PvP. That's what I'm here for. And it, they still don't have it together. All that to say, I'm not on the side of burn everything down, things need to be changed. They need to put a, um, they need to be given to a different studio. Uh, it's not gonna work. Uh, they don't know what they're doing. Uh, fire everybody. They're doing these things already. Joseph State, you could tell, bro. I don't know if you y'all y'all watched the video with, jo, uh, with Joseph State and them sitting down talking about it with sketching them. Um, that man looked like it. It didn't necessarily look like stressed, but he looked like he was. He just wasn't. He wasn't there to play games. Like, like all the small talk. Like, no, nah, y'all can talk. I'm here to say, y'all ain't getting co-op, man. I'm and, and and like the way that he said it was just was not a lot. It's like it was like I want to tell you, but you're not getting a split screen co-op. That's just not our focus right now. We're focusing on what what these guys need to focus on. That's our live service front because <laughs> it's gar. It's it's comp they see it. They know. So I can only as a consumer leave it up to them to fix their game, or I continue to play it whenever I want. I have that luxury as a gamer. I'm not just playing Halo every day. And for the people who are just playing Halo every day, I do hope that you guys, we, that we get some more content. Forge is gonna blow everything out of the water. This Forge, the fact that this man, the fact that somebody thought, this guy created a whole map based off a of Toy Story. The fact that somebody thought that Disney assets were part of the Forge assets. Somebody was like, oh, that's cool. I didn't know uh, 343 added Disney assets to Forge. They were like, no, they, this guy made all that. The fact that you can do that tells me this is going to be something completely different. This tells me the first two years of Halo are going to be non-existent after this happens. Because things are about to go real left, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, you, you, you thought you didn't have maps to play. You thought you didn't have content. Oh, you wanted a cart racer? Oh, Halo Infinite is going to have your cart racer in it. I'm t I'm, bro, this game is about to be different, and I know that it's taking time. And to me, it does seem like there is more attention on Forge right now, more of the main team on Forge, or something else going on. There was a bunch of contracting work going on because some dots just don't connect. If you can glitch co-op campaign, something's not connecting. Four player co-op campaign, something's not connecting. And you're telling me that you don't have time to look into that? Okay, that tells me that either y'all, there was so much contracted work going on that the core team is, is, is working on Forge right now. They're working on something different. We don't have all the pieces of the puzzle yet. We had to order some, we lost some. Uh, they dropped on the floor, the dog ate them. We had to order some more pieces off of Amazon and uh, we're, we'll, we'll fit them in when we get them. That's what it sounds like to me. We got the package late, they delayed it. Uh, COVID is still gonna end, it's gonna, still gonna mess us up. It's still messing us up. Uh, we're we're waiting. 
But we'll slot them in when we can. Because a lot of this recent interview that was done, uh, well, interview was more of like an update, a Halo Infinite update. Most of it was just more so a them addressing the live service part of the game. Hey, we got to get you some guy. We got to get you content. That's it. Content, 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 content. You can either wait for it or you can't or you won't. Constructively complaining about the game like like I am here, like Pong has done, like other core Halo fans have done um, is cool. But just take it as that. 343, work on your game. Make it great. You said you got a 10 year plan. <laughs> you gonna have to you gonna spend 10 years worth of money to, to see your plan out? Or what are you gonna do? Because I know in business, there's only so much of a loss you can take before you gotta pull the plug. And you're not, and if pulling the plug isn't an option, then I know you're gonna double down and, fi and, and fix the game before it's too late. And even if it is too late, I guess it's just going to be a hard lesson for Microsoft to learn. But at this point with it, yes. Do I want Halo to be perfect? A thousand percent. Do I have other games to play? Do I have a thousand hours in the day to throw Halo in my rotation? No, not all the time. And as games continues to come out, as we continuously get more and different styles of games, they're either gonna make their mark or they're not. And that's kind of just my perspective on it. I'm not, but again, maybe I'm just not so intrinsically built into the coding of Halo anymore or so like obsessed with it anymore. Or maybe my perspective on things is, is just too open that it just doesn't affect me that way. Maybe I'm a different gamer. Maybe that's part of the conversation too. So. I don't know, Pong. Am, am I taking, am I, did, have I, do I sound like I've maybe lost some of my love for Halo? <laughs> do I sound like that um, maybe I should be angry and I'm up, so I should be upset and maybe, am I taking the two, I'm too nonchalant about the situation? Like, it's it's whatever to me. Like, what, like, I, like how is it coming across to you, man, as somebody who is, again, I am, I'm a Halo, I'm an avid Halo fan, bro. Like, I've, yeah. I've explained this multiple times. It's, it's, it's part of my makeup for what makes me a gamer today. It is. But As, times change. Uh, you know, t things change, times change, people change. Uh -huh. is, is, that, is that the effect that I'm getting from, that I've gotten? Or am I just at a point where like, I, I, I like Halo for what it is. It's not perfect, uh, I can accept it, but. No, oh, no. Know, I, think it's, I think it's a combination. Uh, look, there's the, uh, the Halo community is one of the most passionate communities you'll ever find because of what Halo is, right? Halo is one of the pillars of the entire game industry. It, it really is. the game yeah. industry forever, right? And again, that's coming from somebody who doesn't even have an attachment to Halo like that at all. Don't have that attachment. But they built this community. At the same time, Steel, we are now in the golden age of gaming. Why we call it the golden age of gaming? The importance of Halo in the grand scheme of things, has diminished. It's not, not yeah. It, it's not what it once meant to the industry as a whole and to the fan base. Now, there's still certain sects of the fan base that are that passionate, that feel that Halo is everything. I know there's people out there who still feel that Halo is the GOAT, that they will always play Halo, that Halo is worthy of hundreds, thousands of hours being sunk into it. Of course, of course, of course. You're still going to have that, but the fan base has always been fractured, but now it's even more fractured. So I don't think that you're wrong in how you're feeling. It's just that you have branched out. You have so much, so many different games to play now that for you, Halo can be in this state right now. And you can look at your library and go, meh, if I, like you just said, I don't want to play Halo right now. That's cool. I got x amount of other games that i am going to sink time into i'll be here when halo gets to a point when i want to jump back into it again and i think that, that that's another big base of this fan of the fans as well that's where a lot of people are at listen 343 i'm not in the boat of taking 343 off halo 
Okay, I think that three four three. I've said this. They got to fix a long it. time ago. Has been mismanaged. Okay, it was yeah. mismanaged, and it's caused a lot of issues. That's Decisions obvious were, now. Yeah, that's obvious. And again, there was people that were upset that we ever talk about people like that and their jobs, whatever. Oh, Listen, every job has a responsibility. You don't live up to the responsibility, and you cause problems. It's obvious, and the company has the right to move on from you. Now they've moved on from people. Uh, within yeah. three, four, three, right? They've made changes, but I think that some decisions early on in the in the development cycle, and we now know this is fact, right? We know that they had much bigger plans for Halo Infinite than yeah. what we've seen. A lot right? of we know that. We know that there was a time when they started Halo in a different engine from Slip Space, and then decided, hey, no, this isn't going to work for what we want, so we're going to go build. An, a new engine granted it's on a lot of the framework from the old one but slip space is a heavy was a heavy resource uh intensive uh project to get that up and running it's a brand new engine right so, you know again they did that from the ground up so some of these decisions cost them a lot of actual development time when it came to halo infinite and it shows it also with the contract work, which we now know is fact, the contract work set them back in a lot of different areas. Shuffling people in and out on a project. Never good. It's not good. Should have a you core team and then you right. You can't do you can't do that in sports. You can't go through free agents and build a team and then have those free agents leave and then put together another team. It doesn't ever work out. You need continuity. When it comes to these big time projects, you need a team that works well together. Sure, they have a core team that's there, but that core team can only do so much on something as big as Halo. And we see that now. So all these decisions led to a lot of obviously internal fires, a lot of knots uh, that have to be untangled. And I think that's what Joseph is doing right now. And they burnt their team out, which is obviously a fact. They came out and said, look, we're giving our team after the launch. They you know, just came out and said, look, we're not going to be working for a while. <laughs> we're putting the team on hiatus because they burnt that team out to get this thing out the door. They borrowed from other teams. We know Turn 10, Coalition, other people were brought in to work on Halo Infinite just to get it into a launchable state. And that goes all back to the debate of whether or not it should have been delayed again. Listen, I said you had to put it out. Yeah. I said Xbox had to get Halo out. Look, you can continuously go back and you can continuously rework things. You can continuously delay things, but eventually the game has to come out. Halo Infinite had plenty of time. It had to come out, in my opinion. Yeah. Is it going to, is it, has it cost them up front? Sure. It's, they've also made would, money off of it, though. But too. they've also made money, and they've started again from a business side of things. They have made some money back, right? And again, this is probably the most expensive project in Xbox's history. I don't know that for a fact. I'm not running with the stupid numbers that were put out by some random site years and years ago. I, but what I can probably say is, with all the contracted work, with the man hours put in to this, I guarantee this is probably the most expensive. Yeah, two plus two ever. equals four in this case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in Xbox's history. 343 has the benefit of this being Halo. Yeah. And what I mean by that is there's, there's, there's give and take here. There's pluses and minuses. Being that it's Halo, being you to have this passionate community, are you going to wind up with a ton of criticism? Are you going to be under the spotlight like no other game is, including games that don't come out with a campaign and with a multiplayer? We've talked about that continuously. Yes, you're going to have that. Are you going to have the toxic side of the fandom that is always going to be screaming and calling for your job and calling for yeah. all the things that are wrong? Absolutely you are. But what you also get is you get a lot of leeway. You get a lot of breaks that other games these days don't. 343 right now, as much as many problems as we talked about, as many missteps as they've had, as little content as they put out into this games as a service, as upset or frustrated as fans are with Halo Infinite right now, they don't have to be worried yet because people are still talking about it, Steve. Yep. But you, you have to start worrying is people if people talking. stop talking about Halo. Stop caring about Halo. That's when you got to get worried. We just saw this deal with Battlefield. Yep. 
Battlefield was a mainstay in this industry. Battlefield was competing with Call of Duty on a regular basis for top first-person shooter. Battlefield was, for all intents and purposes, one of the kings out there at its peak. They went through a similar scenario, Steel, where they had bad release, bad launches, bad launches, not what the fans wanted. They went through that. But we finally got to the point with Battlefield 2042 where the community threw up their hands and just completely stopped talking and playing Battlefield altogether. Yep. Right? Besides a small core, right? Including myself. But besides a small core of people. But everybody just said, I don't care anymore. I, I, I just don't care anymore. And left. That's when 343's got to get worried. Right now, that's not the case. Because like you said, Steel, Halo has that magnetism. Halo has a huge bank of goodwill built up through the years. They're spending a lot of it right now. They're not empty yet. And as they get things right, the people are going to come back because everybody's still talking about oh, it. On the road. For as much complaints about you know the winter season and whatever else, and, and there's valid criticism to be had here. More broken promises. Mm -hmm. You can't promise things like what Bronnie Ross did on stage. Yeah, you can't. To your fan base. You can't That's why talk you never absolute. do this. That's why I said, with, you know, with, again, off topic, but again, Phil's comments about extending the deal with Call of Duty beyond it and everybody questioning, well, what does that mean? Well, Phil's not going to come out and say forever. They're not going to commit to forever. You don't commit to those things in an ever-changing industry. But Bonnie Ross did. Bonnie Ross committed to the fan base and sure it may be a small thing because how many people but you are made a commitment couch and... Goba, but you made the commitment the if this game came out and after this first year was everything that everybody expected it to be but you had to come out and say ah we had to make the tough decision we're not going to be able to get couch co-op in here sure there'd be a couple people out here complaining but it would be a pretty much dead issue it's just one more thing on top of all the other frustrations. So now it gets amplified, right? You made that commitment to the Halo community that you would never launch another Halo game without Couch Co-op. You made that publicly on stage in front of an audience on camera that everybody can go back to again. It's, and now you cancel it. And see, I saw the point get brought up too, that it could be that, because his Bonnie Ross is, is over all of it, right? Um, yeah. it, there could it's have the been, business side of things. Yeah. There could have been very well the situation as business goes sometimes where people aren't giving you good information. Sure, sure. And now has put her in a place to where she's representing something that she thought was going to be something else. Right. Uh, she thought it was this whole. She thought it was the Mona Lisa, and she ended up getting uh, Lisa from the Simpsons. Like, we got a lot of work to do before we get back yeah. to the Mona. You know what and, I mean? And, and, you just can never see the future steal either. And obviously they had, ex they had, when they made the decision to, mm -hmm. to build slip space, right? They obviously had the utmost supreme confidence that they were going to be able to build an engine yeah. that was going to be able to do cross generational play. Yeah. It was not, it was going to make it Confident. easier for the teams. It was going to be a smooth, they talked about it still. They talked yeah. about that openly. Yeah. We're not going to have any problems because we built this custom engine to be able to work on Xbox one VCR all the way up to the series X, right? We built this for this specific purpose. Well, that turned out in some cases, it seems to not be a fact that they do have issues. We've heard there's memory limitations in the Xbox One VCR that is causing the co-op issues online and now obviously couch co-op. That, that that has given them problems, that they, the, the cross-generational stuff is an issue that's, pro, that's popped up here, and it's not been as smooth as they all once thought it was going to be. All those little decisions build up to this moment. But to get back to my main point, 343 inherited one of the greatest franchises in the history of video games. They have gotten off, they've had now this franchise longer than Bungie had it originally. Mm, yeah. They have got the experience. It is 2022. Where I think there is fair criticism here, Steel, is they decided to do a games as a service, which they've never done before, but they have roadmaps from so many other games. They didn't just create a brand new genre out of the blue where they got to work out the kinks. They know what is expected of games as a service, successful games as a service. They have everything laid out 
before them. They knew going in what they were going to need, need to do to make this game work yeah. for a 10 year period. That's not blind. They didn't. That's walk a common the issue game. in the industry overall, though, it, where it, it's it like is, people but, don't look over to the other games. Like, but the difference is steel. The difference is, and where I think the criticism does fall, this game has more resources thrown at. No, it I agree. Yeah, I agree. Ninety nine yeah. percent of the other games out there, right? Mm-hmm. This game nearly impossible to fail with Halo. It's nearly impossible to fail with that franchise. When you have the backing of Microsoft and Xbox and they're throwing money at you, they're giving you all these people, whatever yeah, you time, need, whatever you got, need. Mm-hmm. whatever you got, where smaller teams have made better games as a service, right? It, like, it's crazy. So for me, that's where there's some fair criticism. But at the end of the day, oh. you will never hear me doom and gloom until people stop talking about Halo and people, and whether it's good or negative. When the when the when the crowd goes silent, steel, and nobody's talking about That's Halo, you know, so. they don't come with the doom and gloom. Right now, they're still okay. Mm-hmm. Passion is still there from the people. They yeah. want a great Halo, and it will be. And if, yep. it, right, and if three four three gets their act together, which it seems like they are, Joseph Staten is now obviously the face. Bonnie Ross is MIA. She's she's gone. She's disappeared. You don't see her. Yeah, anymore. she's in the background. We have we have Joseph. Heard for- Joseph is handling yeah. his his side of things. If he gets all the fires put out, all the knots undone, they get a stable team. That's one thing I will say is on Phil and Matt Booty. Whatever the issue is, why you ever needed to rely on contractual? Work I don't. Yeah, so that's heavy, a problem. Whatever that is, fix it. Figure it out. Get three four three a core team. Of a solid, if it has to be 400, 500 people, I don't care what it, it is, done. Yeah. get it done, but make sure that that is a stable team for Joseph and the rest of them. Once all of that kind of gets into play and, and we're seeing signs of it, this is going to get straightened out. They're going to get onto a regular drop of content. The Halo frustration will start to die off because, as we all know, gamers have the shortest term memories ever. If you're giving them good content, and you're giving them expected content, and you're not missing beats anymore. You're not coming out saying, yeah, about that season three, yeah, we're going to have to kind of push that. You're stop doing that. And every three and a half months, three months, whatever it turns out to be, you drop regular content. And it's not just a map or two maps. But you start getting into that four map, five map mode thing like you used to, then all of a sudden the community is going to quiet down. Everybody's going to come back and start playing. Your point about Forge, deal, and I've said it here from the beginning. When we first had rumors about what Forge was going to be like, yeah, remember man. that, Steel? Before said, the yeah. launch, we had those little tidbits drop, mm-hmm. and we said, take it with a grain of salt, but Forge is looking like this is going to be more than your usual kind of community tools. This is dev-level stuff here. This is like... Fact, this is yeah. Minecraft, Roblox, Fortnite level of change that yeah this could cause this is creation engine level type yeah, community tools, right on the yeah, bethesda side too. because we know what the community does for bethesda games yeah right we know what that does that's what they're doing with forge so it seems so if this drops right it's gonna be they have it they're dropping in a beta it's going to remain in beta for a while they're going to continue to add new tool sets they're going to continue to improve upon it but right now what we're seeing Bro. still is this in beta, oh yeah, my in beta. God. this community yeah, is yeah. going to be able to make some stuff and i'm not saying that that's necessarily right for 343 to lean I mean, on the community like that that's another argument to be made yeah but when you have a passionate community who wants to be involved that loves doing that kind of stuff mm-hmm. why not give them the best of the best tools to do it why not say cool we're going to do this but 343 does have to be able to get a searchable custom playlist for those forge modes if they yeah. just throw forge in there nah, and people can't find these browsers. maps can't find that a custom browser has be to there. be implemented they already said it's not going to be right away no nah, it's going to they be. have to get a good one and then when they see something in forge take off and they see it doing well jump on it they need to jump on they need to make it as part of the official rotations they need to make sure that they're listening to the community they're saying look we got you know, we got a hundred thousand people jumping into this that map. requires a team Everything. That requires a team, too, to be watching yep. that because that's what Bethesda does. Bethesda is all over that. Bethesda hires people out of their community to come join their official team. That's, what th- that's how 343 needs to embrace this because Forge does have the potential to be the game changer 
in the short term and the long term, but especially the short term to fill in these gaps that are missing. Again, no doom and gloom. Criticism is fair. They misstepped again. This was not what you want to see out of them at all. The co-op broken promise, however small it is, it's at this time broke, and point is, is not good. It, it's not good, man. It's not good at all. Um, but overall, I am seeing signs of getting back on track. Um, and I think that when Forge does drop, we're going to see some changes in opinions. We're going to see some new things. Those two maps that they're dropping oh, yeah, it's... for update is dev-created Forge stuff. And when you saw the video of those two maps, those didn't look like Forge maps of old. Those look like officially created dev maps, right? And if that's what they're that able to the do point, in Forge, yeah. yo, this is going to be something special. People are going to come up with every type of game mode you can ever think of. They're going to come up with all new maps. They're going to come up with so many crazy things. It's going to be good. So um, to your point, Halo is nowhere close to being dead. It's not at the spot they, of course, anybody at Microsoft or 343 wanted to be at. Yeah, I can guarantee any, that. Anywhere is near what they want it to be at. But it's going. I think it's still is going to get there it's just got to wait longer which sucks hey, Microsoft. yeah i mean but, game but. gameplay sells halo infinite has plenty of gameplay in it that's all that's what i'm gonna say and, to that and, and again they should their, their conversation too and i didn't watch the whole video i'm relying on mav and psycho and I everybody who it. watch it and, and all that kind of stuff their focus they do they do lose focus in some of these videos they talk about stuff that should not be important do it behind the scenes but you don't need to be out talking about well we want to make this a great place to play games and all you know, what? no they're, Look, they're, no, they're fo focused not, yeah. their focus was live service -sync. that's what they're e-sync they should have done a whole stuff section like that. on yeah. e-sync and said we're fixing this because for the sweaties for the because halo is highly competitive those are the kind of things that really really drive the, the, no, the fan base mad and 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 so that's got to be a priority focus as well get the stability fixed number one and then move from there move forward on the rest of the stuff so uh yeah. no i, I think halo is going to be fine again it was a disappointing week for the halo fans for sure but uh you know there, there's signs here still there's signs uh, Infinite Umbra says, what bothers me more is that even outside of 343, how does Matt Booty and Phil not be all over them after the fan reactions of Halo 4 and 5, let alone the mishaps of Infinite? That's never going to be public. Yeah. Right? I, Phil, Phil's not that type of leader. I can guarantee that they, they are, though. And, I, you know, and, and, and I, I will say this, and I said this, la I said this long ago, least, before Halo even launched, with the delay, right? I said this, that eventually you do have to push the responsibility up to Phil's level because he is the captain of the entire ship. And there is something, Phil's greatest strength, but his greatest weakness as well is his loyalty. It w cuts both ways. He's an extremely loyal guy who will give people second, third chances yeah. because he likes you because he's worked with you for a long time because he thinks you're an awesome person because you fit well within the atmosphere of microsoft he will cut you more slack than most business leaders in that type of position under with this type of company will on a normal basis so right. i think that that cuts both ways but i think anything phil and matt booty do behind the scenes is always never going to get public i i think to steel's you know i i think i agree with steel i think there there probably has been a lot of pressure and that's why you saw joseph staten be brought back in i'm sure that people are getting moved out i'm sure a lot of people weren't happy about that when they saw joseph staten walk through the doors because they knew people they are getting knew. people are getting moved out i can i can i can i've heard some things behind the scenes i've done my own research and there's 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 people who are getting they're getting moved out um if you don't agree it's like it's to the point to where uh, somebody else mentioned this too but um it's to the point to where if you if you're not in alliance with Joe, what the vision that Joseph Staten has right now, then you're not you're not rocking. It's we 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 need to get things back on track. Halo needs to be in a certain place, and that's what they're trying to get to. It just takes time. And again, if you're somebody, if you're the person that's going to be the influence, because all it, it take it takes one person, especially in a studio like that or for a game like that, it takes one person to influence change. And this usually starts at the top. And if that person is, influ is influencing major change, 
like, hey, this isn't the way that I would be doing things. I think and usually you don't bring people in of that. It's like bringing a manager in, right? You lost a manager. He moved on, whatever the case may be. Maybe I fired. You just don't want to bring in some any old average manager from that doesn't know what they're doing. Does that happen a lot? Yeah, especially in our in our industry. But ideally, you don't bring a Joseph Staten in, right, and not expect there to be major change to happen because he has a vision. And he's going to want things to be of a certain stature. And Phil is definitely going to want things to be of a certain stature. Because this is going to be part of his name now. Whether he wants it to, to be or not. Halo, the brand of Halo, will be part of Phil's name. So if it stinks, it's going to make Phil look a certain way. And the other thing, too, about this, why, regardless of whether, whatever the situation is, they will make sure it gets, it gets fixed and it will be right because it'll make Xbox look bad. How are you gonna pull the attention of other devs if your flagship IP is having manual problems? What does that say? Nobody wants to come work for that. Now people will, but the way that we're moving into the future of the industry, you know, no crunch and people are a little bit more sensitive. It's like, you can't move that direction now. It's like, you can't do that. So the best thing to do is to say face, hey, this we are a good environment where, hey, we do treat our people well. Hey, we do have good management for our games. It just, it's not, doesn't look like we're disconnected. That's the way it comes across now. If I am to believe, which I do, that you had a shit ton of contract work being done on this game, and you're having terrible management problems, it doesn't, it doesn't look well to any, to anybody. It doesn't look good for business. So I, I just, I, that's why I, at least in my mind, again, I don't have a peek behind the curtain, but from my personal research and from what I've seen, um, I, I, I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of bricks being moved. There's going to be a brand new, it's going to be a brand new building by the time they're done. And it's going to be built quietly. Again, yeah, yeah. it's not going to be public. We'll hear things here and there, but it's not going to be public. Nah. Phil's not built that way. He's just not like that. Um, so it'll all be done internally, and I and I and I don't think they're gonna flat out fire some people. No, they're no, they're gonna move them. Move them around. Elsewhere. Yeah, that's what they're gonna. Do. Uh, they got plenty of room now. They got plenty of places for other people to go and try. So <laughs> yeah, and you got so many again with yeah. this active. That could be another reason why they want this Activision Blizzard deal to cut to come on down because Activision Blizzard is bringing in what? How many people, Paul? Uh, third, uh, ten thousand. I was so gonna 11, say ten k, eleven k. There are some people that you can shuffle around and make sure and put them in other places because not everybody needs to be part of Activision Blizzard and everything they got going on. You could move that around a bit and now, boom, now all of a sudden you got a specific studio that does this specific thing. Other than also, we still haven't heard yeah. from certain affinity and there's no telling what they could work on, what they're going to add on because it's going yeah, to be Tataka. an add on. Tataka, right? Tataka is coming next year at some point. And that's going to be an add on to the experience. So it's like, what is that going to bring? Is that going to be part of a season? Like, how is that going to work? So there's a whole, there's already a whole other team that's at trying, that's going to be adding on to this game. That's going to even give it more content. So uh, I don't they're know. Gonna added, they're going to be added to Xbox too. No, nah, yeah, it needs to happen. If not, nah, if it doesn't happen by the winter, it needs to happen by March. I think after the acquisition <laughs> goes through, that'll be one of the first announcements. Oh, okay. Yeah. It, it's got to be. Yeah. Like it's, that studio is going to be too important. They've worked on Call of Duty, Halo, and they're building a Monster Hunter. Like, yeah, no. Nah. Supposedly Triple A for Xbox. Yeah, no. Nah. That that's a buy. Gonna... That's a buy. That's that's one of those. Uh, <laughs> that's a that's an instant. That's like Blue Point for Sony, right? It's kind of like one of those, like, bro, y'all have been in the sidecar this whole time. You might as well just, just come on, man. Let's jump on in. We, we, we set you up a cozy corner office. You'll be good to go. Um, all right. Uh, I think that was a pretty passionate conversation. I think we pretty much, you know, really knocked that out of the park there. Heck yeah, um, man. That's what we do with everyone. We do that with every guy. We, 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 we try to break it down, give it to you, <laughs> flip it in reverse for you guys, you know? Uh, so hopefully you guys have enjoyed that thus far. Again, man, we are almost 
three hours in at, at two topics thus far um hey paul you want to you want to talk about how the uh last of us is a cash grab no i'm playing you don't have to be <laughs> <laughs> I, saw, I saw i saw what you sent me we already knew that. Uh, Faction. We already knew that, Steel. Yeah, I've been telling yeah. you that since day one, brother. You know that. Uh, and, I mean, uh, again, um, a lot of people are enjoying it. I do think it's disingenuous for some people who review games to come out and say, hey, I would give this a 7 out of 10, but it's so good. You know, it's fa- it's uh, it's Last of Us, so I got to get it in a 9 out of 10. That's just like... Yeah. So that's what we do with games now? Oh, 10 out of 10. It's a masterpiece. Oh, it's, it's a, Last of Us. Oh, it's, that, that's it. This is, that's what it was. It was 100. IGN oh, okay. France. Oh, it was shout a 10 out, out of 10. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, okay. shout out yeah. to the that professional journalists. Uh, you know, IGN, you know, France, 100, 100. They gave it a perfect 100. You know, this is probably the most traction IGN France has probably gotten in a while, so probably. Uh, that's, that's, that's probably funny, probably. too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it, is. Uh, it, it is what it is. I mean, again, people are going to... It is what it is. You enjoyed it. That's great. Um, I love it for you. Is what it is. Shout out to all the other journalists too. I mean, the professional journalists out there writing big long articles that oh. shocking that uh, Phil confirmed that uh, you know Call of Duty and and Overwatch and Diablo oh, yeah. would be coming to Game Pass. I mean, like that was a shock. I mean, that was huge news. Damn, well, you added that in there, man. That just that just really like when he wrote that out, it kind of like <laughs> it blew my mind because I didn't know no what else idea. to think. I I, I, yeah. I was like, wow, that's crazy. No idea why um, they'd be spending 70 billion dollars that they wouldn't add games to game docking. Yeah, I just wow. I just wasn't expecting that move. It was a crazy move for them to make. <laughs> um if, as you can if you can't tell, we're being sarcastic. Um uh-huh. Because of course, they, I mean, duh, like duh. Y- y'all don't care about anything else other than these games. So yeah, go hurry up and make concessions on these, so that all these other games, Diablo Four is going to be a ga- Game Pass guaranteed, and you won't get that game. How about that? Right. right. <laughs> this, this, uh, y'all so worried about concessions. Oh, <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> people, people. So, hey, again, you got uh, great A journalism. Uh, sometimes yeah. you gotta, you know, sometimes you gotta use people's pictures without asking them. Um, manufacture some news dude. we gotta manufacture yeah you know sometimes you gotta make it make problems seem that way bigger than what they are I, any, any, again anything for the click right you gotta anything for the click. i mean i don't know much about that even though i did call today's episode um the dutch oven so i mean i mean i guess i guess depends how you want to look at that. <laughs> oh god okay um Man, where where we want to go from here? Um, we did have Tencent here recently um, invest more into from software, and so did Sony, yeah. um, which led to some conversations potentially that oh that, that happened this week, folks. If you didn't remember, like, yeah, that happened people, this people week, forgot. Like, it feels like it's been like months now since that happened, but no, that was just this week. So yeah, Pe- you know, people forgot, man. Um, yeah, Tencent. And Sony invo- in investing more into FromSoft, I believe, together they're about what? 30%. 30%, yeah. Yep. So Between the two. With that, no, that's nothing to guarantee that the games aren't going to come to other platforms. Like, oh, I saw I, I saw that like immediately. Oh, Sony's now got exclusive Elden Ring 2. It's exclusive now. Oh, no, I saw Elden Ring <laughs> is now first party Sony. Oh, oh, wow. I didn't see that extreme take. Yeah, for, they're 14% investment into from software now means that elden ring is considered first party sony i saw that this week that was awesome. nice i mean hey <laughs> i guess you know whatever it takes uh to big up your your side of things right yeah uh, they gotta get that game of the year man they gotta get that game of the year so um this article is going to be coming from venture beat on this one so shout out to venture beat uh every time i think about venture beat the only person i think about is jeff that's funny Come on, that's that's reality. Rub <laughs> is Venture Beat. <laughs> um, Even to this day, over at Giant Bomb, he's still Venture Beat. Yeah, facts. that's how powerful Jeff Grubb is. That's facts. Uh, this article was written by Rachel Kayser. Hopefully, I'm saying that right. Um, so, from software developer of Elden Ring and Dark Souls, the latest company to join the acquisition parade, sorta. Its parent company, the uh, Katakawa Corporation. Oh, shout out to Katakawa. They got a lot going on. Decided to issue shares of its stock to Tencent Holdings and Sony Interactive Entertainment. Decided to issue shares. Hmm. Interesting way to put it. Um, it's not a full-on acquisition, as was the case with Activision Blizzard. It said the two companies will own a combined 30% of From Software's stock. Tencent's subsidiary, um, 
Sick Joy Hong Kong would own 16% and Sony would now own 14%. And Tencent will be the second largest shareholder after this happens. The Katakawa Corporation will retain the rest of the shares, 69% in the top shareholder position. As why it's offering shares to those companies, Katakawa said in a press release, it's trying to expand its development options, makes sense, and that it decided to implement fund procurement by way of third-party allotment. It decides Tencent's strength and its capabilities to develop and deploy mobile games and other network te technologies in global market, and Sony's strength and its capabilities to deploy IP in games. <coughs> so essentially, this was basically a deal um, for Sony to kind of tip their hat more into from soft Hey, from soft, I, we got some stuff over here. You might wanna, might wanna work. I wanna look at this. Hey, right, can we get some of your input on this? How you guys feel about this? How does this look? I, that's what I got more so from this uh, than than anything else. Again, also I do think it's another way for Sony to continuously make sure that even though a game like, for an example, I know it's not tied to from soft, but um, there's Souls like games coming to conversation. So a game like Lies of P, for an example. Uh, where you see that's coming in the game pass where that doesn't happen with like armor core the next armor core game yeah that that doesn't end up going into game pass and mm -hmm. for whichever reason they can't cut a deal to get it as far as their service if they want or whatever that where, or they have more say so as far as that goes it could potentially cause a hey you can't put it in the game pass because we cut this deal with FromSoft and we have this say and there could be potential that could happen again from soft has still has the overall say so it's not going to matter uh but it does have that it does open that that potential to be a little more yeah. along those lines so uh, i think that's the main thing that's that's part of this deal so shout out to them uh tencent and sony investing more into from soft especially yeah. since the the souls like genre has definitely gotten a huge boost um because of elven ring and um, I expect to see a lot more come out of that. Um, and there's some news and some rumors of a of some Elden Ring DLC coming among the Horizon also. Next so next year it'll be here uh, for sure. That's and, crazy you know, to think, man. A year a year out, they put out some DLC. Yeah, because that's how from that's how from works, though, right? Yeah, they're, they're, for most part. they got that they got that smaller studio kind of mentality, right? They right. they finish what they start, comes out, they see how it does. And then they say, okay, this warrants DLC. Make some DLC, right? And they start. They take their right? time That's, working on the DLC. They take their time, and they, and they make sure it lives, lives up to standards because now From does, I mean, even for their own, if eyes, they had so. already developed standards, now they bumped it up even more with Elden Ring. So now the pressure's really on. And I think that that's probably why they opened up these shares to Tencent and Sony is bringing some more Revenue, investment have yeah. some bigger backers 10 cent for sure is just an investment right a straight up business investment we've exactly. seen That's them it. do this many times right that's what this is um sony like you said steel yes it's an investment but it's also to gain and continue to strengthen favoritism on that side over on the east as microsoft's mind share grows they're doing what they can with some of their favorite partners to make sure that that is a little bit that bond is a little bit stronger and, and that they potentially could get the first rights to having something uh, drop into their services going forward, their subscription services, um, or maybe some, you know, DLC. Cause we like, you know, we now know Sony's still out here buying exclusive missions. Uh, you know, That's like so it's it, like it's 2005 all over again. Um, listen, that's what they're going to do. They they don't have the power. They don't have the the cash power that that Microsoft does. But what they do have is strong relationships in the East, and they do have the money to do these types of investments, which, which potentially could give them some favoritism uh, when it comes to deals. Obviously, and and that's what they're doing. So uh, it's a good move on their part uh, for sure. So um, all the way around, I you know again, I hate seeing ten cent involved in anything, but they're going to be yeah. out there. They got the money to spend, so they're gonna they're gonna spend it where they can. Again, um, without like it or not, uh, they're backing Warframe, and Warframe is getting more content and more money coming in than ever before. They've been now now they're able to make a spinoff game they've been wanting to make for a while, and I mean, ah, mm -hmm. the necessary evils, huh? 
like I said, it just hopefully doesn't ever turn nefarious because it can. Yeah. On, it can flip the switch, and all of a sudden, it could get it could be interesting and and difficult. Uh, who knows? That could be going right going on right now. Yeah, it could be. You're absolutely. Scan, scanning your accounts and yep. see what you got in. Uh, they got the rights to. Um, yep. That's why you don't look at that in the uh, EU lay and any of that, do you? <laughs> you just oh. scroll and hit a. <laughs> TikTok, TikTok. Oh my God! Uh, got everybody's funny. info. Yeah, got man. I'm being... everybody. Yep. It, it, hey, it is what it is. Um, different story for a different time. <laughs> people might it's think a whole different we, podcast. Deal. People it's might think we off our uh, off the rocker on that one. Uh, PS Plus Classics looks like it, it continues to grow. Uh, they're getting some more games coming in there. Um, looks like they got Toy Story 3 from the PSP coming in, Kingdom of Paradise, Bentley's Hack Pack, Sly Cooper, Thieves in Time. Um, that's a good game. Uh, the Sly awesome. Collection, PS3, yep. um, Siphon Filter 2 from PS4. Oh, amazing game. They got some clients, they got some good, good games in there. None of those games are anything that I would care about, but um, they're definitely for somebody, and that's the whole point, right? Um, the other thing, too, is that for, for PS Plus, uh, they got Need for Speed Heat, which is actually a really good game. Again, uh, I know a lot of people are haven't been up on Need for Speed here recently, but if you want that classic Need for Speed feel um, or want a sense that they're going in the right direction, play Need for Speed Heat. It's a good time, um, especially with it being in a service like that. I say give it a shot. Um, see what's going on. Grand Blue it's, Fantasy. It's the best of what they've had recently. Yes, that is that's a fact. Had. It's still not what I want from Needs for Speed, but it was more enjoyable than the last couple of Honestly, they they remade Most Wanted and it was piss poor. Um, they well, it it really wasn't Most Wanted. It was uh just a different game with the same name. Um, as much as I would want them to remake the original Most Wanted, because they've used that name already, I'd like them to remake a Need for Speed Underground. Yep. Um, modern day and com- kind of combine one and two yep. in, in today's day and age. I, th- I think that would be a perfect way to get, get them that attention again to see whether what kind of game they need to make now. Uh, involve the police. Back and the arcade, yeah. full arcade, full arcade driving. Drive driving. the same, yeah. It's not meant to be he super was, serious. He was close. He was close. Closer, super close. But but still not the way. A little too serious. Want that for. Yeah. It was well, just had. It didn't feel as. It didn't feel as fun as the old ones did. And maybe that again. I I always say my nostalgia can screw up my memory, but it did just something. The drifting still wasn't right. Like I I. I just always felt need for speed at breakneck speeds at just crazy times like you could feel Plus like out of you drift could just weave in and out of yeah. traffic and you could pull off a just crazy drift to get away from the cops and heat had some parts of that but there were still some parts where it felt too simmy where i wasn't able to pull off the absolutely impossible while driving there's like, some things there be- there are some things it's like you used to be able to like if you did certain things you could outsmart the cops if you yeah. were decent at driving or whatever you can yeah and the cops and heat were freaking yeah, like, they were cops and heat. Look, man, they were, I'm they were all down the for a challenge with the cops, they were over but the top. yo, they're stone cold killers, man. They, they, if you didn't have a bridge, to... yeah, 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 no, I'm that's what the only way. A lot of times yeah. you had to drive them into the river. Yep. You had to drive them into the water, and that doesn't make any. And that doesn't make any. That doesn't make it fun. That doesn't make any sense. No. Um. Uh, but they got Grand Blue Fantasy coming in versus Grand Blues. Uh, is oh, is a great IP. Um, and then Toem. Not familiar with that one. Um. They're also but, getting uh, Death Loop in there. That's the that's the oddball steal. So that's extremely interesting. That's a conversation steal. That's an oddball. Um, uh, be- uh, weird. I, I, this is this is why I said I would have tore up those contracts if I was Phil. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, it wouldn't have looked good uh, to these regulatory boards right. uh, going through this acquisition had they no, tore up no. deals with. <laughs> It's like Max I, y'all don't even honor deals. Like, come on. Yeah, <laughs> that would not have been good look. So in the grand scheme of things, it's probably the best that they didn't. They probably were thinking that far ahead when they when they honored all this stuff. But this is the weird situation to get into. Right. So Deathloop, again, we don't know the details because this, for whatever reason, this industry is top secret, uh, nuclear codes uh, level stuff here, oh, and we can't know this stuff. But again, for anybody who 
it hasn't caught on to what we're talking about. Deathloop obviously is supposedly a one year timed exclusive, but we don't know that. And that one year exclusivity runs out September 15th. So that's when we were all expecting that if that's real, that we would get the announcement that, hey, Deathloop, Xbox, Game Pass, coming, right? This is game of the year quality type game, right. by the way. I know it's not for everybody. But this is a game of the year. It was up for awards, okay? This is a big deal. This is a big game to have drop in in what is a dry yeah, loop, yeah. second half of the year for first party, right? So perfect game. But they can't talk about it because of the marketing rights with Sony. So, and because of the exclusivity deal. Right. And all of a sudden now, Steel, like we were kind of expecting that announcement maybe this month, hopefully. Come through, yeah. Did we see it dropping into PlayStation Plus Premium? Really? It's just weird. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 that is super crazy to me that that's, and that's happening. Um, again, it could definitely mean that the, the deals were a little bit longer than we might have anticipated. And again, as someone who I don't have a genuine interest in Deathloop, uh, so if it could, when it drops in, it drops in. I know that it's coming. I know that's also going to be feature complete, also content complete when it ends up dropping in. So that's the other thing, too, if I ever wanted to give it a shot. Uh, again, man, for the people that this, this PlayStation giving you value, though, um, this is this this could be the way that they, you know, bite back a little bit here and there, um, flex their muscle around, show that they are they do have certain deals in place and they're making it work. Again, you see Assassin's Creed Origins dropping in right off the back of that. We were just talking about Origins about a month ago, right on on Game Pass. So it's like okay what well, like there's just like there's like it's this tit and tat tit for tat thing going on they did another yeah. thing by bringing in dragon ball Universe 2 again like i know i'm just kind of busting down the list but this is these are plays that are made on purpose the dragon ball heroes movie just came out and is is doing better than pokemon did the original pokemon movie has grossed more than the original pokemon movie did on release that's crazy to think about. And Xenoverse is getting new content. And it's getting wrong. And it's still getting new content. <laughs> what is it? Seven years? Six years? Well, uh, Xenoverse. Uh, let me see. Yeah. Uh, Xenoverse like has de definitely years. been out for a while at this point. Yeah, uh, something like that. But it's getting brand new content on top of it. Again, Steel and I always love. Two thousand sixteen. Two thousand sixteen. So six years. Yeah. Continuously that is still put out content. Crazy. Support. No, yeah, they, they didn't say they had a 10-year plan. They just like, made no. this game and just kept making DLC. They updated it for new consoles, gave more DLC. I mean, again, I don't like I don't like personally playing the game, but I know a lot of people who do. I don't favor its combat style. Um, I think it needs to go back to the Budokai Tenkai H E 3 style. Um, yeah, stamina mattered, but it wasn't like I hate the stamina Whatever break Steel system. Said. Um, I agree. But yeah. Uh <laughs> game on PlayStation 2. <laughs> But yeah, um, but obviously that's a play being made to pull more people in. Oh, they got Xenoverse 2 as part of my service. Man, that movie was fire. Perfect. Rayman Legends. I, I know yeah, some people forgot about Rayman. Rayman's my guy. Like, I grew up Rayman's with Rayman. Rayman, yeah. Rayman's the guy. Um, so yeah, man, uh, PlayStation is trying to give you a little, some people some value. Um, I, another good reason to bring this up because I, I there was a lot of people bringing negative attention to it uh, i was like oh look at these trash ass games nobody wants these these are all old games that nobody wants to play and just not coming with anything or oh, all the service and uh so again that that conversation is going to continue to happen no matter what side of the fence that you're playing i already knew that jump you know off rip that that was going to be the same thing that happened when playstation started doing this oh it's not it's not worth my time Oh, uh, I played these games. So, I mean, hey, it's all it's up to you how you want to look. I, th I think it's a decent amount of games, though. Um, nothing, that, again, that I would personally get invested in, uh, but I do think it's worth it if you got a PlayStation. Yeah, no, and they're trying. I mean, again, this was the thing that we talked about when, when they first announced the details, and we were, like, you know, going through it, whether or not it'd be worth it. And mm -hmm. I was like, look, it's all going to be, be dependent upon the third-party deal. Start cutting, you know, and how you know how much they invest in it because that's not the final form right, right. That, that was just a starting point but you can see there's there's you know they they are putting money into it is it enough no i still think we're in a situation where people are going to jump in and jump out if there's something you know if a game comes out like stray right? right stray was a perfect example stray was a great addition but people that's a game that people could jump in pay the monthly fee play stray and then jump out again 
just like Netflix, right? That's what we talked about. That's what you don't want with a subscription service. You want people to continuously subscribe. So they're going to have to continue to ramp this up. But overall, good additions this month. Yeah, they yeah. are going to get some people to jump into it for Deathloop, for those people who didn't buy it, right? They're going to get people to jump in for that. They're going to get people to jump in, like you said, for Dragon Ball with the movie coming out. They're going to have that effect, but it's got to be continuous to keep people invested right that's where they're a little bit lacking right now but they are trying they are, right. they are making yeah, yeah. And again it, it'll give you a reason and again um i feel like we talk about more of these games and some some other places may um that are representatives of these types of things that we're not console eccentric uh just a little smoke for those out there but <laughs> um no uh the next thing to there was also some news. I'm kind of just running down this list that we got here. Yeah, yeah, excellent yeah. list. Oh, this is um, all the small stuff, man. This is all the good stuff. Just because I, I want to talk about. Yeah, we got to talk about some fun. I, I haven't heard many places talk about fun stuff. This we had we've had the big <laughs> conversations, and I feel like we beat them out the park. On um, we we beat them up really well. So it's it's good that we can get running into some fun stuff because uh, I get, we just have the benefit, right? Uh, uh, shout out, shout out to fun speculation, by the way. Jumping in the chat, man, brother, what's going on? Go, go, hey, go, man. Great to see you as well. Jumping in here. Jesse said he had to uh, charge also, his phone, so yeah, he had to leave. So we appreciate that. I told him we appreciate him for stopping in here. Have a good day, Jesse. If you're still listening, Infinite Umbra, brother, jumping in here as well. Uh, he's been Everybody rocking else and hanging out with us. Uh, appreciate all of you still for uh, sticking around uh, for the small topics as well, since we got through the big stuff. But this, yeah. these are the things that people missed this week or forgot. Because of the Thursday bombs that were dropped, so yeah, I mean, again, you talk about we try, try to talk about a little bit of everything that's going on in the industry. Again, it just I, I just love talking about it. So, yeah, um, absolutely, it was also information about Respawn's upcoming Star Wars Ooh, FPS yes. as being developed on Unreal Engine Five, as it seems to be mm. confirmed, which always mm. gets me excited because I'm a Star Wars fan. Um, Battlefront 2, again, I know EA went through a lot of debacle about that, but Battlefront, this, the IP overall, that series, is kind of held near and dear to my heart, too. Battlefront 2, the OG, was the greatest Star Wars game I've ever played. Right. Uh, just having that duality, being able to play as Jedi or playing in first-person mode um, or third-person. And you had that back then and then. Just bring that world alive. And then now seeing EA bring that, brought that to the front now, regardless of the loot boxes and everything that they had issues with in the beginning. Um, it's always a beautiful sight to see, and I always enjoy playing it. I don't play it as much as I do now, um, with, as much as I wanted to, because unfortunately... A lot of the earlier issues kind of plagued me and then oh, I'm playing other games now. So it's like, I just haven't put, spent that time to get back into it, but I heard it's an excellent time. So that anytime that a Star Wars IP is getting made, it always picks my ears up. Cause it's like, okay, which direction y'all gonna go? Um, and just seeing that world come to life is always so fascinating to me because again, me and Pong have mentioned it here. It's like Halo where you have such an expansive universe that you don't know what direction you want. You go, are you going to face all? Are you going to talk about the Jedi? Are you going to be on the more light side of things? Or are you going to be more Disney like? Or are you going to do some dark stuff? Because I like the dark side and trying to play that neutral, that gray side of things. Because a lot of those conversations don't happen. Is that something that Respawn is going to do? As we kind of seen with a little bit from um, Fall in Order. So. It, you, you see some of those elements get teased and get played with and everything. So uh, to see that Respawn um, is going to be using Unreal Engine 5 for this first-person shooter, it gets me really excited, man. But again, I could just be biased because I am also a fan of the Unreal Engine overall. Uh, it's it Since its release, since its inception, it just seems to continuously push that needle um, as far as those style of games. And it's always had a certain aesthetic so it's like anytime I can see something like that, like we talk about the Snowdrop engine sometimes um, that the Division yeah. use, uh, yep. where um, who's using that for their Star Wars game, uh, Pong? Was it that's somebody? Massive. Uh, that, that's massive. massive. So, yeah, that's so massive. And Matt Massive is using that for their Star Wars game. Um, so and then just see what could potentially come out of that. So to hear that they're going to use Unreal just gets me kind of excited. But I'm gonna oh. pull this um, article real quick from uh, yeah. PSU.com. Yeah, uh, this is this is exciting stuff, like you said, Steel. Because behind the scenes, you and I DM a lot. We follow a lot of different Twitter accounts that are doing um, a lot of just trying out Unreal Engine Five. 
and the improvements that we've seen still that underwater one that right we, we we sent back and forth listen unreal 5 is going to be special and i think unreal 5 we used to get that feeling that everybody that used unreal 5 all the games felt the same i think with uh, or with unreal back in the previous and kind of had you knew you were looking at an unreal game i think unreal 5 is going to allow a diversity of looks and styles right. that we haven't seen before from unreal uh, and I think that's the exciting part for me. And I'm just curious, Steel. You, you know, we we talked about respawn and taking over this franchise. I don't know article, but as a first person shooter, there's a lot of different ways it could go. They could be rebooting one of the old ones, like Dark Forces or something like that, that we haven't thought about. But what happens if respawn taking their multiplayer expertise from Titanfall and rebooting Battlefront again for another run? Battlefront still has players after they fixed everything. Yeah. But a respawn battlefront, brother, in Unreal Engine 5? Yo, yo. More arena look. focused style? Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, my God. That could be a good time. Go ahead. Read your article. No, I, I think, I mean, damn. I, I wasn't even I'm thinking about it from that angle, but no, that would be really dope. Um, A Titanfall like experience, but a Star Wars? It's the, it's the perfect IP to do it, right? Um, I mean, right. I know a lot of people want Titanfall to come back, but what if it's Star Wars? Right. Um, right. But um, isn't this game supposed to be more linear, though? I thought. I don't know. I, I, I get clarified. these because now there's so many. Look, we went through a time period where no Star Wars games were being made. Right. Now so many Star Wars games are getting made. I don't know. And sometimes I mix up the information. So I don't know if we have a lot of details on the respawn one. I, I just don't know. I, um, I from what I'm seeing here, uh, Star Wars Jedi Survivor is the next Star Wars title we'll see from Respawn. Yep. It's con yep. Considering that it doesn't have a confirmed re release date, it seems like we're a ways off from seeing anything concrete about the first-person shooter title. Right. Um, other than that, they're going to talk about Respawn a little bit. They don't say anything specifically about what kind of game they're trying to make, but, I mean, again, it may not end up being a real style. Show. I mean, it could very well be. I, I don't. I don't know. Um, right. It's called Jedi. Uh, Jedi Survivor. Well, that's the, no. That's the Fallen Order. Sequel. Oh, is that is that the? Fallen that's Order the Fallen sequel? Order sequel. Okay, yes. my fault then. Jedi okay. Survivor is the that, that's being done by the main team. That gotcha. Jedi, Jedi Fallen Order. That's the sequel that we know about. That's releasing. Uh, what February next See, year? See, and that's where I was mixing up my information. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. So perfect, this is perfect. a totally different project now. A first-person shooter gotcha. being done in Unreal. This one Fox. doesn't even have a name yet. Right. Gotcha. Right. Okay. That's perfect. I see. I see. Okay. So I was like, all right, this is going to the Safari. I was like, damn. Uh, but no, that makes sense. Uh, so perfect. So they, yeah, they don't have a name. It could very well be be that for sure. Again, uh, we. People want a Titanfall to come back. Titanfall is not going to come back um, because, unfortunately, it was released the way that it was. Um, and that kind of got given up on, and they've kind of moved on also. But I, I think it would be super dope. That I, I like. I really love your idea on that, Paul. Um, doing yeah, a, a more I mean, because I know EA loves Battlefront, game. right? Yeah. And I know they had the problems with the loot boxes, and the last Battlefront didn't start out well. But to this day, now oh, that they fixed that? it, it's got a fanatical fan base. And to have Respawn behind it as kind of a reboot of the franchise, Battlefront still has a big, huge fan base out there, and everybody loves the idea behind Battlefront of that Call of Duty Battlefield-style game, but within the Star Wars universe, why not have Respawn redo it? I'm just throwing it out there. Like I said, they could be going further back and taking one of the great FPSs that because we, we used to get Star Wars games all the time. Like I said, Dark Forces is an underdog. Like That's a game that people... When you bring it up, if they played it, they're like, oh, hell yeah, Dark Force would be amazing. Like, that would be a cool way to go, too. But I could see EA going the route of Republic Battle Commando. Yeah, like Republic that. Commando, another one. Absolutely freaking movie. Bring that big, they back to life, yeah. Yeah. Got a yeah. couple ideas there that would really, like, inv invigorate that. Um, and th this information was confirmed on Twitter uh, when lead combat AI designer at Respawn, Melissa... Yeah. Janikwitz, uh, probably said her name wrong, but hopefully Janikwitz, not. Janikwitz, yeah. Yeah, uh, something, something of that like nature. That. Uh, Miss Janikwitz responded <laughs> to a user who said they wondered what engine Respawn would be using, uh, and then she informed them that it was going to be Unreal Engine 5. So, I mean, it's going to be exciting, exciting to see what's going to come out of that. Um, not much information is on the back end of that. They didn't say, hey, this is the game type, this is the style, or anything. So we're just going to have to wait for more information on that. Um, Shout out to Stone King X for dropping in here. Stone! What's going on, man? Oh. 
Um, I guess it'd be the last few things. Well, I mean, there's a few things here, actually. Um, so we mentioned Bob Mutant earlier. Uh, we did get some information that there was going to be uh, Assassin's Creed Mirage is going to be the yeah, next. Yeah, we Assassin's got confirmation, official confirmation. Now. That was the leaks, and now Ubisoft confirmed it, and they're going to have a uh, showing of it on September 10th. Um, it's going to be a Ubisoft forward, 9 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. Uh, 12 p.m. Uh, specific standard time or specific time. Uh, hey, tune into that, man. It's supposed to be a more focused Assassin's Creed game, uh, kind of remnant of the styles of like two, um, though, the, like the Ezio trilogy. So um, definitely going to be something to check out, man. Um, if it's along those lines. Be nice. Yeah, they, they they confirmed too. We got more too out of this. So they're going back to the old style, taking out some of the RPG aspects. There's going to be one character. That char character right now um, is almost assuredly Basim. Um, they're going back to his early days. Of Basim from Valhalla, of course. They're going back to his early days in Baghdad. They've confirmed that Baghdad is going to be the city. Um, much smaller scale not the big open world that we've seen again they're going back to the roots which is just music to my ears we know that they've got the um games as a service style assassin's creed they're also working on that which is going to be the big stuff they're going to add different worlds to it they've already talked about uh japan i think grub is the one with the added information japan will be one of the areas in that big open world games as a service style assassin's creed but as i said on pm and the pm i'm cool if you're going to do that and give me the single player experience that we right. used to get from Assassin's Creed. And that's exactly what they're doing. Only one character choice, not a lot of open world. It's not going to be the RPG heavy style Assassin's Creed. They're going back to the stealth mechanics. Uh, we also now know that they're going to uh, have the return of throwing knives. Okay. Um, you're going to be able to have that. hiding places on the roofs. Um, you're going to have lots of NPCs everywhere, heavy crowd that'd be, mechanics. Yeah, that'd be dope. Back in the day, again, um, lots of interactions for the parkour, such as lanterns uh, to turn around the corner of a wall or poles to reach distant buildings. Okay. Um, so, some assassinations are supposedly going to be in slow motion now, so they're going to give us that cinematic feel of the assassination as well. Um, so lots of great stuff coming out of here. And also, the rumor is, take it with a grain of salt, this one obviously not confirmed, they are remaking AC1. And they're going to have it as DLC wow. this? attached to this one. Wow. Yes. yes. So if that's the case, all on board. Day one, I'm in. I love. You said, you said remake? Yeah, they're remaking the Bro. Assassin's Creed one. Yes. Yes. And they're going to bring assets in, obviously, from this one into Assassin's Creed one. Obviously, bringing it more modern feel, but keeping the core gameplay of Assassin's Creed one intact so yes bro that's, that's fire <laughs> yeah that's fire yo yes. the first assassin's creed is probably arguably I some don't... people hate it some people uh, hate it because yeah. it was so us uh, go you know fetch quests you know searching for stupid hidden things whatever i love the assassin's creed one changed the entire that was another game that was a, a remade in the for remade, today yeah. Yeah, it wouldn't be. It's not gonna be the. It's not gonna be the same. Like no, no. it's gonna be better. Like yo, no, no, nah, nah, that's yep. that's, that's like fun said. Good. I like Ezio, but Altier for life. No, nah, Altier, Altier, Altier was savage. He, he was didn't fire. get the background. He didn't get the build up like you know right. Ezio did. And stuff. I love Ezio too, but Altier, I love Altier. I can't wait to go back if that's real. So freaking awesome. Yeah, no, nah, I'll say it was he was he was fire. And he, he was he was the one too. Like yeah. he was yeah. he was Neo. Um yeah, no, nah, man, that gets me excited. Um hey, maybe they'll uh this will be Prince of Persia. No? Okay. <laughs> um they you know what would be funny? I don't think it's funny, but uh it's it's not funny because Ubisoft tried to re tried to remake Prince of Persia and why doesn't it look like this? Because you know? they gave it because no shade on the devs, but they gave it to a mobile developer. Like, would you? I don't expect? know. I don't know, Pump, but there's some mobile devs who are making some good looking games, man. You know? I don't know, man. It's it's just it's just really weird to be. Prince of Persia is one of those is one of those IPs that like brought. If you really remade the first two games, 
Oh, and brought them out like as a like a collection. Right. Oh man, that that's a that's a that's an instant seller. Remade, bro. Those games looked crazy back then. The abilities, right. that's combat style. Like it was just great. Yep. Like yep. slowing down something. Like oh my god. Yeah, we didn't bring yep. it. Um. Another thing too, um, there was some information about Cyberpunk. Uh, they came out and said, "Chew, there's something new on the horizon." A special episode, Night City Wire. Uh, where they're gonna talk to the people on September sixth, so that's in a few days, um, five p.m. Central Time. I think this is going to have some. I know for sure they're gonna show the anime that's supposed to be coming out, Edge Runners, yes. which is. Which looks really okay. dope to me. Um, has some of the like the ghost in the shell vibes from like back in the day. Like the old night, like old early late eighties, early nineties animation style that I really used to like. <laughs> that shit used to be super dope to me. And it looks like it's going that way. And it looks over the top like Cyberpunk should be. Uh, diving more into the world, diving more into some like I guess some background or some things. Um so we're supposed to be hearing more about the anime itself for those who are interested in that. I know not, not a lot of people may be, but it's definitely something I will watch. But also, I think they're going to be announcing some DLC here. They said, what's next for Cyberpunk 2077? So yes, Steel, we should be hearing about some of the DLC. That Man, Punk, we've been waiting for some DLC for <laughs> Cyberpunk for a, a while, right? Um, Like... When I say a while, it's probably an understatement. Um, you know, when we heard there was going to be like this co-op PvP aspect that there was supposed to be in there, uh, we were excited and then it got pulled. So that kind of blew us up on that. And then now, you know, there was supposed to be DLC coming in at some point. CD Projekt Red is another one of those that it's like, people were such in a fuss about it in the beginning. And then now that they haven't released any content, nobody's like not saying anything. Like they just been completely under the radar. They're completely gone now. There's no conversation that's happening about this. Um, and then they boom, they come out of nowhere. It's like, hey, got some stuff to show. Come check us out. And I mean, again, this could be a potential for them to really bring things back to the limelight. Again, anime being popular. If they do, if they have a good show. And, a, and from what I'm seeing, it looks like yes. a dope animation yes. style. Another thing too, adult and it, it's super style. adult, super adult. Thank you. Yes. super adult animation so again it's rated 17 plus it's not so it's not gonna be for the week again cyberpunk if you haven't played the game it's not a game that's for the week either <laughs> it's a nope. it's an adult game um but there's a lot of elements going to be touched on this and i'm excited for and hopefully they do announce some dlc um i would love to see them do something that's co-op mm -hmm. do i think it's going to happen I don't know, uh, but I would love to see that happen. Where you can bring. I just want to get it back on track, track, Steel, so that they maybe revisit the moment. Yeah, right, that they think about it, they get it in a good spot. Um, they're working on the new Witcher, obviously. Right. You know that, but then they also have a small team that goes back to Cyberpunk and says, "You know what? Get the multiplayer done," because I'm sure they had a lot of it already kind of planned and probably even built. Um, when they scrapped it, but I'd love to see that come back. I just love to see Cyberpunk have the resurgence it deserves. Um, and there's still plenty of fans out there like us uh, that that would be willing to jump back into. It. Yeah, man, I can't wait for the DLC, Steve. I can't wait for the anime. Honestly, I'm thinking about. I got to see if I can hard right now. I got to see if I can pick up binge watch the series though because I do want to see it. Great, um, but I'd love to see DLC that hits like we know that cd project red can do because yeah. if it is of witcher free quality it's another 40 hour experience <laughs> right and where people talk about the dlc as being better than the main campaign in witcher 3 in a lot of instances man that would be freaking amazing and i and i think that's why they've put their head down and not said anything because that's really that's the, that's the only thing you can do right is go yeah. back is Really, hey, the game released poorly, but what are we known for? Yeah, okay, right. Let, let's double, let's double down on that. Let's make because if they release a DLC and it is of that caliber, and it does get people talking that way again, yep. Then that I'm not gonna so be mad. I'm not. Uh, <laughs> I get to I get to take take my character further. What do you mean? I gotta make or what am I doing? What are you gonna tell me about this story? So. And there's um, so much to delve into in cyberpunk and, and, and 
bless bless Jackie forever, man. One of the best buddy characters ever. That's a that that's a fact. Yeah, uh, Jackie Wells forever, man. And, and it, like it's just crazy. And like I said, even as a story, when I finally finished it after two hundred eighty hours, when I got into those last missions, Carrie too, Carrie Uridine, man, what a man. <laughs> Like I said, some of the most impactful stuff out there. Yeah, oh, big meat, big meat, fun. What are you doing? Got some big you meat know, going on. Which your boy will probably yeah. be big meat. Yeah. <laughs> a and big meat project. He's trying to fix it. He's trying to fix it. It keeps fighting <laughs> big meat. Oh, steel. Or, 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 oh, fun. We know what that. you're thinking about, brother. Know what you're thinking. He's auto, auto. You're autocorrect. Go automatically goes to meat. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Big meat. <laughs> wonder if uh, I wonder if uh, Caitlin is cooking right now. I wonder if that's what <laughs> <I'm doing. laughs> hey, that's gonna be that's gonna be for live for the for the live viewers to see. Uh, after well, no, for everybody else to see afterwards, they also get to see our <laughs> big meat comments. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely going to be a meaty project. I have fun. Oh my so, god! Yeah, I'll cover you up. It's gonna be a meaty project. Um. <laughs> I guess the only other thing that um I really had on my list was the uh Game Pass Friends and Family um is actually currently being tested um in certain areas. What they said it was uh offer currently only available in Colombia and Ireland. Yep. Which we knew. Yep. Uh so the, official, official. Yeah. Stuff. So we got official documents here. Let me see if I can pull that up for you guys who are interested in that. Uh, give me a second here, cause it, it'd be a big deal. Still, it's it a, it a full, it's a full breakdown on this. Uh, we'll probably make this the last topic here. But, um, let's see. Let me pull it up for you guys. Boom. There we go. All right. I got one more small one after this too. So one more. Okay. We'll yeah. End it. yeah. One more small one. Um, but essentially, what what's going on? They basically clarified every, all the thoughts that we kind of had about this thing. So share the fun of Game Pass with friends and family. Share all Game Pass ultimate benefits among five family members and friends to enjoy hundreds of games together. Um, each member will enjoy a personalized experience where every account has its own gaming history, achievements, gamer tags, saves, and built-in preferences. Offer currently only available in Colombia and Ireland. Geographic restrictions um, apply. So for this, I had a few different like thoughts about it right because there was the one thought of where how what's going to happen now with home sharing right is home sharing going to continue as is and then anybody that you just have part of your plan it's still only going to be the one console other other console that you could set as your home console right um for home sharing still can only be between two xbox or two consoles for per se right I'd imagine that's how it's going to continue to happen unless they go in there and they decide to change something. I don't see that being a huge problem because again, it's from what I'm getting from this, it's not going to carry over to anybody other, anybody else's account. That's not the way that it works currently. So I can't see it working like that when they add on additional accounts uh, to your subscription, right? So this is exactly just kind of like Netflix, what they're doing now to where you can order a certain tier, get people underneath you. Everybody has their own little thing that they can get into, look at. Nobody's um, history gets combined. You're not looking at, Joe isn't looking at Timmy's history for games and getting recommended um, Minecraft when he likes to play hardcore uh, Call of Duty. You know, none of that blend is kind of happening. So what this does is honestly more so than anything else this isn't a oh we're trying to get rid of the home sharing kind of work around that you guys if you have used to your advantage this isn't for that this is literally to me at least to entice people more people to become part of the service this is this tells me this is it's time to beef those numbers up right because essentially, um, I, I don't have the prices here, Paul. Do you know what the prices are on this? From what we know, yeah, so far? I mean, it comes out to roughly like, well, because the exchange rates are so screwed up, right? Um, the Columbia one is like ridiculous in U.S. dollars. It's like twelve dollars or thirteen dollars. Um, and the the uh, Ireland one is like twenty one ninety nine, but everybody is assuming that when it hits the U.S., which could be soon 
at least testing wise, it's going to be the 25 that we talked about. They are going to keep it at 24.99. Yeah, 24.99. Correct. Yep. Uh okay. So if it's going to be 24.99, then again, uh like others have mentioned and I'll say it again for those who may be new or maybe you've been under a rock for a little bit. Um, it's $5 a month for five people. Can't beat that with a stick. And that is Game Pass Ultimate at that price. And I know for some people, it may not be worth it because you may not have a bunch of people that you can get added on. Um, but it does open up opportunities for people like if I wanted to, if me and Pong would be like, yo, Pong, Look, man, you just come part be part of my service. You can get two other people, bring them on in. Um, don't worry about it. It opens up those opportunities for people who may not be as fortunate. And I know it, I, it's hard to have that conversation sometimes. Um, and I know that's not the only angle that this is for because there are people like myself who, if you have multiple Xbox consoles, you can add the people, um, add all of your family into the house and now boom, you don't have to be signed in here. So this person can play and do you know, all the fancy footwork that goes along with that. You can just get this one thing, sign in, you know, you're good to go pay the one time fee. And instead of individual plans of $15 a month, which two plans again? That's that's thirty bucks. You do three. That's you go so on and so forth. Forty five bucks, and you, the number keeps growing from there. Uh, you can get five people into one. And like I said when I started this, this is about literally about growth at this point. Let's see how far we can inflate the numbers. Whether you want to look at it like, oh, look at all these people getting a dollar deal, and you're not really paying this much a month for Game Pass. Look, I, somebody the other day was looking for people who pay monthly for Game Pass. Hey, it's me. And I will continue to do that. Why? Because I don't, I don't see it. I really don't. Like, to be completely honest with you, it's for no other reason than I don't see it. I, it's like Netflix, Hulu, any of that. I, there's certain things that I'm not subscribed to because I'm part of family plans and others, um, other part of things, right? It's all it's working in other in other avenues already. Netflix, Hulu, Disney. That's all it's already happening with that. So I can imagine that in this, especially in a space to where, hey, we want to reach three billion gamers. How do we gotta do that? Well, we can't just do it. Not everybody's just gonna want to sign up for Game Pass. So what do we do? We make it more enticing. Hey, well, I mean, you don't have to have Game Pass. You can just sign a part of my plan. You got an email, right? Yeah, I got an email. Boom, that's your sign-in information. Anytime that you see an Xbox logo, use that to sign in. Boom, you're good to go. Man, really? I don't have to pay 15 bucks a month? $5, you said? Yeah, you know what? Don't even worry about the $5. I got it. Okay. Even if we don't look at it at a level to where it's, oh, you got to worry about people paying you X amount of dollars, because that's not what it's about. It could be one person paying, paying 25 bucks. You have five more people, four more people at least that, have, that are invested in the ecosystem. Those five, in total, five people as a unit, you guys are going to end up spending $60 at some point. You're going to end up spending $20 at some point. You're going to end up spending 30 bucks here at some point. You're going to end up spending five to ten dollars at some point. Guess what? If these games continue to come out, give you enticing things to buy, give you enticing things to look out, give you a reason to continuously invest in the ecosystem, you start using your perks and you're seeing like, oh, man, and I got perks. Oh, I can get this. I can get this month for free. Oh, I, I can get extra money on my account. Oh, man, I can get that seventy dollar game because I got 35 off of my Microsoft account. It's really only 30 bucks that I gotta pay. Man, I'm getting a deal. You see, now you're working on the mind frame, the, the mindset, I should say more so, of the consumer. And that is the play that this family plan is making here. Um, them testing in these certain areas is to make sure that, hey, you don't wanna bring it over into the United States and then you have all these bugs, all these issues, and you can't control it. Bring it into the market where it's a little bit more controllable, a little bit more refined, a little bit more, maybe it's a little bit uh, Xbox, maybe it's Xbox is hard to get out into these areas. It's gonna be a way to entice more people. And to cause some growth, who knows? Why they're doing this specifically. Again, I'm not in these meetings or in the boardroom to know why they did it this way, but that's what I would imagine. So they can have more of a controlled experience. I am fully on board of the Xbox Game Pass family plan. Again, I would definitely end up end up using it. Um, I'd put 
I can I can put the the wife, the kids, and the brother in there, guaranteed, no problems, and we would never have to worry again. Uh, the conversion rate on it right now, I think people were saying it's about 18 days of Xbox Ultimate if you just have Xbox Ultimate by itself. Uh, so we convert to the family plan, um, 18 days. So if you got a year Game Pass Ultimate, what, about, about a half a year of the family plan, maybe less than that, uh, give or take. Uh, it's probably it's a little more than that, um, give or take. I say it's, it's a fair conversion. You know what I'm saying? Like overall for the value that you're getting, if you look at it from a standpoint of five bucks a person for the amount of content that you're getting or at any time for other of your friends, people, whatever group, or just to know that there could be possibly more people in the pool because of this gets me excited. Uh, I am, a, but I am also somebody who I'm a main proponent for online online gaming. So the more people we can bring into the space, the better. Uh, more sex, more accessibility we can bring to people, the better. Um, because the only thing that this is going to do is shine light on those problem problematic areas that we have currently. Like we bring more people in, more people are going to see cheaters. Hey, maybe we can get some good cheat somebody to specifically work work on cheating on all games. Because goddamn, this our industry is not going to grow if people are just going to continuously cheat because it's inevitable. We got to have some people, somebody who's working on this shit consistently. Maybe bringing more people in will give a Xbox will make a specific Xbox and Sony can start a conglomerate, start the UN of United Nations, uh, United Nation conglomerate of unified cheating. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they could do that or something. That I don't know. I, think be dope. Uh, I know it probably it's not going to happen, but um it just gets me the, excited. It gets, it gets me excited. I think you were on the right course, Steel. I think you were on the right course um, all along. Again, this is all about, this is short-term loss for long-term investment for, for Microsoft, right? They're in the growth phase. This is going to lower the barrier to entry even further than they already have, which we already state that Game Pass is the greatest value in gaming. This is going to make it accessible for families along with the Series S console when it hits that $199 price point. For them to invest. Think about it with the price increase of the PlayStation 5. You can basically buy, come, let's say Black Friday, they do a $199 special on the Series S. You're basically going to be able to buy three Series S's for the cost of one PlayStation 5 or close to. That, that, that's, insane, that's insane, brother. That that's is crazy. Insane. You're going to be able to deck out that's your two kids and yourself with Series S's. That's right? worth the loss. That's and then <laughs> and then you and then you find out about the fam, family and friends plan and you Beautiful. get Game Pass Ultimate for all three of you for twenty five bucks a month. Listen, you can't go wrong. And then outside of that, steel as you were talking about, as more TVs start to get the app right, as more people have the ability to just pop on their TV, own a controller, and log in and have access to over four hundred plus games uh, sitting there waiting for them. And oh, by the way. Uh, my brother has already got Game Pass Ultimate. I can just jump on a friends and family plan with him, and I don't even need a console. I've just got my TV right here because I don't care about 4K at all. I'm just going to play these games because I'm just a casual player. Listen, all of that wraps up into Microsoft and Xbox seeing explosive growth for Game Pass when it comes to users in their ecosystem. It's going to lead to explosive engagement growth um, when it comes to total time played and spent within Game Pass and the Xbox ecosystem. That's what they want because at the end of the day, like you said, Steel, the more people you get in, even if they're paying less and you're losing money out the gates, they're eventually going to start buying stuff within your ecosystem, whether it's DLC, whether it's a battle pass here or there, whether it's a full game that they decide that they want. And we know that Xbox is going to open up xCloud which is available through Game Pass Ultimate, so that you are able to purchase games direct through xCloud, even if you don't have access to a console or to a device. So listen, they're going to get their money back long term, but they're going to see those number of users go through the roof. What does that do? That entices more people from a developer and publisher side of things to drop their games into this service. Because at the end of the day, when you say, hey, 
you drop your game in, you got the potential of 50 million people eyes on it day one. That speaks volumes to these publishers and developers. So all of this wraps up into their whole entire plan of offering the best value possible of the lowest barrier to entry for everybody. Two billion, three billion people is what they want. That's what this is going to do for them. The Game Pass family and friends plan is the ultimate move with where Xbox and Microsoft see themselves in the future because you want to talk about positioning yourself a place where any of your competitors that want to jump in here can't match. That's it, man. There's no way Sony's going to be able to offer a family on their PlayStation. No. I would be shocked. I would be shocked if they do that. They're already talking about how they can't do day and date because it's not sustainable. You think they're going to offer some kind of value like this? Man, I'd be shocked. But if they do, then you can thank competition for it at the end of the day or giving you more value on the Sony side. But right now, I, you know, Microsoft is going to control this market as it is, as it sits right today. Again, it's an ever-changing market. This is all brand new stuff. It's never been done before in the gaming space. But right now, they're going to control it. And what they're doing is setting themselves up in the biggest position of power because they have the bank to do this. And that's exactly what they're making this move for. Um, It's going to pay off in spades as we go forward. We all know what the economies are looking like across the world. We all know how the budgets are getting right now. Xbox, instead of raising prices, is saying, guess what? We're not just not going to raise prices. We're, in fact, going to give you a way to save even more money. Because we all know that you're struggling right now. Not that they wouldn't do this normally in even a great economic situation, but they can market the market it that market way. It People way, will yeah. talk about it that way. So chess move right here. This is another chess move. It's an incredible deal. I never thought they would come in at this low. I never. I said between 30 and 35. I never thought they would come in at 25. But it seems like they're going to pull it off. Is there some limitations to it? Like you talked about, Steel, as far as the game sharing goes? Yes. It also appears, shout out to Psychonauts, who was doing some reading on it as well. Uh, He brought up the point, it looks like that only the home console members are going to get the full benefits when it comes to Microsoft points and the perks and stuff. That's going to be locked out for the people who are part of your friends and family. Makes sense. It does make sense. It's a little, most people won't even know about it. Most of the friends and family to jump in with you won't even know about the Microsoft points. And with the money that you're saving off the subscription, basically that's your 10 bucks a month anyways that you generally earn through Microsoft rewards points. I mean, you can still doing it religiously. You can still get into the rewards program on your own and still do your own thing. You could probably still do it on your own. Yeah, you, I don't know how it's going to work out specifically. You can. But, you can still sign up for it individually. Yeah, and, you can and, sign and up and build it up. I guess. You just have yeah. to buy stuff on your account. Right. You right, know what I'm exactly, saying? You don't exactly. get those member exclusive deals, right? Yeah. But you yeah. do get the reward. You get the reward program regardless. You're just not going to yeah. get that. Oh, here's those additional points because you are the one that's paying right. for it <laughs> right but but yeah but it, like i said with the savings that you're saying that you're getting you're spending you know what, yeah, depending on like, how many people are in the group and how you guys all divide it up between five and eight dollars let's say yeah, a month not, that's already making up for anything that you may lose reward points right away. so again just amazing move here by xbox and microsoft microsoft again i i probably just use more microsoft more than anything now because phil is a you know microsoft gaming microsoft is all in like there's no question about this anymore like this is microsoft now this is yeah. xbox is the brand but microsoft is really the company now behind it. it's it's no longer like the the redheaded stepchild off to the side this is all microsoft they are investing more heavily than any other company is in this industry right now for very specific business purposes. They see the road in the future, but this is one more step in that direction. So props off to them. They're offering people just an insane amount of value. Just insane what's happening. And this is before the Activision Blizzard deal goes through. When that happens and all those games drop in, my God, man. Wow. This is crazy what's going to be like um, and how many games people could have access to for a very, very low monthly fee I, again that's the point just, yeah. There's, yeah there's no nothing like it out there hey shout out to uh shout out to splendiferous for jumping in here brother great to see you we talked about the halo stuff i know you asked 
Why are Halo? Why are people tra- trashing my game, Halo? Listen, this Halo community is going to be the Halo community. Go back and listen to us early on. We got into it. You're always going to have that side of this fan base, man. You're always going to have this fan- side of the fan base. Um, but a lot of it isn't just straight up trashing. A lot of it is valid criticism from Steel and I's point of view. Uh, but there's all there's a huge wide range of different emotions when it comes to Halo. But man, shout out to you for loving Halo and and continue to enjoy it, man. It doesn't matter what other people think. You enjoy mm-hmm. playing Halo? Play the hell out of Halo, man. That's what you do. Again, that's what I did with Cyberpunk. Everybody and their mothers were hating on Cyberpunk, but both Steel and I enjoyed the hell out of it. So just go do that. Leonardo, great to see you jumping in here. Paul, AFC, great to see you, brother, as well. And, of course, the one, the only, Mr. Boomstick, drop it hey. in here, boom. Hey, man, we don't care you dropped in here late, man. You don't have to apologize. We know you're going to listen to it while you're doing all of your housework and stuff. So great to see you, Jago, cooking and Oogin. cooking, I should say. Great to see you, brother, as well. One of the original Retro Renegades, which was my first ever podcast. Great to see you, brother. Glad you're listening into to us. Appreciate you, man. You know what it is already. So, uh, yes, you know, I had one last topic, and then we'll uh, wrap huh. this up. You can do this day in gaming. Um, for anybody who doesn't know, PAX is going on right now. Yeah, Pax is happening, and uh, the one and only Mr. Matt Booty is uh, at Pax, and he had a sit-down interview with um, the blonde nerd Brittany, uh, who has been in the industry. She's uh, one of the co-creators of What Good Ga- uh, What's Good Gamers or right. What's Good Games. Excuse me. Uh, she's been around this industry for a long time. She actually had a sit-down interview uh, with him at Pax on stage, called it "Story Time with Matt Booty." Um, and he had a couple interesting tidbits come out of this deal. He also sat down with Major Nelson this week, too. You can go watch that over on Xbox's channel as well. Um, but he had some interesting tidbits, and I just want to touch on them real quick since we're in the small topic section here. So, uh, number one, uh, both him and Phil have played In Exile's new game. Um, and they sat down and got to play it, and Matt said that he's extremely excited for this game that this game has some very unique mechanics to it uh and again in exile most well known for obviously the original creators of fallout back in the day pc um until bethesda took it over right and made it what it is today but then obviously the wasteland series which we have in game pass go play wasteland and not for everybody i understand top down you know rpg classic style but their writing is off the charts. They are up there with the Obsidians and the Bethesdas of the world when it comes to characters, when it comes to just narrative. Um, so they are now moving into the AAA space. Um, this is going to be their first big giant game. Uh, and Matt said he is super excited. And when he said they've got unique mechanics, of course, the first studio that jumped to mind was, of course, Arcane. So I can't wait to see what In Exile is bringing out. Um, so that was interesting. Um, then he talked about. Um, what else did he talk about? Oh, where was it going next? Um, oh God, I just lost it all. Fable? Steel. I'm having I'm having one of those old moments. Steel. Come on, Fable. One- Fable. Yes, we can you go to Fable, Fable too. Yep. Um, he went to Fable. Oh, State of Decay. That's where I was going next. But anyway, oh, oh, okay. Fable. So he went to Fable, and she asked him specifically on stage about Fable. He said that Playground is doing amazing. That they are bringing all of the same passion, technical expertise, um, and perfection that they have in, obviously, uh, for uh, Horizon. And they are bringing that to the Fable franchise. And he said he's so excited about it that he's seen stuff that he's wanted to show off, that he's pushed to show off to us as gamers. And he's been shot down and said, nope, we're not ready to show it yet. So they are holding tight to that they are not going to show it until they're ready but he said that fable is looking fantastic and that that the the quality that we've come to expect from playground in the forza horizon series we should also expect in fable that that's not even though it's totally different genre totally different game that not to expect less that they are putting everything into this game and he can't wait to show it to us so that was also cool to hear and then state of decay state of decay Two, he brought this up on Major Nelson's uh, show when he got interviewed there. State of Decay 2, over 11 million players have now played State of Decay 2. So uh, a big moment for that team, and they continue to update that game. Again, if you haven't played State of Decay 2 in years, I highly recommend you go back and play it. Totally different game, 
than what it was. It is really, really good right now. Uh, does it show its age a little bit still? Sure, but it's a fun game, especially if you got somebody else to jump in there with you. Go play State of Decay 2. However, that led to State of Decay 3 talk steal, and Booty dropped this little nugget. Yeah, we got a booty nugget. That's right. Um, pause. We got a booty nugget out of this that the coalition actually went to uh, Undead Labs and has been helping them with the Unreal Engine and working on State of Decay 3 and bringing in some of the expertise from Gears of War to State of Decay 3. So we talked about this. We talked about this a lot before here and other shows about this big umbrella of talent that Xbox now has with all these studios. Yeah. We already know Coalition are the masters of Unreal Engine. Yeah. They might even be more masters than Epic themselves are when it comes to Unreal I mean, Engine. Epic doesn't really make their yeah, own no, games. <laughs> yeah, no, not anymore. No, no, no. Not anymore, but back yeah. in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but Coalition back is helping so. Undead Labs with State of K3. So for everybody out there, who saw that State of K3 trailer. It might look like that. <laughs> yeah. You, and you've played State of K2, and you go, I don't know if Undead Labs is ready to take this next leap. No. Nah. Listen, <laughs> I think they're taking the next leap. Mm -hmm. And I think that this game could surprise. Mav and I talked about this on PM and the PM Steel 2. All these studios in exile, compulsion, Ooh. Undead Labs, that kind of been the forgotten bunch oh. of those acquisitions, right? They were even kind of forgotten when the acquisitions were made because Obsidian was around the same time, Good. right? And everybody work, was Obsidian. Work quietly. All these studios have been growing, which we've talked about how Xbox and Microsoft is allowing these teams to grow, to expand, become the studios that they believe they can be. These forgotten studios at the end of this generation steal, we might be getting, and now we know for a fact that Microsoft and Xbox are putting an emphasis on quality control as well, that they want to have their games come out polished. Yeah. Like we've come to expect yeah. from the other side, from Sony's side, right? Now we've seen some dips this year with Sony, right? We know we know that. But but it's been undeniable in the past that when Naughty Dog dropped their game that it was going to be high quality. And we know for a fact internally that that's been kind of the new motto for Xbox and and, and Microsoft is not to just push games out the door like we used to. Now we have all these studios. Let these studios do their thing. Hence why it's taking longer than some of us gamers would like to get these games out the door. We saw that with the delay in Redfall and Starfield. But if they're focused on this polish, they've let these little known teams, I mean, X, In Exile is more known, but Compulsion and Undead Labs, let these little known teams that have grown together, that have had games in the past that maybe didn't come out the best, but now you give them a big umbrella like Xbox, you give them resources, you give them more devs, you give them more time, and you give them help from places like the Coalition. By the end of this generation, steal, we could be talking about those teams as well in the upper echelon of the dev studios that Microsoft already has mm -hmm. and is going to be adding with Activision Blizzard. You're talking about the potential for even more triple a home runs coming from places that maybe we were unsure of before that gets me hype steel even more so special special times man yeah no it's 100 percent a special time I, I was just excited of that he felt like i mean of course it's it's business so you're supposed to speak of it a certain way um but it looks like he was kind of confident about fable man um uh, in its direction and I guess we'll see, uh, because that is one game that we still haven't seen anything about. Uh, we don't know what the gameplay looks like. We don't know what the worlds look like. Um, and that could be a real sticking point for a lot of people. Again, it's not Lionhead working on this game. Um, it's Playground. And Playground makes good car games. But can they make a good open-the-world RPG with a lot of choice and a lot of expectation and a lot of mythos and there's just there's a lot that goes into this um that gets me excited for it but i'm i'm right on board with you man yes um i i didn't even realize that it that this event was here you know what i'm saying until i saw that picture of cognito uh and i was like damn that passes well damn okay well shit um so Again, this shows me that there's a lot, there is more game events to be had too, um, where other, where other things could possibly be shown. 
Uh, so as we move further into the future, man, I mean, we get more and more content. We see that there are places for that content to be demonstrated. Um, that hopefully more we can get more people to pay attention to. Absolutely, brother. And Psycho, where were you? Did I cut out or something? You said don't forget about In and Exile. I mentioned In Exile like ten times during that talk, man. You did say In Exile. I, I, I talked about In Exile. I talked about Matt Booty playing the game and Phil playing their game. And he talked about his booty. That, that it's going to be special. I talked about the booty. He I talked about the booty nuggets. I talked about everything. You missed out, so, man. Good. I'm have to rewind a little bit. You got to catch the booty nuggets, man. <laughs> oh god. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I do think this would be the perfect time to get into our This Day in Gaming segment. Um, it has been a magnificent episode thus far. Um, he said you said that before you you said anything about it in exile. Oh, okay. All right, all right. So like, I didn't know when you typed it in. I was talking, so I didn't see it. I was uh, like, man, <laughs> did I cut out or something? Did, they, did somebody miss that whole part? Thanks, Psycho. I appreciate you, brother. But yeah, this is going to be the perfect time to get into the This Day in Gaming segment. Again, gaming is art should be treated as such, which is why we go back about 30 years in history to see where gaming was and kind of where we are today. Because uh, we do get lost in that sauce, man. I mean, we have so many games to play. We got such a backlog and it just looks like, man, we got all these games and uh, there's nothing to play. So um, with that being said, let's get into it. Hopefully uh, it pops right on up, but it does. Hey, nice. All right. So this day in gaming, we're starting on 1986, uh, this uh, September 3rd. So in 86, you got NES dropping Alpha Mission in Japan. Ooh. Uh, also, and then uh, we drop into 87 uh, with the NES dropping the the magic of Sherazade, Sherazade in Japan. Okay. Go with it. I'll, I'll rock with that. Ninety-eight PlayStation released Metal Gear Solid in Japan. What game is that? I've never heard of it. Uh, I heard it was getting remade. Huh? Uh, <laughs> I heard it's getting remade. <laughs> um, in two thousand two, GameCube released Pac Man Fever. Nice. Shout out to Nam Omar dropping in here too. Great to see hey, you. Hey, Nam, man. what's going on, man? Lurking. Great to see you. Uh, then in 2004, GameCube uh, released Second Sight. Okay. A 2008 Xbox 360 release, NFL Head Coach 09. <laughs> remember, there were so many different NFL there was. games. There was all there, kinds man. of stuff. You remember that? Everybody yeah. was making an NFL game. And some of them had really cool mechanics, but the yeah. rest of the gameplay was shit. And it was like, oh my God. Man. They had a lot of that going on during that time. That was crazy. Joe Montana talk. Yep. Oh, football was the greatest, man. I love Joe Montana. Yeah, no, nah, I, I, yeah, that was a good time. Uh, then in 2009, the DS released Love Plus in Japan. Hey, shout out to you, that Nintendo. It was like the game that I. Maybe? <laughs> uh, then in uh, 2009, PSP released Samurai Do 2 Portable in Japan. Okay. Uh, then we move into 2013. Uh, the PlayStation 3 released Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons, and Dead or Alive 5 Ultimate. We need, we need a new DOA. Like We definitely need a new DOA. I feel like man. DOA has been so far removed that I, I don't understand. Like, I understand that they tried to do it last time with the Sodas individual character. Like, I didn't like that. That was terrible. Um, oh, bro, the the complete custom or the the costume pack and character pack was like what one hundred and fifty dollars, bro, or something like that. Oh my, God. ridiculous! And um, we need a new extreme volleyball too, by the way. I know, Get on that. I know, I know, I know. We do. Bro. Current gen extreme volleyball. Can you freaking imagine how good that game would be? Um, oh yeah, I can imagine how good the game would. Imagine be, what the yeah. sand would look like. Oh yeah, yeah, the sand, huh? Oh my okay. God. Yeah, the sand would look Crazy. real nice. Yeah, <laughs> all the individual grains. Mm -hmm. Got the processor to do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you do. You mm -hmm. do. The net would have real physics. Ah, the net. The net would have yeah. physics. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Nice, nice yeah. <laughs> good, good, good cloth material. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think, yeah. it, you know, uh, good textures in there. I think, I think everything. Oh, on the good. ball, too? Oh, my God. Yeah, that'd be crazy. You'd really be able to see yeah, the you'd definition. Be able to see the spin. Oh my God! You could have all the different spins. Where you oh inflate the ball at? You might be able to see yeah, the hole. Be the best. It already is the best volleyball game ever, but it'd even be better. It'd set the bar to new levels. Yeah, man. Uh, a lot of customization. I actually want that made more than DOA. Just make that game first, and then go make the DOA fighter. Yeah, give me, uh, give me, give me full customization. Um, 
I know it's beach oh, volleyball. There were camera angles. Oh my god! Like 2K, get your yeah. broadcast view. Get the yeah, 2K, get that first person view. Oh, so first first. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm I'm I'm, I'm leaving. Um, <laughs> he said, first person. Oh yeah. my god. Um. Okay. Instead I, of helmet cam, we get chest cam. I, I no longer am. Uh, <laughs> I no longer have included Fine. myself as part of this conversation. <laughs> You're not associating with this conversation anymore, Steel. Uh, I, I gotta, I gotta drop out. I gotta drop out. Okay. Um, Xbox 360 also got Dead or Alive Five, by the way. So, um, PlayStation Three and Xbox 360 also got Diablo Three in 2013. Uh, I know a lot of people. Said Diablo 3 was trash. I had a fun time with it. I thought it was all right for Diablo. Yeah. Um, I thought it was a good next iteration of the series, but a lot of people said it was trash. So uh again, I guess maybe I just wasn't hardcore enough in Diablo. Um, I was pretty hardcore in Diablo 2, but yeah, I definitely wasn't in three. So it is what it is. Um, then PlayStation 3 had a great game called Disney Castle of Illusion starring Mickey Mouse. Um, Amazing. I couldn't think of anybody else that could be the main character, so I'm glad they went with Mickey Mouse. Yep. Um, PlayStation Vita got a great game called Rayman Legends. Um, that actually is a great game. I really enjoyed Rayman Legends. I do. I I, I want them to bring back the like the original Rayman games though. Uh, I thought those were really dope. Yeah, they were. Um, in 2014, PlayStation Four got Minecraft PlayStation Four Edition. Nice. Um, then 2015, iOS got Kingdom Hearts Unchained X. They're missing a few X's, but. Talk about a divided community. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, then in 2019, Nintendo Switch, the PC, PlayStation 4, and the Xbox One got Final Fantasy. Hey, you might not get seven, but you'll get eight remastered. <laughs> then Nintendo Switch PC did get the Spyro Reignited Trilogy. I actually, no, I don't think I'll have a chance to play. Um, I actually wanted like to give those yeah. a run through to kind of see how it feels to play them current. Um, uh, right. cause I had, those are like, again, that's part of my child. I, I had a lot of great times with those games back in the day. Yeah, it should be, it should be an IP that they bring back once they get acquired. It yeah. Should. Really invigorated. It would be perfect. Yep. Maybe they should combine, maybe in their next game, they should just combine Spyro, Crash, and Banjo. And then you just have different <laughs> islands that you got to go to, um, play with the different characters. That'd be kind of dope. I Make think it'd be games dope. as a service. Yeah, 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 yeah. Different areas. Um, Make your characters. You can play as Banjo if you love the Banjo. Feel. Yeah, you exactly. Banjo if you like Spyro, you can play Spyro. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. Um, it could be the GTA version of. Uh, <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <of their game>. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get to pick. It's not Trevor. Um, yeah. It's not Trevor right. and them. You're picking. Right. Uh, you know yeah, those characters. The, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Why not? Why not? Switch Make it up. everybody happy all at one time. I, I think that would be a good way to go. It'd be like a 100-hour game. You're thinking but... outside the box. I like it, Steel. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. Uh, <laughs> then PlayStation 4 um, also got Torchlight 2. Awesome game. Yes, I've awesome heard great game. things about Torchlight. Yes, Torchlight 1 and 2 are both great. 3 was pretty good, too. We played it for a while when it was a Game Pass, but uh, Torchlight 1 and 2 are awesome. Amazing games. Really and cool. then uh, in 2020, we got uh, on PC, we got a game called Ultra Kill ultra kill um okay nope all right it's about mankind going extinct it's a fast-paced ultra violent retro fps shooter okay <laughs> sounds about right <laughs> yep all right ladies and gentlemen well that is episode 71 of living split screen as i get ready to tear down my whole uh computer stand i'm shaking everything the world's it's an earthquake going on in florida if I uh, don't show up next time, you guys know where I'm at. I got it, it consumed by a tsunami. <laughs> and the, um, yeah, that's it. That's about yeah, it. That's it. That's it. That's, that's it. it. That's, that's how it happened. <laughs> but no, uh, within all seriousness, yes, uh, I do want to thank you all for joining us on episode 71 of Living Split Screen, uh, giving you that live, raw, uncut content. And overall just giving you that rts view man uh, we had a lot of amazing conversations to go through today uh, a lot of interesting topics i do feel like we again we come from we come from a different perspective which is always dope uh we have more of a 
I would say it's a blend between the consumer and also throwing our personal enthusiast mindset in there. But overall, I just think we like to take the the aerial approach above everything else, right? Um, it's not just about us. It's not just about uh, the the companies. We kind of try to mix them together, uh, which is why I do say we take that RTS approach. So um, you can find me. Steel Rain I, Steel Rain I, the T is a seven everywhere. Um, type in Google, you'll find all my links. Um, Twitter is mainly where I frequent. Uh, so definitely hit me up in the DMs. I'm getting approaching 2K, but I haven't been super active either. So there's that. But uh, definitely hit me up in the DM, send me a message through, say, yo, Steel, you're trash. And I'll say 1v1 me, bro. Um, <laughs> <laughs> or just so you know just casually if you want to group up jump to some battlefield whatever the case may be i i keep some of these games that's the other great thing about the golden age of gaming that pong likes to say is that there's so much versatility man um whether i i'm on the box or i'm on my pc the main thing is space a lot of the time um there's so many games that i that i can have downloaded on my pc which is why i like playing here um it's just because i can instantly be wherever if i want to make content i'm here if i need to play some games i'm here cross plays available i'm good to go um and i play with controller man so that's why i like quick side tangent i don't want us to get away from cross play what i want them to do is get find a way to refine down input based matchmaking and for it to really recognize your input not somebody can plug a, a fucking a whole mod device in no nah, man that, but that's what i also mean by like doubling down on the anti-cheat and everything because it's not just simple again people could go buy buy a cronus right now from gamestop and you can plug it into your xbox console and if you know if you can rub two ions together um you're, you're gonna get an answer so that's neither here or there um you can find us every Saturday, 9 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. UK time right here with Living Split Screen. Again, a non-console eccentric platform. Talk about everything going on within the gaming industry. And uh, Paul, man, it's always a beautiful time when we're able to get together and chop it up, man. Uh, hopefully, we're able to get some gaming in, um, really tear it up. Got a few games we got to get through. A lot, a lot of you updates. You don't get on gaming in with four days off? I don't know what, what we're going to do. I, think, I so. think you just not, might not like me anymore. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> now nah, great show brother episode 71 as Steele said in the books 72 next week coming up if everything goes as planned but this was an awesome show uh, a lot of free free flowing talk as always but we got to a lot of other smaller topics this week that a lot of people like you said steel thought it just got lost because of thursday's news right especially the later shows in the week um it's hard not to talk about the big stuff that happened thursday it was a lot um and not all of it good news right not all the fun news but it's still a part of this industry and that's what we're always going to do but that's the great part about having a four-hour show that we can get <laughs> to other things right we can get to other things and we can touch on the smaller stuff that was happening that was positive that was fun that is a part of the gaming uh universe as well so man Great, great conversations in chat. Thank you all for being active. Everybody, whether you were lurking, whether you were actually chatting, whether you, whatever you're doing, again, whether you stopped in for five minutes or whether you have been here the entire show, we love you all. Uh, again, you guys are what makes this go around. And I love the comments. I love that the people come in and have made this uh, a regular part of your Saturday uh, morning or afternoon, where, depending on where you are. That's what's so cool about this. And even Sunday, for some people in New Zealand, like Razor, uh, NZ, who's uh, a great member of this community. So we appreciate you all. Thank you for being here again. You guys got us over that 600 hump last weekend. Uh, where I think we're right around 607 right now. On our way to Mission 1K. Continue to share us out. Continue to tell people about us if you feel like we are worthy of that. Please do Please. that. But uh, again, thank you all for everything you do. You are what makes these shows go. Not just our show, but every show, because so many of you watch like five, six, seven, eight shows, yeah. just like I did when I first jumped in this community. I know how that is, man. I used to have two tabs up, three tabs up at times with multiple shows on. So appreciate you all. Thank you all. Um, listen, Pong Soul, Xbox, Pong Soul on Twitter. Tonight, it's going to be the shop podcast as always. PTK, Blam, Fuzzy belvedere and myself that's right the three amigos tonight over on the shop podcast 9 p.m eastern eight o'clock central time again p 
PTK Lambs channel. Find it. You can see the link on my uh, Twitter feed if you need to find it. But we have a great show. And PTK lets you come in with questions for the last half of the show. So if you got something you want us to talk about that we don't cover in the first half, man, that's your jo- that's your time to shine. So be there tonight. And then otherwise, next week, I will be on Xbox Factor Podcast. Double Barrel Gaming is a channel. Mr. Boomstick, who was in here and may still be lurking, is the man, one of the best in the community, just a huge supporter of everybody. He's gone over 11K, deservedly so. He probably deserves 50, 100, a million followers. But, man, it's always awesome on Tuesdays on the Xbox Factor Podcast. And this week, um, I'm going to be there, so it's going to be extra special for me because I don't get to do his show too often anymore. So be there, 12 p.m. Eastern, 11 o'clock Central Time, all good things green every Tuesday. Thursday, p.m. in the p.m., come check me and Mav out over on Fun Speculations channel. It's a great time on Thursday nights as well, 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 o'clock Central Time. Mav actually has guests lined up for like the next three weeks. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, most of the time it's a two-man show. We've had guests here and there, but he's got guests lined up. It starts this week with brother from another Psychonauts hey. joining us. So we're going to have a good conversation because Psycho's going to be taking some time off um, for a little bit. So it's going to be kind of his last show. So we're having him on this Thursday for nice. a bit. Um, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a blast. And then keep your eyes and ears open because we got some more big guests lined up over at PM and the PM again, Thursday night, 7 PM Eastern six o'clock central time. And then a back at it Friday night over on fun speculation channel again for Xbox ultimate. And you know, the drill there, there's going to be laughs. There's going to be craziness. There's going to be left turns. There's going to be nonsense, but we're also going to have some good gaming discussion as well. So join us there every Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 o'clock Central Time. Otherwise, folks, listen, I'm going to keep telling you. I know most of you memorized my outro by now, but it is the golden age of gaming. And I think that people lose sight of that. And that's why I'm going to keep saying it. Um, Again, if you feel differently, hey, that's your opinion. I'm not telling you you're wrong. I'm just telling you from my perspective, this is the best time ever to be a gamer. And so get out there this weekend. And if you've got an extra long weekend, even better, enjoy it. Enjoy the family. Give hugs and kisses. Tell everybody you love them too. But enjoy what's happening in this industry. Get to, get to play some games. Play what you love. Love what you play. Don't let those energy demons steal any happiness and enjoyment from you. You all have a good one. Steal. Get everybody out of here, man. Hey, guys. And um, in case you care, Rolling Stone said uh, The Last of Us Part 1 is the best version of one of the best games released in the modern era. Okay. All right. It's a good, it's a good, it's a good little, good little article, man. I mean, I don't know how it can't be the best version after the third time they've redone it. I mean, I just, I don't. It's got to be the best, right? It's, it's the best. Be- it's the best looking game currently available on PlayStation Five. At times, nearly hmm. indistinguishable from film. It's the I, type I of title for people I, looking to trick their significant other into liking a video game. Hmm. ACG thought differently in parts that there was some really low res tech. Uh, low low res textures that he didn't understand why that happened but uh, okay all right well cool i mean i just Again, i just wanted to let you know what last of us is a goat for me it's top 10 all time so i i like i said yeah. i don't know why it wouldn't be but i that's Stop some up, yeah. high praise from rolling stone so all right cool i wonder if rolling stone said that the last time the game was out oh just hey just hopefully you guys didn't order order the firefly we didn't even talk about this deal. Hopefully, you didn't order the Firefly edition. Oh, the limited? You talking about the limited edition? Yeah, the hundred dollar that you uh, can't get a, like a yeah, replacement you, for. You can't get a replacement, and they're sending them out in uh, yellow bubble envelopes, and they're getting all crushed. Go check out Ains. Shout out to Season Gaming over there. Great, do fantastic work. They had a great interview with one of the old Bioware devs. Go check that out. But shout out to Ains Porsche Power. He started a storm last night by posting pictures of his Firefly edition coming in all bent up all just terrible because they threw it in a bubble envelope and that's how sony's having these limited edition because they're they're not printing anymore that's how they're setting out these editions for a hundred dollars so most of the people that are buying these are your hardcore fans that have already bought it twice before this is the third time now that they're buying this game they're buying the hundred dollar edition you're sending them in yellow bubble envelopes that's how they're sending some of these out they're getting trashed and guess what he spent a couple hours on the phone with sony customer care do you think that they're going to replace it nope 
what did they say? Well, you can send it back for a refund um, or we'll, we'll give you a 20% off your next purchase coupon. Not 20%. a good look. Mm. Not a good look, Sony. Again, you guys have been going through some bad news. You guys are cutting corners on some of your most hardcore fans out there. That is a no-no. And uh, some major publications, VGC picked it up, and then IGN late last night also posted about it. So they're going to start getting some more negative coverage into the weekend, which, again, it's a Friday, so whatever. But um, not good, not a good look at all, folks. Not a good look at all. Sorry. We were supposed to be out of here. Done. <laughs> no, I mean, um, you're good. I just, I'm just saying. Yeah. We pay $100 for a bent-up cardboard. Yeah. yeah. And people who buy the collector's editions – want them pristine they buy the collector's edition for a reason no you know you didn't you, you bought it because you like sony <laughs> you bought it because there's a because of the game like you didn't buy it because the like the case yeah. i didn't even bring up that smoke i forgot about that smoke earlier Steve. sorry hey and by the way it's not the it's not the shipper's fault it's the company who is sending it through that shipper's fault they, because they they tell them how to ship it so this is coming from the this is coming from the company that sent their console and egg cartons yep Correct. I'm just saying. Like, I, which we know. Which anyway, we know, enough yes. enough smoke. Thanks. Love you guys. <laughs> East side, East side safe. Much love. Episode 71 Damn. is out. 72. I'll see. Peace.